Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, to everybody in the chat, welcome to another arena. Um, this is a repeat of an arena we did about four weeks ago. Um, this time we've um, we did some good advertising to see whether or not, mashallah, we can manage to peel some of these um, atheists and Christians who scatter when the arena begins. So um, just in case you don't know what the arena is, just in case you're new here, just in case you saw the, the uh, Teletubby advert flex. Okay, this is what the arena is. So the arena is basically a format to invite non-Muslims to come and challenge Islam directly or indirectly. So they can come on here and say, oh, Islam is false because of this, because of this, because of this, because of this, and more than one to attempt it. Or they can come indirectly and say, um, Islam is false because Christianity is true, or Islam is false because we evolved from monkeys, or common ancestor, or whatever, whatever it may be. Yeah. So this is the uh, this is the format. It's kind of like a virtual speakers corner. Um, and to help me in the, I have three gladiators who will be joining me today. Mashallah. And there's only one here at the moment, and this is Brother Ijaz. Assalamu alaikum, Can't hear you, bro. Bro. Sorry guys, new to stream yard. Walaikum <laughs> assalam, brother Hamza. Congrats on the 300 key. I'm very impressed. May Allah okay. continue to grant you success. I mean, I'm, I'm excited. I mean, inshallah. I mean, alhamdulillah. Okay, so um, did you like the advert we did? I did. It was <laughs> terrible. <laughs> uh, adorable, cute. And I like that I was featured in half of it. So that counts. Oh, yeah, 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 you're fantastic. Your words. We always like to do these videos based upon words that are just being spoke uh, organically. So yes. we talk, we talk about this stuff and then we we, we, uh, we manufacture the video towards that. So I'm doing Let's see if anyone can in, man. You got a good editor. You should hook me up sometime. It bends wink, the wink. I know, I know, I know. Ben is the man, subhanAllah. Right, let me... Um, just put the link out there, innit? Let's just do it. So, just one second. Um, so, I'm going to put the link out, mods. If one of you can grab hold of the link and turn it into a nice invitation, that'd be really cool. And then I'll pin it. So, we want a nice invitation for non Muslims who dare to enter the den, inshallah. So, I'll just put the link out generically. Somewhere, just one of you grab hold of it and do what you do. Um, talking of gladiators. It's Abdurrahman. Salam alaikum, Akhi. MashaAllah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Are we are we live? By the way. Yeah, oh yeah, we're live. No yeah. messing around. No, live. No, 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 no. Nice Chelsea oh, blue. blue. I like that. No green room. Oh, this is not Chelsea blue, man. <laughs> that clearly is Chelsea blue. It looks like that to me. How are you guys doing? Alhamdulillah. Oh, it looks like we're about to ask Ijaz some mastermind questions. What's going on? It's like awesome. the mastermind I don't chair. Think so. I don't think so. <laughs> I'm listening. All right. So, so hopefully we have some better guests than last time. Because last time it was atrocious. They were so bad. Robin yeah. Booms and all these guys. <laughs> so, so what have you been up to, Jess? Oh what, huh? what have you been up to? Uh, I watched the Daniel Hakikaju and the uh, Muslim metaphysician debate and Rashid and uh, Robert Spencer. I think that was... Quite fun, mashallah. Quite well done. Uh, both brothers were quite articulate and uh, they demolished those guys. I don't think they expected that to happen. I think they expected the moderator to be more on their side and shift the conversation in their favor. The expectations weren't met. I'm happy that they got to advertise their trash books. But other than that, than that they got a solid whooping. And I feel bad for them, to be honest. They, they got pulverized on like live. I don't think they're going to have a career after this. Shocking, atrocious, personally. But, uh, but Abdul Rahman, what did, you, what did you think about it? Yeah, I couldn't have said it better. Yeah. So I'll just reiterate everything you just said. And uh, I mean, as if, they, as if they had a career before it, right? But then I agree <laughs> with you that, that it's, it's going to be difficult for them to uh, to be of any significance after this, after, after what they went through, complete humiliation and... Uh, May Allah reward the brothers for, for the great work. I mean, I mean, they, they seem to argue in a very petty way, as if the tactics from like 20 years ago 
that you guys are evil and hateful. Like that's just gonna ride, and that's gonna be. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. End. It's, it's all the same stuff. It never really changes. So. Did they miss the Qatar World Cup? Huh? The Middle East um, name was cleaned out with the Qatar World Cup. When, when people went to Qatar, they seen the Middle East, they seen Arabs, they seen Islam, yeah. and the like. This is not what we've been told. We were told this was yeah, haters, exactly. and they handed us in the streets. What's going on here? The, you know the, the, I mean? the so, funniest, the the funniest part of the stream is when Rashid calls out. Uh, Jake for wearing a Moroccan cloak. I'm like, is that the level of argumentation that we've reached now? Like, you're wearing African clothing, so somehow Islam is bad. Caught me out to know where these two doofuses wearing suits. Are those the traditional clothing of uh, Arabs, Africans? I don't get it. They were so strange. Yeah, and the other, the other debate I watched, I only watched like 20 minutes of it, was the um, Daniel and um, Dilahanti. Oh uh, yes, Matt. It, oh man, it was it was so embarrassing. So Dylan Hunt is going on about evidence, evidence, evidence. Daniel says, "Okay, why should we have to meet this analytical evidence when we use intuition and such all the time and for all the different things?" So he says, "Why do atheists get to decide what determines evidence? What is evidence?" Exactly. And then Matt, Matt goes, "I didn't see one shred of evidence." <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's to you, you don't have the standard, and you just completely ignore it. And I was just like, oh. anyway, we, we've got someone uh, backstage. I don't know what he's doing. If it's Robin, boom, I'm leaving the street. No, it's uh, telling you I'll, right now. If it's Rob, I'm leaving the street. It's going to be really bad connection, man, because you, the way you're bouncing about, man. Uh, that might work better for you, uh, right? Just make sure there's only make sure I've got the right filter on. Uh, you messed this up the last time. Just letting you know, you messed it up. I messed. <laughs> no pressure then. Oh, because we're missing Abdur. We're missing Yemeni, aren't we? At the moment? Yemeni. Yeah. Yeah. Hold up! Don't tell me that you've done this screen overlay only for four people. We got him, um, Albert. Hi, Hamza. How are you doing? I'm all right, dude. Nice, nice to hear. So I'm not here to argue if uh, you know Allah, if it's Allah, Jesus, or God, but I am here to just ask you to clarify something you said in one of your videos. I was watching one of your shorts, and um, you specifically said that the Muslim belief about the crucifixion of Jesus Christ was something that's not contrary to scientific belief, or not contrary to even Christian belief, or any kind of belief. You said specifically that. Oh, we believe Jesus, uh, we believe that they believe Jesus was crucified. And then you said the Christians believe Jesus was crucified. The scientists believe Jesus was crucified. So Islam's view on this point doesn't differ or anything like that. It's the same, essentially. And I have your exact words. I recorded everything, right? Now I want to say there's a difference between believing something and knowing something. Because you can see. I'm going to let Hamza take this one all by himself. Is, is, is he there is a small minority of people that believe Jesus Christ didn't exist and wasn't crucified at all. That's a fringe minority. And you know that. I know that. There's, that's a fringe minority that don't even believe he existed. But the fact that you use this disingenuous language and you select it and you specifically know the language that you're using by saying believe instead of know. The scientists and the historians and the Christian scholars that you claim to speak about and claim to know about, they know, Hamza. They don't believe. Right. So that's very okay. disingenuous and, and disingenuous. And I'm just saying, okay. as, somebody, okay. as somebody who might be questioning their faith or somebody that may be interested in Islam or whatever... Using this kind of disingenuous language is not gonna is not gonna convince anybody because you can just go on Google. It's twenty twenty three. Everybody's got infinite information in their hands, and we can see that this is an okay. indisputable fact. All right. Okay. Um, so you know Jesus was crucified. I know Jesus was crucified because scientists and scholars, Prove the it. vast majority Prove of it. them, know they don't believe. Prove it. I know. Prove it. You should know. Albert. Albert. Shut up. Yes. Prove it. Prove he was crucified. You want me, you want me to prove it? Do you really want? 
scientists. I'm confused about that. <laughs> <laughs> He's acting like Josephus knew. <laughs> it's like, what? I'm just confused. What scientific evidence is there? Like they, they checked his DNA. I don't know what's tricking this geezer so much. Oh, no, wait a second. So is he an atheist? He doesn't believe that Jesus Christ even existed? No, no. Can you prove to me Jesus yeah. crucified? Yeah, prove it. I can prove to you that Jesus was crucified yeah, prove with it. scientific... Prove it. prove it then. His connection time and all this. He recorded a video... Of a video of you. <laughs> oh no. Oh. <laughs> so, Hamza, I'm asking, Hamza, I'm asking, Hamza, I'm asking you, do they do they believe that or do they know that? Albert, prove it. Hamza, answer the question. Do they believe that or do they know that? Just who believe it? Do scientists believe that Jesus was crucified? The, I'm talking about the vast major, majority. I'm not talking about the fringe, yeah, yeah. fringe minority. Do the vast majority of scientists believe that Jesus was crucified, or do they know? No, no, they don't believe. They don't believe. No. Okay, so you're contradicting yourself because in the in the short that I watched, you said that they believe that. Okay, I've never ever said scientists believe Jesus wasn't crucified. No, 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 no. You did. You did. I can I can literally come back in five minutes from now. I have everything saved on my camera roll. Go on then. So, Go on then. Go on then. Okay, I'll be back. I'll be I'll be back, Hamza. And you better put me on. You better put me on. <laughs> Go on then. Okay, but you agree you agree to have me back on, yeah? Yes. <laughs> Hamza, yes or no? You agree to have me back on. And and yes. when, and as a matter of fact, when I come back on, I'll show you some hadith too while I'm at it. So you took a stab at Christianity and science. We're gonna take a little. We're gonna take a little deep dive into Sahih Hadith. Don't worry. Strong stuff, not weak stuff. I've got lots of strong things. I'll show you Muhammad prostrating to statues. I'll show you everything, buddy. Okay, just come back and show me where I said scientists. But I have. I, okay, no problem. But I have your word as a man to man. You're gonna come. You're gonna let me come back on. You're gonna, okay, listen, you're gonna let me come back on. One second. One second. One second. You're going to go away and you're going to find where I said scientists believe Jesus was crucified, yeah? yeah absolutely, 100%. Oh, okay, okay. And when you can't find that, you're going to come back and you're going to apologize. Hamza, I have it saved on my camera. Hamza, I have it saved oh, on my okay, camera. Okay. You're going to come back and you're going to apologize to me, yes? If I didn't say that. Your first words out of your mouth. What's, on? what's Albert? Albert, the first, word, the first words I want out of your mouth is sorry, Hamza, I was wrong. Okay? Hamza, I have it saved on my camera roll, but that's what I'm Go saying. You better let okay. me back on. So, because so when I have the change. video footage of you saying Albert. this, there's no escaping it, Hamza. So Albert. just remember my name. Albert. I'm going to come back on, brother, okay? Albert, listen to me what I'm saying to you. Are you listening carefully? Yes. Okay? Okay. When you can't find me saying scientists believe Jesus was crucified, yeah? yeah. When you can't find me saying scientists saying jesus was crucified the first words you said your mouth okay you know what i'm oh, sorry sorry you're right scientific scholars one second historians one second one second one second when you can't find me saying when you can't find me saying scientists believe jesus was crucified when you can't find me saying these words i want you to come back on and your first words are going to be this. Did you say? Did you Sorry. say historians? Did you say historians believe that? Did you say scholars, historians believe that Jesus was crucified? Did you say I'll that? Tell yes you no? I said. I'll tell you what I said. Okay. It might be easier. I said historians report that the people were saying Jesus was crucified. That's okay. false, Hamza. That's false, Hamza. What are you saying? False. Okay, False. I'm saying. Okay, I'm saying dead this. Stop. But dead second. stop right One there, second. Hamza. You cannot continue on such disingenuous narratives. That's false. Nobody What's believes false? Hamza. They know. There's a huge difference. You, know? you speak how English. Did you see I speak English. We know the difference between believing how did you see, and knowing. How did, One second. One second. How did Josephus know? How did Josephus know? 
I don't know. <laughs> How is that related to what you said? Are we speaking about Josephus? <laughs> okay. Did, did, did Josephus know? Did Josephus Are we know? speaking about Josephus? Are we speaking about the crucifixion of Jesus Christ? The actual entire about, event? We're, we're, to, we're talking about the first century Jewish historian, Flavius Josephus. Okay. Okay, yes. Did the guy that recorded this? a lot about Jesus Christ because he had direct... Uh, right. Yes, he, he spoke no. directly to witnesses. Okay. One second, one second. Did he know Jesus was crucified? Yes. How? Because there were people that were there that saw it and he spoke to them and they know that happened. And then after you, and there, listen, listen now, there's tons of other incidences How like this. Know? We're talking Who's hundreds. I'm not even talking tons. Albert, there's hundreds Albert, of other Albert, incidences Albert, like this. Albert, and based Albert, upon that knowledge, they know. Albert, Albert, how do you, did he know that Jesus was crucified if he didn't see it? It means he believes what the people told him, yes? If I tell you the sky is blue, does, is the sky blue? If, the, if, if I can you see told the sky, me that, if I, I tell would you go the check. sky is blue, if you told me, I would go the check. The sky is blue, <laughs> right? Is blue? If I tell you now, if I tell you now that it's dark Albert, twenty-four Albert. hours a day in northern Albert. Alberta, do you have to go to Alberta to know that? Shut up! Do you know how? Do you have to go to Alberta to know that? Shut up with your stupid analogies, okay? Just shut no, up. no, no, no! Right. It's the same thing. Just if I tell up. you it's 24 hours dark during the winter in just northern Alberta, up. do you need to go to northern Alberta to just figure that out? Up. To confirm just that? Okay, if you told me... Am I asking you to take a leap of faith by doing that? Oh, oh, okay. Albert, you just shut up, please. You're, not, you're annoying me now. Listen. I hope I am, Hamza, because you're disingenuous. Okay. Can you drive a car? Yes. What color is your car? Silver. Right. So if you told somebody, you're telling us you drive a silver car, yeah? do we know you drive a silver car? Yes, you do. No, we don't. How do we know? We have to believe you. And yes, you do. Know. Why? Because you know why? I could have yeah. all of my friends, I could have 20 of my friends come by and tell you that you it's know, a silver you know, car. And I could even take a picture and you show you as well. You might be a liar. Oh, it's mass lying. Oh, 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 so the whole you population is lying. So you believe 20 people would come out and lie for me? Yeah, maybe. Maybe you paid them to lie. Yeah, yeah maybe. absolutely. No, and listen, this is the part where you where you Muslims get it wrong because you're absolutely right in that fact. But if it was an outright lie, nobody would <laughs> die for that. Nobody would die for that. <laughs> Did Josephus die? Josephus didn't die for his fucking religion or anything like that. No. Oh, easy, tiger. Trigger. See ya. Oh dear! Well, that was fun. That did that did not go well for him. Uh, uh, I'm I'm honestly a little bit embarrassed because I think he might be Canadian. We don't claim him, by the way. He's in Alberta. That's like the rural like type area. We we don't claim him. Okay, I think he was triggered and he disproved himself quite easily. So well done. Well done. Whatever he's smoking, I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want to know what it is. Let him just keep by himself. <clears throat> it's strange. It's strange. That was unreal. That was unreal. Look, Oddly aggressive. Sick. I'm waiting for him to come back with the video. I think he figured out he was wrong, but he didn't want to admit it. He it's lied. From, he was saying scientists, 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 and he realized he meant historians. And yeah. Then, uh... But the, the point is very simple. I'll reiterate the point if people don't understand what he's on about. So basically what I said is the Quran confirms history. So basically, Flavius Josephus uh, reported that the people believed Jesus was crucified. He didn't know it was true. He just reported what they said. That's how historians work. The people were saying Jesus was crucified, and he reported Jesus was crucified. And now what the Quran says is that the people thought Jesus was crucified. So the Quran says the people thought Jesus was crucified. The people thought Jesus was crucified. Historians report the people thought Jesus was crucified. Therefore, the Quran confirms history. Now, what I also said was, if there was no mention in the New Testament of the people believing Jesus was crucified, then the Quran could be an error because it's saying something that doesn't seem to have appeared to have happened in history. But from what we can see from historical records, the people did believe this thing, and the Quran simply confirms history. I don't know why the Giza was so triggered. I have no, absolutely... No idea. 
anyway. Well, the scientists said that you're wrong, Hamza, on that. So. Okay. I don't know what. My goodness. I don't know where you get these people from, Hamza. Okay, that's Albert calling you to ask you to come back on stream. Give Hamza a second, guys. Know that I'm, I'm here by myself. Subscribe to Colin Christians. That's my YouTube channel, where you can get quality that will work, that will not just educate you, but even perhaps entertain. If you're not a subscriber, you can also follow me on Twitter, formerly, sorry, X, formerly known as Twitter. You can follow me on Ijaz the Trini. If you want quality daily tweets, that's where you got to go. Hamza's not going to give you quality you know, daily tweets, but you're going to get that from me. Abdul Rahman is on the Thought Adventure podcast. He's also Abdul Now, I think, on Twitter. What's your plug the Twitter? Got to plug the Twitter. But he's not here. Uh, Abdul <laughs> underscore now. Yeah. Okay. How did you come up with that name? That username? <laughs> Oh no, that's uh, that's a story for another day. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys should check out Thought Adventure podcast. Uh, Yusuf Ponders, I think, recently did the review between uh, uh, who did Jake Debit? Was it Delahunty as well? I could I may have gotten that wrong. It's a story for another. What? Who didn't Jake Debit? Someone? Sorry, is, I, uh, it, is it me or is it you? I, th I, just I think lost it was you. For like you. 10 seconds. I oh, lost okay, you for okay. ten seconds. Audience, okay. who was the one that cut out? We want to know. Like Schrodinger's cut out. Come on, let us know. So, I think it uh, was me because all of the windows were like going where they were like okay. doing that okay. that uh, that thing. Yeah. All right. Oh, so, I'm just back. I don't know where. Uh, I can't hear you. Yemeni. You. Where did Yemeni go? You sure you Me? sent him the streamyard yes. link? Because I had to oh. ask you last minute for it. That's okay. Yamini could be waiting all this time for the stream yard then comes up. I sent it in. I sent it to him. I'm gonna call him. Let me just call him. Give him a call. Give him a call. Give him a call. All right, guys, we're back alone to the Ejaz the Trini show. I hope you guys have subscribed at this point. I've just gotten a few notifications for subs, but you guys gotta pump it up, keep it real, right? I mean Hamza got 300,000 k subs at this point. You can throw a couple to me. Couple hundred here, couple hundred there. Throw a couple hundred subs to Abdurrahman. Couple hundred to Thought Adventure Podcast. You know, share the love, right? Share the love. Uh, I mean, what else am I supposed to say? I'm not going to tell you not to sub to me. What about you, brother Abdurrahman? You got anything to plug? Anything that we should ask them to come? To? <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave the plugging for you. You're doing a great job. I don't know. Everybody, everybody, everybody. we got a. Uh... What, what, yeah, what's his, what's his, that what's was an person? interesting guest, though. I, 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 I didn't say on the screen. Defense. Yeah, no, 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 I didn't call him stupid. I told him to shut up. Shut up. And I told yeah. him his analogies were stupid. I didn't call him stupid. I said it is yeah, stupid you, analogies. Stupid what, Albertan what analogies. Me, what, what does me asking, did Josephus know, or how did he know, saying, well, if I told you the sky is blue? Like, what? Anyway, uh, let me make sure I've got this filter correct. Where's Yemeni, man? I think he does. I, think so. I don't think so. We'll see. Will. Will. Oh, sorry. Man. How you doing, dude? Uh, good. How are you guys? I'm all right, mate. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm actually a recent revert. Am I allowed to argue like another position or do I have to like just go away? What? So, oh, sorry. Wait, is it is it because he can't hear me, or was like is what I'm saying doesn't make sense? It doesn't. It kind of doesn't make sense. But, yeah. What are you on about? Oh, so like he's a revert. Yeah, he so, wants to know if he can ask a question. Yeah, he's so, a revert. Well, well, yeah. yeah, yeah, wrong. Salam alaikum. Okay. Uh, what salam alaikum? Uh, Can I just pause you there? Uh, brother, on. it's wa alaikum as salam, but I think what I got was wa alaikulumai. Close enough. You almost got it. You almost I, thought got it salam, I thought he said salam habibi. Anyway, sorry, bro. No, this is a stream for non Muslims, not revert Muslims, nor um, born Muslims. It's for non Muslims. So this is the thing. 
Okay, uh, Cody. Hey, how's it going, guys? Can you hear me? We can hear you, sir. Hey, um, so I just got a question um, for the last guy. You guys were saying that um, you can't accept the testimonies of the believers um, because simply because of the, what they say. Um, now, why can't it be the same way for, uh, you know, Muhammad's word, him saying that, you know, an angel told, came to him and, um, you know, told him to, to write oh, these Cody. things down. Cody, what did you think you just heard? Honestly, what did you think you just heard? I don't, I don't, I don't understand. What, what are you responding to? What do you think I was saying to him, the other guy? <laughs> that you, you couldn't accept the, uh, the testimonies of the, the other believers. I wasn't saying that. Uh, saying, they, saying that they, they witnessed, uh, you know, Christ crucified and resurrected. I wasn't saying that. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I must have misunderstood the the last. Uh, yeah. Last, so the last uh, guy, the yeah, last guy was saying the last guy was saying he he knows Jesus was crucified and that Flavius Josephus knew Jesus was crucified and I said no he just simply just believed he was crucified based upon what people were saying, which is what you've just told me. Yeah. So basically, the people believed he was crucified. Is that correct or not? Uh, yeah, there were there were witnesses of his crucifix, crucifixion and resurrection, and then there were people who believed What's believed the on the, the crucifixion and resurrection. They believed on the testimony of these people, yes? Yes. Did they know or did they believe? Um, well, I don't, as to who and as to, um, you know, me specifically, I'm talking about like the, uh, the 500 witnesses of his resurrection. I'm not, I'm not talking about them. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking okay. about whoever these witnesses told. Did they know or did they believe the witnesses? I'm assuming the they believed. They, the ones they told believed, yes. And Flavius Josephus, did he know or did he believe? Uh, you know, I'm not too sure. I, I'm I, I'm not sure who uh, Josephus is. Well, Flavius Josephus is a Jewish historian who wrote about Jesus being crucified as okay. what people say but the question is this did Flavius Josephus know or was he deceived or was he did he believe uh, again I, I don't know who this this Josephus is I'm assuming he he believed I mean I, I don't I don't know because my, my uh, this is my claim listen to my claim because okay. that guy came on so triggered about this claim you listening yeah I'm listening okay so the Quran says what the Quran says the people thought Jesus was crucified, yes? I, I'm not familiar with the Quran either. No, I'm, telling, I'm telling you. So the Quran okay. says, so you see if this works out, listen. The Quran says the people thought Jesus was crucified, yeah? Or they believed he was crucified, yeah? Okay. 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 History reports the people believed Jesus was crucified, yeah? Okay. So is the Quran confirming history or against history? Uh, I think it, it depends on, uh, you know, who who you would rather believe in this stop, instance. Would stop, you believe? Stop, 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 stop. Historians are saying the people believe Jesus was crucified, okay? Okay. So, the, now listen again. Historians are saying the people believed Jesus was crucified, okay? The historians are, are saying that people believe Jesus is crucified. Yes, yes. Okay. The Quran is saying that people believe Jesus was crucified. Yes? Okay. Right. Is the Quran against history or with history? Well, that that's just depends on whether is the Jesus Quran was actually crucified or not. Is that that depends Quran, on... No, 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 no. So you you, you got to accept by faith whether whether you like no, it or not. Whether you... Just please. Is, is history saying Jesus was crucified? The people believe he was crucified. Well, I mean, there's there's lots of different historical documents that talk about oh, Jesus. There, there is. Hey, hey oh, just up. listen. Just listen, shut man. Up, shut up, Win. So, Win. You, you came on so intelligent, and now you you just, I don't know what happened. You're intelligent out the window, because when you realized I was right. And, and now you're fumbling in the dark in faith, and it's got nothing to do with faith. Well, it does, man. It does. No, it because you got to no, accept. No, it doesn't. No, it whether... doesn't. No, it doesn't. What what does historians saying people believe Jesus was crucified have to do with faith? 
An atheistic, if an atheistic historian says people in the past believe Jesus was crucified, what does that have to do with faith on part of the historian? On the part of the historian, well, okay, what what I'm getting at is specifically. <laughs> Go on, <EJ. laughs> you, 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 you let him finish. You don't let me respond, man. Try to respond. Go ahead. What's your response? What, but what you I'm realize he's talking Quran, about history. He's not talking about faith. You get yes. that? The distinction. What I, what I'm saying is the Quran says. No, no, before we get to what you say, because a minute ago you didn't know what the Quran said, right? Okay. Well, well, according to you, what you, what you said, the Quran says that the people. Do you understand? One second. Do you understand Hamza's distinction between faith and what people claim? The distinction between what people are saying and what actually happened is that what you're saying between what people what people claim happened and faith that he's not talking about those two things are not the same well, thing well, you understand right. That? right you agree that's his point so you agree there, with there two, two claims here two claims one that jesus was crucified and then one that you know according to the quran that no you're saying that people believe no, no the claim is this the people the historians say the people believed he was crucified. That's the claim, yes? The historians weren't there, did they? All they're doing is reporting history. And they're saying in history, these people believed Jesus was crucified. Okay, yes? yeah, sure. Fantastic. And what does the Quran say? That the Quran says that these people in history believed Jesus was crucified, yes? Okay. Right. Is the Quran against history or with history? Uh, and, I mean, I guess in that instance, if you're saying that the historians are saying that they people believe that Jesus are crucified, that Jesus was crucified, then yeah, sure. If you if you want to, you know, say that the Quran is in line with what these historians are saying, but what I'm saying is, well, stop, 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 stop. By, there, stop there. One second. So was I correct in saying the Quran agrees with history? I guess you, you, they're correct with historians, you know. I what mean, you're looking for is, yes, you were correct. Sure, sure. Right, right. And the last guy came on to tell me I wasn't correct. So you disagree with the last guy as much as I do. Anyway, go on, take it. Let me make you next point because that was really bad. Go on. <laughs> okay. Uh, what, what, so the Muslims don't believe Jesus was crucified, right? No. Okay. So, why is that? Because the Quran says Jesus wasn't crucified. Okay, so you, you're going to, by faith, take the claim that the Quran says that Jesus wasn't crucified, while other people are taking the faith claim that Jesus was crucified, right? Okay, but there were, there were second, second, second century Christians who didn't believe Jesus was crucified. Islam didn't invent who this idea. Claimed, who claimed first century tradition? So yeah, yeah. So there. Wait, what? What Christians are you talking about? Like, are you just talking about like historical documents that say that no. that Jesus wasn't crucified? Or no, 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 no. I'm talking about the Basilidans who believed that um, Simon of Cyrene was crucified, not Jesus. And the Gospel of Barnabas says that Judas was crucified, and not Jesus. Okay, so you you've got okay. I've heard about this this Judas document saying allegedly that Judas took his place on the cross or whatever. But uh, so how are you how are you gonna you know take the the testimonies of these other witnesses? What were the versus, names? Who were the witnesses? The witnesses of of the Bible of the crucifixion. Who witnessed it? I don't know their names. It's it specifically says in in um, you know in the Bible that there were five hundred witnesses. No, and no, you've no. Got, who are they? You, it just says five hundred witnesses. I don't know their names. So um, the court of, of, court, law. of course, you got Matthew. One second, one second, Cody. You're in a court of law accused of armed robbery, and yeah, we got five hundred witnesses that this guy did it. Okay, and he said, okay, who are they? He said, well, well, we don't know. They just said he did it. Would that be acceptable? Well, I mean, we're we're would going that, on we're going on. What is this? Twenty? Would, would that be acceptable? Um, 
probably probably not in the court of law, you know. No, 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 no. It's not probably not. It's most definitely not. Okay, okay. Right, 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 right. So five hundred. Well, first you, you've got Matthew, Mark, Rick, and John. Those, those, are, those are those are four names. Cody, Cody. Five hundred unknown witnesses is no witnesses. Okay, well, you've got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you know, that are witnesses. And then you've got... Stop, stop. Cody, Cody. Yeah, Cody. they work. You've got, you've got Peter. Oh, you're baseball. Okay. You've got Peter. Listen, you've got listen, listen, Mary. Listen. You've got Mary Magdalene. You've Cody, got Cody. Mary. Cody. Those are, Can those are some of the names of the witnesses. Can I ask you a question? Then we'll let you just take over. All right, you ready? Okay, go ahead. Do you believe the authors of the Gospels were eyewitnesses to the events they recorded? I believe they were. <laughs> really? Do you believe they were disciples of Jesus? I do. Okay. So now we've diagnosed your problem. Would it be a problem for you if they weren't? Well, so are, are you getting on to the fact that the ma earliest manuscripts were over 100? No, no, no. no, I'm just saying to you. Would it be a problem for you to discover that the authors of the Gospels were they themselves not eyewitnesses? They were not primary source information. Would that be an issue for you? Yeah, but but how could you prove that? I no, no, no. But if we could, would that be an issue for you? If, if you could, if you could prove that the authors of the Gospels that were were liars and did not witness, you know. No, no, no. Okay, first thing, none of the authors of the Gospels claim to be witnesses, so it's not they're lying. Well, they, well, claim, they, they have. Claim they have quotations and they have, you know. They claim it. Did any gospel writer claim to be a disciple of Jesus? Just because it specifically says, I. I, I no, it, it doesn't go in there and say, mm -hmm. I, Mark, went and witnessed these events. No, right. it doesn't say that. Do any of them claim to be a disciple of Jesus? Well, I imagine by their words and by then ho holding to their words. Oh, the answer is no. The answer is no. Okay, so none of them claimed it. So you can't say they're liars because they didn't make the claim. Okay, so anyhow, if we can demonstrate to you right now that what you believe to be uh, eyewitness testimony from the disciples of Jesus isn't, yeah, then that's going to be a problem for you, isn't it? Say it. Can you repeat that last phrase? If we can demonstrate to you right now that the authors of the Gospels were not eyewitness disciples of Jesus. That's going to be a problem for you, isn't it? Uh, it depends. It depends. Um, on... okay, okay. okay, one second. Let's say we show that, and now you're saying it depends. Okay, if they're not eyewitness disciples of Jesus, why would you believe what they say? Well, because of faith. Because of faith. Faith in what? Well, let, let's hear let's hear what you have to <laughs> say. About the, faith about, in what? Faith, faith in what? Faith in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But uh, well, you only know about your Lord and Savior based upon this testimony of people who were not eyewitnesses. So why would you believe what they say? Well, okay, let's see how you prove that they're not eyewitness testimonies. I'll give it to you, man. It's too easy for me. And it's no, you we, can go. We don't need to go down that road. I mean. I'll just make it simple for you. Why do you think they're eyewitnesses when they don't make that claim? Because they have the specific words of the Lord of, of the Lord Himself, and you know of the events that took place. Listen to the question carefully. How do you know that Mark? How do, Mark how do I know? Well, because yeah. personally, what what the Lord has done in my life, and what He's done, like, like. Through certain circumstances in my life, you know, that that is how I've come to the faith. And so well, right. So your faith is separate from the reliability of those documents. It, it's irrelevant to it, basically. Well, I think it's the foundation of my faith. It's it's more so the foundation and and you know, from from that foundation, all these other things have occurred in my life and have confirmed my faith. Wouldn't it be a problem if that foundation wasn't true and you still ended up believing this? Your foundation has to be something firm, right? Well, Not something speculative. It, I mean, I, I think it's speculative to say that these people weren't the authors of the Gospels. It's not speculative. I put the question to you. I, I can make it simple for you. Let's just take one Gospel, Mark. Okay. How do All you right. know that Mark wrote the Gospel of Mark? 
Well, I don't other than the name of the, the author of the, well, the name of the book. Well, I've got good news and bad news. The, whoever wrote the Gospel of Mark did not attach their name to it as the Gospel of Mark. Okay. That, came, that comes later in the, in the manuscript tradition. It's called an inscriptio or a title, and it's called a subscriptio when it's at the end of a book. Oh, meaning okay. the gospel. So they're not there from the start. They're, they actually appear later in the manuscript tradition. The inscriptios and subscriptios for the gospels appear later, sometime in the third or fourth century CE, primarily with Codex Sinaiticus and Codex Vaticanus. It's not before that. So there's several centuries removed from their names being included on the manuscripts themselves. Okay. Um, so what makes you think that Mark wrote Mark then? Well, you got to take into the fact of you know the the uprising that happened in in Israel, right? You you have you know the Jews revolting against the Roman Empire, correct? You know, yeah. right after. How is that relevant to who wrote the gospel? Well, well you got you got to take into the fact that uh, you know. I imagine that a lot of these original manuscripts were were destroyed. You got to take into the fact that to get the original manuscripts, you're talking centuries later. The names were added to the gospels. Okay, well, it, it whether whether, whether they work. whether they wrote it or not, you know, you have you know confirming and you have multiple testimonies of the same occurrence. You have multiple um, from who? One of the disciples. You know, whoever wrote these these manuscripts. How do you know disciples wrote them? It, you, what you're telling me is that you don't know, and so then you're telling me you do know what, at the same time. What that sounds inconsistent. What I know is that in a, a disciple wrote these manuscripts. Do I know whether or not who, it who was Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John? The, it's obvious from the the contents of the actual. You know, writings. The contents what? of the book don't indicate who the authors are, specific to their names or identities. Okay, and so in fact, if you've ever read Greco-Roman literature from that period, the period of late antiquity, homonymous authorship, writing in someone's name or style is quite fairly common. So the gospels aren't distinctive in that sense. That's like telling me the Gospel of Thomas because it has the name Thomas in it is written by him. But the Gospel of Barnabas, because it has the name Barnabas, is written by him. You don't well, take that claim to be Ultimately, it's not the true. gospel of these disciples. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, you know, because it's it's all about Jesus Christ. Is it, listen to me. The I'll good tell news. you, gospel is good news. Colby, shall I tell you what it is? What's that? I'll tell you what the New Testament gospels are. Shall I tell you? It's it's an account of Jesus Christ, and it's all it's written gospel. about. It's gossip. It's, I'll tell you what it is. You ready? It's a biography written about the life and times of Jesus Christ, written by men who never met him. And, and, and what you basis do you have those claims? You, 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 it's basically a subjective claim that you've got. Did, Jesus, did Luke meet Jesus? According to these, these manuscripts, according to the, the Bible itself, these people were disciples of Jesus. Okay, no, I gotta tell you, you're a terrible question. Luke, Luke was Luke a physician, was, and it's written in those manuscripts. Luke isn't a physician, and he's it, not according a to those manuscripts. According to the Bible Luke, itself, it says Luke, Luke is, is a physician. Disciple. Luke is a disciple what, of Paul. What, what is Luke is a what? A physician. A, okay, is he a disciple of Jesus? Yeah. Yeah, he met Jesus. Let, he let, met, tell me the name of the disciples of Jesus. I mean, <laughs> I, I can pull up the scripture. I mean. Go right whether, you, whether or not you want to agree with the scripture or not. Yeah, pull, it, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it up. Okay. Let the, let the Bible speak. <laughs> this is mean, Hamza. He doesn't know better. I don't think he knows better. I know, but I'm pulling wings of a fly at the moment, so. How are you, Abdurrahman? Everything good? Oh, oh. We'll find you a juicy atheist, don't worry. Go on, wait, say, All right, say. so this one's written by Paul, Colossians 4. Okay. Whoa, whoa, stop, stop, Coloss stop, stop, stop. Colossians 4. You're talking about Luke. Luke, Paul, the, Luke the beloved Paul, physician, and Demas Do you believe Paul met Jesus, the historical talking, walking Jesus, doing it? I believe world? he had a revelation of Jesus, oh, yeah, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did he meet the historical Jesus walking and talking and giving uh, lectures to his disciples and all of these things and doing miracles? Did he see this or not, Paul? 
No, the the way that Paul met Jesus was on the on the road. Uh, on the, Paul didn't. So Paul didn't. Why are you going to? Paul okay, I, I think I'll take that back. He did meet Jesus, but not in his physical. Not okay. walking. The question was about Luke. The question was about Luke. Right, Luke being a Luke being a physician. Not being a disciple of Jesus. <laughs> we don't care if he was a doctor. Okay, okay. Well, right, I was pulling up the scripture that Luke was a physician. And disciple of a you disciple made of Jesus. A disciple of Jesus. Well, he but, is according to say, Paul. According to Paul, he's a where disciple does, of Jesus. Where does, where does Paul say Luke is a disciple of Jesus? Did he think we asked him? Paul to prove to us that Luke was a doctor. <laughs> where does Paul like? Where do you think Paul says that Luke was a disciple of Jesus? Yeah, yeah. Tell us that. Tell us that. Give me a second. Okay, I'll, give you a second. I'll give you more than a second. Oh. Time for Shahad. Uh, it says, Sir, for, for I bear with him record that he hath a great zeal for you, and then that are in uh, La Laudius, yeah, I, I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, and Laodicea then in, in Her oh. Heropolis, Luke, the beloved Laodicea. physician, and Demis greet you. Salute the brethren which are in uh, Laodicea and Nymphus in the church which is in his house. So, according to Paul, Luke is a disciple. He believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's one of the brethren. Oh, stop, stop, stop. What was our question? Is Luke a, dis a disciple? No, that's not what our question. Our question okay, is, was, was, G was Luke one of the 12 disciples that walked with Jesus who witnessed his miracles and parables and explanations to them? No. Okay. No, the answer is no. He wasn't. So he's not eyewitness. So whatever he says in his in his gospel isn't a primary but, source. But again, you can't. You you were just saying that you can't prove that Luke was the author of that. So author of that that manuscript. You're saying that it came later. The gospel of the gospel. Okay. Two things. Luke is not a disciple of Jesus, which was your claim. And by disciple, you know we mean one of the 12, right? Okay. Let's you... not play that game. Do you think disciple, when we say Mark is a disciple, Matthew is a disciple, do you think we were talking about random people or we're talking about one of the 12? Well, I'm assuming one of the 12. Exactly. And so I'm assuming... was Luke a disciple? Well, you know, if you're, if you're going... To... Oh, I'm sorry. You guys still there? Yeah. Back up. Well, I, I'm assuming... You know, basically, it's it's all like just trusting in that. Um, no, answer the question, please. You made the claim that Luke is a disciple. Is Luke a disciple according to what, what? anything that you know? Yes or no? Other than Colossians four fourteen, you know, I, Colossians I doesn't say he's a disciple of the I, twelve. I mean, he's he's that. A okay, in a I mean, disciple of the twelve, I can't I can't specifically give you historical evidence that prove he's is one of the twelve. Other than that, the book written by Luke. Cody, Cody, listen, just listen. Okay, here's the names of the twelve disciples. Okay, you listen. To the name Luke. Ready? Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, Judas Iscariot, Matthew. Thomas, um, James, the son of Alphaeus, Bartholomew, Judas Thaddeus, and Simon Zelots. Did you hear Luke? No, I didn't. So Luke's not a disciple of Jesus, agreed? Okay. Right, okay. So, his, so his gospel is not eyewitness testimony, agreed? Well, how do you know? Well, you're just saying that you don't know if Luke was written by Luke, right? So well, who, was, who, who wrote Luke? I don't know. I want to hear it. I want to say, it. who wrote Luke? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! You don't know. Well, you. It, if you're if you're going specifically by Cody, that, Cody, 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 you don't know who wrote it yet. You believe it's true. Why? I do because you have plenty of other you know evidence to to confirm tell plenty us, of other testimonies. Tell us why you believe. A gospel written by somebody you don't know who it was. You don't know if they told the truth. Do you, you, do you want my my personal second, testimony? Second, 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 second. You don't know if they told the truth. You don't know if they were exaggerated. You don't know if they were mistaken. Okay. You don't know any of these things. Why do you believe it's true? 
Well, I, I could give you my personal testimony, but I know you guys <laughs> won't appreciate that. I know, I know you guys won't appreciate it, but it's okay. No, I'll tell you why we don't. I, Cody, I'll tell you why we don't. Are you saying... Having a personal subjective anecdote no. that supports your one second, one second. You having a personal subjective anecdote. Are you saying this thing can be used to determine things that are true? No. Well, it depends. No. It oh, depends. No. It actually depends because right. you have you have eyewitness testimonies who who Stop. are Stop. credible Stop. sources you, you of evidence from, in court you, cases. Look, 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 you've just gone to some point in your life where you had an epiphany and something happened and something saved you and you think this thing was Jesus and Christianity and that makes Christianity true. This is what has happened to you. I can bring in Muslims that had the same. Hindus will make the same claim. Everyone will make the same claim. Now, no religions can be reconciled. So if you're trying to say that a Christian like yourself can have some kind of epiphany based upon some kind of personal tragedy or some personal exaltation or whatever it may be, can be used to determine something to be true, then the same can be said of a Muslim who has the same experience. Yeah? Uh, have which, a which means, which means, because that can't be true, because you can't have a logical contradiction, you can't have two explanations to a same phenomenon and both be true. So if a Christian makes a claim based upon personal subjective anecdotal experience, and a Muslim makes a claim about a personal subjective anecdotal experience, they both can't be true because they're contrary, Therefore, neither can be used as an evidence for truth. Okay, so I, I got a question though. What what incentive do these, these disciples have to to make all this up? What what incentive do they have? Do you understand that we don't think the disciples wrote those documents? They're literally okay. unknown what, people. What incentive does anybody unknown. have? Anybody mm -hmm. have to make those documents up? Okay, so any document from the period of late antiquity, I mentioned earlier that there was the concept of homonymous authorship, writing in someone's name and style, and in particular, the Gospels fall into the category of aretologies. A-R-E-T-A-L-O-G-I-E-S. Aretologies are miracle literature with personal anecdotes and advice, counsel, these types of things. You have the same for Philostratus, uh, sorry, not Philostratus, uh, uh, I forgot his name, <laughs> forgive me. Uh, but you have this for other people in the period of late antiquity. It's not unique to Jesus himself. If you want a technical word, they're also called creai, C-H-R-E-I-A-I. So wisdom sayings. If you go through the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, there were books by academics that compare the sayings of Jesus with the sayings of other uh, well-known uh, wisdom teachers at the same time. And they're, if not identical, they're almost exactly the same. Some of the sayings that you may think are unique to Jesus are actually quite not. And I will point you to this book. There's one by uh, Burton Mack called Who Wrote the Gospels, I think. He goes through the teachings of the wisdom teachers and he points this out. Uh, and the wisdom teachings are teachings from the late Second Temple period. Okay. Okay, You're asking, that. do people have an incentive to do so? Yes, there is a technical term for it in Latin epsisimo vox to write in the voice of someone else so it's so well known and so popular not only can we categorize it we can subcategorize it and we can demonstrate examples of it so it's, it's like just a, a yeah. theory right it's just a theory not a theory, not a theory. it's well known that crei and that you have uh, ipsosomo vox these phenomena are well known in the late second temple period this is not something unique to christianity so you can prove who wrote these these original manuscripts. We don't they, care who you can wrote. prove that you can prove that they were copies or just allegedly uh, you know the writings that you just talked about. So we know that they exist because we have manuscripts of that time and place, right? Dated manuscripts of that time and place. And we can compare them with the wider body of literature again from that time and place. So Asia Minor. In the late Second Temple period, the period of late antiquity, we can do that. It's not something new, and it's what study. If you study the, uh, well, uh, you're just comparing. Yeah, it's not. Well, yeah, you can compare and you can see. Well, if Jesus is claimed to have said X, and here were four other authors saying the exact same thing before and after him, then these statements can be from the lips of Jesus. It can't be unique to him. But it's simple common sense. Either Jesus said them, originated from him, or it didn't. 
if he's borrowing the teachings of others, I think that's important for your belief. You don't believe he was a borrower of, uh, if, of these uh, Roman and Greek traditions. So why would Jesus be saying the exact same thing they are saying? That does not make sense, right? Well, a lot of what Jesus said, um, you know, points back to Old Testament script, Old Testament scripture. It doesn't. Um, it does. Most of it doesn't. Like, I'll give you an easy example here. Most of the quotations of the Greek New Testament, when it quotes the Old Testament, there it's quoting something called the Greek Septuagint tradition. Christians, some Christians, if they're not well educated, they think that's simply the Old Testament in Koine Greek or Greek, but that's not the case. The Greek Septuagint tradition is a separate Old Testament tradition with different quotations, different wordings, different phraseology. It's not the same, and the Jews reject it as a perversion of their own scripture. Academics consider it to be of its own tradition, separate or uh, in its own line of development. So yeah, we can look back and see that when Jesus quotes things, not only does he get them wrong, not only do they not match what the Hebrew says, not only they, do they are they absent from the Greek Septuagint copies that we have today, they're absolutely contradictory. This is the thing. So it's not new to us. It's well known. We've actually taken the time to study this. <laughs> have you invested the same time in studying your own faith, if I might ask you that? No, I, I don't go into depth as to historical documents or... Um, you know, whether or not, um, you know, like what you guys are saying, that the actual disciples uh, or the, the authors of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were Mar Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Um, you but know, I've, I've, I've read, Cody, I read the specific if, Bible. and um, Cody, But if you're not taking the effort to investigate your faith, know its foundations, we can't lay claim to that being the truth, right? The same level of investigation that we Muslims do to Christianity, we do the same thing to Islam. Like here, I've got a book on Hadith studies. Here, I've got a book on the traditions of the Quran matching the Bible. Here, I've got a book on a gateway to the Quranic sciences. We don't just sit down and assume that what we have is the truth. We well, have to go through so a long I, period of study, Cody. I got a question. So like... Uh... With Muhammad, you know, like he, he by faith, you know, had someone else write this book for him saying that an angel commanded, commanded him to, you know, write these things. Um, if I'm, if I'm saying this wrong, forgive me, I don't know, you know, a whole lot about Islam. All I know is specifically Muhammad received a revelation from an angel and um, had someone else write down the Quran for him. So he had actually between 60 and 65 personal scribes, all of whom copied and transmitted the Quran in such a significant number that we have word for word today cohesion with what the manuscripts of the Quran say. So we as Muslims can have confidence in that regard. If I were to put the same thing in comparison to Christianity or Judaism, I won't be able to have that word for word coherence. So I can't have that same confidence as I would in Islam for Christianity and Judaism. So right. I invite you to actually take a look at what Muslims believe, understand why we believe it, and then make a choice on whether you think it's reasonable or not. We're not asking you to choose Islam here and now or to leave Christianity here and now, but the least you can do after the conversation today is actually begin to study a bit more about your faith and what Islam teaches. Isn't that a fair question, Cody? What, what do you have to say about the 24,000 manuscripts or, or around 24,000 manuscripts? So it's 28, about 28,600 or thereabouts. And that's in multiple languages, right? What you want to look for are the earliest manuscripts and that would be those in Koine Greek. The vast majority of those come after the 9th century CE or roughly eight to 900 years after Christ Jesus lived on walked the earth. So we're not basing our faith on something that came to almost 900 years later. When you ask about primary manuscripts from the time of Christ, they don't exist. The Quran was written 500 years, right? We have, what do you mean? We have the Quran. 500, we have, 500 sorry, years after, after the resurrection of Christ, correct? It's written roughly 600 years, but we have the Quran from the time of the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But we don't have the Bible from the time of Christ Jesus. 
so, but what, what I'm getting at is whether or not, you know, you believe these 24,000 manuscripts or you believe, you know, Muhammad or, you know, whoever it is, you know, you're placing your faith in those, no. in those teachings, you know, you're placing your faith in my, in what Muhammad received. And I'm placing my faith in what these no. authors received from. It's not. Yeah. So this is not a fair claim to be honest with you. Like I said, we're not making the same claim and we don't have the same type of evidence, right? So we have evidence from the lifetime of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, of the Quran. And within the same generation of his companions, the thousands of them, not just 12, but almost 10,000 of them, this is the amount that lived in his lifetime, the traditions and teachings that they held on to, and as they dispersed throughout the, you know, the geographic region, we can actually find the traditions, identify and date them. We can't do the same thing for early Christianity. And when we do have little evidences here and there, they're contrary to the traditional Christian faith that you believe in, which is why we make the decision that we don't believe in Christianity, but we do believe in Islam. And further to this, I would argue the Jews who, you know, Jesus said they sit in the seat of Moses and obey them. I think it's Matthew chapter 10. I could be wrong on the reference, right? The Jews consider of all the nations on the earth, just one other nation to be saved. And it's not Christians. They say, the pious among the nations, that that group of people saved are the Muslims, right? So as a Muslim, I'm considered to be saved in Judaism and in Islam. But you don't have that level of security. You don't have that level of consistent theology. And the God that you believe you know has changed over time. And I don't think it can be found in the Old Testament or the New Testament. It's vastly different what you hold on to of the traditions of men. But the traditions of men don't always have to reflect the truth of God. And that's what we're calling you to. But you're I, something stronger, not in something weaker, Cody. I disagree, you know, respectfully. Um, you know, I, from the consistency in the Bible, you know, whether, whether you think it contradicts um, it, itself, it really doesn't, you know. Um, you know, you take I, I'll give all these an easy example. You combine, I'll give you, I'll okay. give you an easy example, Cody, an easy example, right? A prophet who prophesies even one prophecy wrong is a false prophet. Agreed? Yeah. Okay. Now, Jesus, speaking to the Pharisees, he either says a sign will be given to this generation, the sign of Jonah, or I think according to Matthew, he says that no, sorry, Mark, that no sign will be given. Right? Those are two contrary statements. Either a sign will be given to this generation, or no sign will be given. Are those the same statement or are they contrary to each other? He said no sign will be given except the sign of Jonah. He said two statements. This is, no sign will be given. And in another place in Matthew, so that's Mark. Sorry, that's Mark. And in Matthew, he says a sign will be no sign will be given except the sign of Jonah. So on one hand, no sign. On the other hand, a sign. I are they the he... same statement? I think if you actually like, he's trying to say that they're not given any other sign other than the sign of Jonah. Listen it's, to what Mark says: No sign will be given. No sign will be given. Except Mark. Mark does not have the except statement. It plainly says no sign will be given. If you don't mind, I'm gonna go and read that real quick. Yeah, pick it up right now. Let's do it right now. You said in Mark. Yeah. No sign. It's Mark 8, 12. You can bring it up yourself. And if Hamza wants to share, I got it up. I uh, can share it on my screen. Mark chapter 8, verse 12. Let's do this live. All right. Matthew or Mark, I'm sorry. Mark chapter 8, 8 12. verse 12. He sighed deeply and said, why does this generation ask for a sign? Truly, I tell you, no sign will be given to it. Then he let them go back into the boat and cross the other side. And then you have Matthew, where it says, no sign will be given to him except the sign of Jonah. So yep. Matthew. Yep, Matthew chapter 12, verse 38 to 42. 
you can just go to verse 39, Matthew 12, 39. So if you if instead you keep looking at this as contradictions, you can read it as it's building off of each other. Like I've got I've got another instance no. in and no, not only not stick, only this yes, one. let's stick to this before you move on. Of course, are these statements of course. contradictory, plainly contradictory to each other, or are they saying the same thing? So you, you've got Matthew sixteen four. Um, a wicked and adulterous generation looks for a sign, but none will be given it except the sign of Jonah. Jesus then left them and went away. Yeah, that contradicts what Mark says, which is my point. Well, I, I at, wanna, no point I wanna... at no point does Mark make the claim that a sign of Jonah will be given. Okay. Um, can I? He makes the claim no sign will be given. I want you to, like, we have to be honest with each other here, Cody. Do you accept that Mark says no sign will be given? Well, I, I, I do because there, there are certain things in the Bible that, um, you know, there are things like details left out in one account and then other, the other account completes that, that detail. Okay, good. Like it, so are you saying that Mark left something out intentionally? Possibly. I'm not, I'm not saying I know for this sure. Is a, this is a mistake that Mark makes then because it's, it's the mistake between no sign being given and a sign being given. One falsifies the, the truthfulness of Jesus, the other confirms it. Okay, can, this, can, this is a mistake. You gotta let us know now. I don't. I don't think it is. Um, can I? Can I just give you a couple other verses? No. Before you move to other examples, deal with this example, Cody. You I don't. I don't shift like, move. No. I, this, I. What is your problem with this example? I would like to know. I don't have a problem with it. I'm just saying that. I'm. It you could. You accept it's a contradiction. I no. I don't believe it's a contradiction. I believe the contradiction that is. is to say a. And not a at the same time. Uh, a man is jumping, and he's not jumping at the same well, time. It, it's just an incomplete, uh, incomplete verse. It, it says no time will be given to Mark. Mark. Okay. And then, how do you know that yeah. the one in Mark is not as incomplete as opposed to Mark choosing to write it as it is? Because it's there's, uh, you know, like I said, I'll give you other verses where no, don't where move other examples. Deal with example, Cody. You seem to. Well, I, I got a, I got a, well, I'm trying to, to help you with this example by showing you other scriptures where this, where the same thing happens. All you'll be showing me is the same problem again and again. So you don't need to multiply the problem, deal with the foundational problem. You have two options here. Well, I, Either I, Mark made a mistake, he Matthew make a mistake. made a mistake. It's, it's building off of it. Moms. Hold on, hold on. Where do you get the conclusion? I'm asking you now, does Mark ever say that math, sorry, does Mark ever say a sign will be given? Okay, if you would just let me show you these other verses. We're not moving, we're not moving. Answer the question, please. Does Mark say a sign will be given, yes or no? He says no sign will be given. No You're sign right. will be given. Does he say anything other than that about there, it? There, it is incomplete. You have Matthew where he says no sign will be given except the sign of Jonah. Pause. Pause. Is it incomplete or is it a mistake? It, it's incomplete. If it's incomplete, does it falsify the words of Jesus? Or does it correctly no. represent what Jesus said? No, I don't think it falsifies his words. I then think does that... it correctly represent the words that Jesus said? I believe so. It says no word, no sign will be given except the sign of Jonah. In, well, in Mark, does it correctly represent what Jesus said? I believe it does. It, if, so he says if, no sign. Matthew says a sign. How are they representing the same thing? Okay, if if somebody doesn't recognize the sign, will they take that as a sign? If no, you, you don't recognize the, the sign of reasoning. Jonah, is, do you so understand if, the difference? Hold on, before you ask me a hypothetical, do you understand the difference between a sign and no sign? Do you understand the difference? Yeah. Yeah. Do you appreciate that they're contradictory? I, I don't like I said, I don't believe it's contradictory. Do you understand a contradiction to say a sign and no sign is contradictory? This just, is the law, second law of logic. You're telling me that you don't understand contradictions, Cody. I don't I, believe that. <laughs> I, no, I, I understand it. I understand what you're trying to get at, but I'm trying no, to tell you do that you I understand what a contradiction is, Cody. I do. I understand what a contradiction right. so is. Someone and I understand says what you're that they're sitting and the other person says they're not sitting. Is that a contradiction? Say again. If someone says he's sitting and another person says he's not sitting, is that a contradiction? 
Yeah, it's a contradiction. Okay. Someone says they jump in. Someone else says they not jump in. Is that a contradiction? Yes. Someone says, I'll give you money. The other person says, I'll give you no money. Is that a contradiction? Yeah. Hamza says he'll give you a sign. Uh, I say that I won't give you a sign. Is that a contradiction? Yeah, it is. But okay. what, I, what I'm trying to say is that the scripture builds off of it. If you, if you would let me read the other scriptures where you would, where again, you would think it's contradictory. It's actually Jesus it revealing help. who he is. I, okay. I, I, Cody. Please, please, oh, like, Cody. You, you say to defend my faith. You guys aren't letting me defend my faith. You guys have so been willing to defend it. I'll tell you what you're going to do now. You're going to go to another gospel written by another man who wasn't an eyewitness, who contradicts the first man who wasn't an eyewitness to demonstrate what exactly? Let, let me read. Let me meet, read my no, scripture, no, and then I'll go. I'll go for you. I'll go. What you, I'll do what you guys are going to do no, after no, no. after I read mine. Before you go through it, what do you think it's going to demonstrate? Uh, I'm not sure what you what your what your incentive is here. No. What do you think going to another gospel written by another man who wasn't an eyewitness is going to demonstrate? I'm trying to, I'm going to read the scripture. Why? Why are you going to read the scripture? <laughs> because it's essential to my faith. It's the, no, it's the foundation of my faith. What do you think is going to demonstrate? It, it's going to demonstrate where you guys might believe this is another contradiction and where it's actually, you know, a compilation of, of Jesus' sayings that actually, you know, prove to reveal who he is. What? Okay, just let just let me let me read them, please. I'll, I'll... Why are you reading it? All right. No, this, is, this, talk, this is talking about Jesus when when people are being persecuted for holding to his name, um, and Jesus says three different things in in three different accounts. What? What are you talking about now? What was the sign? One second, one second. I'm, I'm trying one to second. show you one where second. where you might believe it. It's contradictory. I'm not interested in your preaching. Okay, listen. Okay. What but was you, the sign? You guys, are, you guys are drilling me. Come on, this is a, a debate. This is Cody. a conversation. We got to go back and forth here, guys. Cody, Cody, Cody. According to the Gospel of Mark, what was the sign Jesus said he would give the adulterous generation? What was the sign? It's the sign of Jonah to be in the belly and Right. The so, Jonah okay. being belly whale for three go, go nights. Go to the Gospel of Mark. Three days and three go nights. Go to the Gospel of Mark. One second. Go to the Gospel of Mark and show me the sign of Jonah. It it, it doesn't say it in Mark. It doesn't. And right, right. So I asked you. Well, stop. So I asked you. According to the Gospel of Mark, according to the author of that Gospel, what was the sign Jesus said he would give to the adulterous generation? Like I said, there are things missing in each account I'm not they don't, they're not all exactly the same there. they're they're accounts from what from four sign? different one authors second. one sign uh, one second what was the sign jesus said he would give to the adulterous generation in the <laughs> gospel of mark he said no sign will be given and there's nothing further what after you? no sign will be given i'm gonna ask you one last time and if you're gonna say sign of jonah again I want you to open the Gospel of Mark and show me where Jesus said the sign of Jonah. And when you can't I, find I told it, you, I told you, I said no sign right? will be given. It, you, you can no, relax, man. You don't have to yell at me, dude. So your answer is what? What was the sign Jesus said he would give to the adulterous generation in the Gospel of Mark? No sign. Agreed? Okay, but in Matthew it says no sign in will be given. It's that. The it's, sign, it's of the sign of Jonah, yes? Yes. What came first, Mark or Matthew? I'm not sure. Mark. Matthew copies from Mark. Well, so you, can't, Matthew... you can't prove that they copied each other. How do you how do you know that they, they went and copied copied each so other's thing? Do you know anything about New Testament scholarship? How that the, the three synoptics how Matthew and Luke borrow from Mark, at least 70% verbatim. Do you, do you well, know they, your base? They didn't. They didn't. They didn't. You, you can't prove that. They didn't. 
New Testament scholars said they did. So who's right, you or the New Testament scholars? What what basis do the New Testament scholars have to sit, have to go off of saying that they copied okay. each other? Oh, 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 okay, it's called textual criticism. So when you look at the writing, well, they're criticizing you... text. That doesn't mean that they copied each other. Oh, I mean, do, do you know? Do you even know what textual criticism is? I, I mean, it's not to criticize. It's called to, when you say. Hey, when we talk about textual criticism, it's when we analyze a text. It's not to simply criticize it to falsify it. It's to analyze the text for what it is. Right. Just because you you believe that they copied off each other doesn't necessarily mean that they did. No, this is not a belief. This is based upon analysis. Scholars have simply done a textual analysis on the New Testament and have concluded that Ma uh, that Matthew and Luke have uh, copied from Mark. Mark was the first gospel uh, written, and they have, as Hamza said, roughly 70% copied verbatim. It, it's not. That can't be proven. It's simply uh, an analysis. And, and an analysis, analysis, of what? Analysis, analysis has been wrong all the time throughout history. People's no, analysis, analysis of what? Of the text. Of the text. So... People, people have been incorrect analyzing things all throughout the... the Throughout history, uh -huh. you know, it, it doesn't just because some people say, "Oh, this person copied off of this person," doesn't necessarily mean it's true. It's not one. It's not one person. Or multiple, whether it be multiple, whether it be, you know, consistent consensus of the textual critics. Okay, well, New Testament scholarship. This a, is a consensus. This is not. This is not like uh, there was one. There's a fringe opinion where they right. say, oh, you know what, um, what do you call it, we think there's copied, and the, and the rest are like, no, 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 and then we cherry-pick the fringe, uh, well, the fringe a, opinion. This a is populist not what's vote doesn't necessarily make something right, correct? Like, just because a majority believes something doesn't necessarily mean that that belief is true, correct? It's not the belief! It's not the belief! It's based it upon a scientific... It's an analysis. It's an analysis, and just because... Fact. I'm it's, sure there's, it's, it's, there's no, other no, no, people no, no, who've analyzed no, no. it and don't no, believe no, no, it. Easy. Cody, Cody. So basically, here's how it works. How do we know if one document has been copied from another? There are certain signs we'll see in the text. You'll see identical wording, for example. Well, yeah? exactly, because maybe right. these words stuck out to these Cody, disciples Cody, and they Cody, Cody, thought Cody, it was Cody, necessary Cody. to write these exact words down. Yeah. Say goodbye to Cody. Goodbye, Cody. Goodbye, Cody. Come on, guys. Bye bye, Cody. We're not going to keep wasting our time with you, dude. We're not going to keep wasting our time with you. It's absolutely imbecilic at this point. Welcome, Abdul Razak. What happened, Sorry. dude? Sorry, bro. I was caught up with something. So I, I ended what up. What was more important than the arena? You wouldn't see me step away from the arena for anything. <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, bro. There was no need to keep him. He was he was no, done. No, it was kicking. Well, usually, him. usually I'm more patient. But as soon as I, as soon as I come on, I saw where he was going, and I was like, "Why is he not gone yet?" I know. Well, there's uh, not I'll many people nice. stage. There's some geezer called Dylan Danis who thinks he's clever. I'm not quite sure why, uh, but we shall see. He says he wrote the Gospel of Luke in his comment in the super chat in the backstage. So let's find, let me just find the filter. Oh, hey, what's up, boys? One second. I'm just trying no. to find the, the bottom left filter that Ben made for me. Mm -hmm. Where's it going? There we go. Okay. Uh, Dylan, Dylan Dennis. Uh, how are you doing, guys? All right, how are, are you all right? All right. How, how's, the, how's the training going? I was what with the what now? How's your training? Your training? You doing good? I haven't, done, I haven't done any training yet. You're Muslim, aren't you, bro? Yeah. How you do? Uh, yeah. How's life and nothing really done yet? Mashallah. So, so like, bro? I, I hope you do well in it. Uh, keep the uh, keep the good work up. Inshallah. Salam alaikum, yeah. bro. What's the name, you, bro? How you doing, bro? Salam alaikum. Salam. No idea what he was on about. He does that thing and he holds his phone up to the thing, you know that. 
Is it? I, mean, I don't know what's on his phone, but I'll give him an opportunity. NK. Mm. NK. NK. Okay. Um, nice as Robin, Robin Boom, what are you doing backstage, man? Uh, NK. You're just going to come waste our time. No, no, no. NK said he's got, give him five minutes and he's oh, going to come back. Five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Shall we use Bob Robin Boom as a warm up then? Oh, it's up to you, bro. Let's see what nonsense he's coming with. Robert Boom. There's no one else here, so we'll just deal with him. Yes, Robin Boom. Yeah, so look, the last guy you're trying to show some contradictions that are in the New Testament. Okay, I sort of um, accept that there are contradictions, but, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, with, with sort of. Um, uh, you Muslim guys, you guys don't accept there are contradictions um, in the Quran, and um, I've come up with some of them before. For instance, you know the uh, claim that the Quran was made in six days in one part, but another another part it says it was made in eight days. Listen, Robin, and, Robin, don't come with your poor polemics, please. Don't embarrass well, yourself. Well, don't I'm, embarrass I'm not embarrassing. I'm not embarrassing uh, myself. I'm, that's, that's what the Quran says. No, don't embarrass yourself. Don't embarrass okay. yourself. Okay, it's and like another contradiction. I built a car in six days and it took me two days to make the engine. Does that make eight days? Well, and then, and then you also have, and in, in the, no, no. In if the, I created a car in six days, if I built a car in six days and took two days to make the engine, um, how many days did it take to make the car? Well, okay, what did it say in, in that surah? What I'm are asking you a simple question. Just answer that question. I took six okay. days to build the car and it took me two days to build the engine. How many days did it take me to build the car? Well, it took six days. Thank you. All right. Yeah. What's your next stupid point? Okay, it's it's, it's not a stupid point. Uh, it is. It's, it's going to be Robin, Robin, Robin. It's going to okay. be a stupid. point. Everybody okay. knows it's going to be a stupid point. I'm just going to humour your stupid point, but 100 percent, unequivocally, it will be a stupid point. Okay. Okay. So another contradiction is um, which I came across the other day when I was reading is in Surah. Chapter 16, verse 15. Robin, 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 Robin. Where we it both says, know you're not reading the Quran. We both know okay. you're not reading the Quran. You, okay. We know I, you've been on websites looking for this, I, looking for that. I have not. You use the Quran to corroborate what you've read. We know you're not reading the Quran. Well, don't think we're you're actually... You're, anyway, bring your stupid point. Bring your stupid point. Okay, you're actually this telling a lie Robin, there. You, you, you are actually your... telling a lie there. I am reading the Quran, and I can. And it, it, says, it, it says in uh, Surah 46... Um, Verse 15, it says the carrying of the child to his weaning is a period of 30 months. Okay, so in other words, that's pregnancy right through to weaning. Okay, it's 30 months. But then you have um, another part where it says in um, um, Surah 2, verse uh, 233, it says that um, the weaning of a child shall be... Um, from birth to winning shall be 20, 24 months. So they do not align with each other because one of them is the weaning of a child to take 24 months. And then we have in Surah 46, verse 15, um, if the uh, the um, period of pregnancy, which is nine months, plus 24 months is 33 months. So you've got a contradiction. What's weaning? What's, what's weaning is basically from the period of basically birth to uh, to to you to, to you stop breastfeeding, right? So weaning is when you take the baby off the breast, yeah. Yes. Yep. What does pregnancy have to do with anything? So, so pregnancy because the pregnancy it says the carrying of the so in verse uh, Surah sixteen verse fifteen the carrying of the child to his wean to his weaning. So in other words, basically from the period of of being pregnant no right through to oh, the child no, is weaned is thirty months. So, so it's not it's not saying. That. Okay, well, it, well I'll, I'll read it. It says in, uh, don't, I'm don't reading from the, the, the Yusuf don't Ali. Don't waste the Yusuf, the Yusuf don't Ali waste version time. says the carrying of, because you don't want to admit there's a contradiction. You're wasting you our time. You're just wasting our time with these stupid You sort of pull up Christians on, 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 like the last guy, you were sort of, you know, saying, okay, well, okay. here's, you know, you Jesus accept, said there was no God. Do you accept that the Bible is not historically reliable? Do you accept that the Quran makes uh, facts accept, and correct statements? Do you accept, accept the Quran? Yes, Robin, yes, I do. Yes, yes, yes I do. But do you? But do you accept? 
Don't no, muddy I'm the not water. muddying the water. Right, so, so, so stop you, muddying you've the water. got double standards. You you've got double question, standards. Robin. Robin, do you accept that the Bible is not historically reliable? What I accept is that there are some things in the Bible you statements accept, that are made are factually you accept, incorrect. Do you, do you accept? accept Right, I'm not going to do it. Double standard. I'm not going to do it, Robin. Robin, I'm going to remove you. I'll add you again. No, 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 no. Bring him up. Bring him. Bring him back. I'm going to bring him up. I'm going to bring him up. But I'm going to tell him straight. Yeah. Yeah. I'm asking you a direct question. I don't want you to answer and then quickly jump to the Quran. We want to hear it. We want to digest it. Now the question is a simple one, Robin. Do you no. accept that the Bible is not historically reliable? Can you hear me? Okay, you can hear me. Yes, I accept that there are statements in the Bible which are historically incorrect, but I you don't accept I, that I the Quran makes the same standards. Is. That is a one second, double standard. One second, Robert, that Robert. Is a double so standard. If you, do you accept, so if you accept that there are statements in the Bible which are historically incorrect, do you accept then and concede without any added words that the Bible is not historically reliable? I have said on this on the stream before, Hamza, that I'm, I'm Bible, asking you right now. There, I'm asking I, you right now. I, I've said this that there are things Robin. that Robin, are Robin. basically bathwater in the Bible. There Robin, are Robin, Robin. baby and bathwater. Okay, but you guys have a double no, standard. No, no, no. You Robin. don't look. You don't look at the Quran. You don't Hold objectively on. critique the Quran. Hold on, no, I objectively Robin. critique the Robin, Bible Robin, and the Robin. Quran. Robin. Okay, give sorry. Me, okay. Give me a second. Give me a second. Right. Yep. You've read those two verses. What else did you do to understand these two verses? I'm not okay, interested so, in the Bible. I'm not interested in the Bible. I'm interested in the Quran. That's my scripture. Right? Okay. So, I know there's no no contradictions. It's not based on blind faith or anything. I know my scripture. So what else did you do to understand these two verses, apart from okay. just read them? Okay. okay so, it, Hamza says that I'm not. I don't read the Quran. I uh, no, no, Quran. I'm not interested and, in what Hamza said. I'm not interested in what Hamza well, said or what he, you think Hamza said. I'm asking you. No, look, no one is interested. That's Robin. why we're here. Robin. <laughs> Robin, I want to know from you what you have done, apart from read those two verses, to claim that they are contradictory. Right. Okay. Apart from okay. a superficial reading. Apart from a superficial reading, what have you done? Okay. Will you, will you let me answer? Sure. Your question? Okay. Right. How I came across this, this contradiction was... Um, the version of the Quran I'm reading is the Yusuf Ali version. Now, when I when I go through the Quran, I like to read his commentary that he said it says at the bottom. Now, I wouldn't have picked up this contradiction just basically by reading it itself, but he points it out um, in um, his, his his comment uh, four seven ninety, and I'll read out what his commentary says on it. He says um, in um, thirty one fourteen, the weaning the time of weaning was stated to be at the age of two years, that is twenty four months, and he also says it in Surah two, verse two three three. So this is actually something that that Yusuf Ali sort of puts in his comments. So I read the comments, and that's how I picked up that there was a contradiction. And then he says so this leaves six months as the minimum period of human gestation after which the child is known to be viable. Okay, so now. A child born at six months, 26 weeks, basically, you know, up until this last century, you know, would have, would have had very, very little chance of surviving. So, um, and, uh, you know, we sort of know that, basically. No, hold on. Okay, so give, give me a second. Okay. So, you're, so Yusuf Ali, in his commentary, he's making it very clear that he's not speaking about a nine-month pregnancy. He's speaking about six months gestation. Hence, you're 30 months right so the 24 months, months. 26 months sorry sorry 26 weeks 26, 26 weeks gestation six months. okay right so we're yeah, talking but, about six months right hold on hold on a second hold on a second so he's explaining that the 24 months of weaning there is no difference between chapter 46 verse 15 and chapter 2 verse 233 he's saying there is no difference about that the reason you have six six months instead of nine months is not because it's talking about a, a full-term pregnancy. It's talking about the six months of gesta uh, gestation. So there's no contradiction. So are you saying that... Where is that, the contradiction that, regard, that with regards to a pregnancy, a pregnancy is only six months. It's not six months. Both people knew that it was nine months back then. No, 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 you, no, no, no. That's not what's being said, not, though, bro. That's not what's being said. That's mm, not what's being said. Exactly. 
Okay, what does gestation mean? Gestation is a period mm -hmm. of carry of carrying. Yes, a fetus, yes, yes, yes. Basically, when does the soul into the baby? So from when does the soul into the baby? So so when does the soul into the baby? Look. Okay, so here you are kind of trying to, trying to sort of weave When does the soul of, enter the baby? We don't know when the soul enters the baby, Hamza. In Islam. Okay, I'm, look, I don't care what sort of Islam says about when the soul enters the baby. So you know, you're, one second, one second. Well, one second. You do an internal critique of Islam and you don't care what Islam says and you're internally critiquing it? No, but, uh, but there's a whole lot of... Hamza, there are a whole lot of... Factual, How can you you take something and you don't care what that thing says? There are a whole of maybe if you understood what that thing says. One second, one second. Then, if maybe if you understood what th that thing said, you'd realize that actually you're gonna look, you're looking a fool right now because you're trying to critique something you know nothing about, and you seem proud of that fact. No, I, I'm just, I'm just reading it at point blank. So you, 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 no, with the last you're reading guest Corey, something with the last you're guest Corey. Something. You're reading something you don't understand and trying to critique it. But you with the last know. guest, Corey, with the last guest, Corey, agree. you you were not wanting to listen to his, you agree with his us. understanding of it. You I, agree look, with us. I agree, agree with, with us. No, no, no. In okay. some things. Oh, I agree no, no. with you in some Robin, things. Robin, 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 Robin. Robin, Robin, Robin. Robin. Did, we, did we say? One second, did one, we second, say. one second, Yemi. Yemi, 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 just one second. Robin, okay. do you agree with us that Cody's wrong about the Bible being historically reliable? I'm not. I'm as far as those two verses that you brought up. No, they were different I'm, I'm audiences. Just saying, oh, but okay. I'm saying say that some th some things in the Bible are historically inaccurate. What I'm saying is this: Do you accept? Do you agree with us that Cody was wrong to say that the Bible is historically reliable? Because you've just said in it's not sense, historically yes, reliable. Yep, yep, yep. Sure, right. Sure. So why are you critiquing us? Critiquing him for holding a position that you hold? No, it's just that it's just that the verses that Ejaz was sort of um, was bringing up, they were two different situations, and they were two different audiences. I so, don't know how to so, tell yeah. you this, but are they of the same generation or not? Well, they are of the same generation, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but but so, you know, go, so, going back so, to the so, yeah. but, but 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 okay, so okay, no, so, going back to the thing, like I like I mentioned to you, we're not this this verse is not referring to the your typical nine months pregnancy is it it's referring well, to six months it says the carrying of the child the, the, the child the, the, right so it's yes. not a child it's not it's not indefinite it's definite right we, we're, yes. it's referring to the child right yeah why why is yusuf ali referring to the child now uh, well it's it, it says um, okay, let's kind of go even a little bit for him. Okay, in pain did his mother bear him, and in birth did she, uh, oh. and in pain did she give him birth. The carrying okay. of the child to his weaning is a period of 30 months. So it is basically do you, nine do you months know the reason? of pregnancy. Nine months. Of, do, 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 do you agree that, that basically uh, it, for no. a baby to come to full turn is a period of nine months or not? Of course we do. This is not what okay. the verse is referring so, so to. So nine months plus. This is not what the rever This is not what the verse is referring to. There is in the the Quran has reason of revelation. Chapter forty six verse fifteen has a reason for its revelation. For the re uh, has a reason for mentioning six months. Do you know what the context is? Well, I was, I was sort of reading it to do with um um the sort of okay. Again, going back to, to the beginning of verse 14, it says, No, 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 be the, the reason there is a context for it. As Baba Nazul, the reason yeah, as Nazul, that there's a reason for this revelation. So, what is the reason that this verse has been revealed? And why does he mention six months instead of the it, instead of the instead of the normal nine months? Why does he mention it, that? It doesn't it doesn't mention six no, months the, in this part here. No, it's, okay. It does, uh, only it does in the commentary. It not, does. It only, does. Look, that's why you have thirty months, right? Because you're talking about six months gestation, right? It's in your commentary, no. right? Hold on. Yeah, it's in yeah, the commentary yeah. that you read, yes, right? Yes. But there is a, a reason of revelation. Do you want? I, I want you. To, I want you to tell me because the thing is, it's your claim. Now, look, it's it's very easy for you for any guest to come on here 
uh, and claim a contradiction or claim or make some sort of argument and then we give them uh, the answers. But if you're going to come here and claim that there is a contradiction in our scripture, then you must have done your due diligence and you must have researched it and understand that there is context to the verses that have been revealed. So I would like to know if you know the context for this verse. Who was pregnant? Who gave who um, gave birth at six months? Well, for a start, if, what is if the you narration? To, okay, okay. Well, okay. If, yeah, if, if it was a narration, that's fine. Yeah, there is a narration because yeah. look, we have narrations that explain to us the reasons uh, that certain verses have been revealed. Mm -hmm. Chapter 46, verse 15 is one of those verses. You can look it up now mm -hmm. in any of the, you know, look it up in uh, any of the uh, tafsirs and tell me what the context is. Well, the sort of context, as I sort of read it, if we carry on lo looking not at Not from you, verse, Robin. It, it the reason of revelation. <laughs> Robin, <laughs> you're repeat. not a source of revelation, yes. Robin. <laughs> what do our sources of revelation say on this verse? Yeah. Okay, so when you say source of revelation, are you saying that the source of revelation are uh, modern Islamic scholars, or are you going back no, to historical? We're Islamic going back scholars? to the time. the The time it was revealed, there is a reason for it, right? So there was an event that happened at the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and that event caused about the the revelation to be sent down. What is that event? Well, I don't know what that event is. Right. But. Okay. So, you didn't so until do your until you know these, um, until you know the context of the revelation, until you know why it's it's saying what it's saying, you cannot claim it to be a contradiction. However, Robin, to help you out on this one occasion, I'll read out the report to you. Okay. It's found in Ibn Kathir, right? And this is narrated by Ali, right? Uh, Ali radiallahu anhu. Okay. Now, he mentions that these two ayahs, right, uh, prove that the minimum of period of pregnancy is six months, right? And he says, um, uh, and what do you call it? So but, you got, uh, but, but you and I agree on, that... Give me a second. This is, this is the report, right? A man from uh, the tribe of Johanna married a, a woman from Johanna. She, de she delivered a baby after six months. So her husband went to Uthman radiallahu anhu and told him about this. Thus, uh, and Uthman radiallahu anhu summoned her. When she was getting dressed, her sister started crying. She asked her, why do you cry by Allah? No one has ever approached me for relations, for intimacy of Allah's creation except my husband. So I let Allah decree for me as he wills. When she was brought before Uthman radiallahu anhu, he commanded that she be stoned to death for adultery. Ali heard of this came to Uthman radiallahu anhu and said, what are you doing? He, Uthman radiallahu anhu, said, she delivered after six months. Can this ever happen? So Uthman radiallahu anhu, right, and, uh, he uh, was thinking about the typical nine months as well. But Ali radiallahu anhu mentioned to him, he said, didn't you read the Quran? He said, yes, of course. That He said, uh, and Ali said, uh, radiallahu anhu said, haven't you heard Allah saying, uh, and his gestation and weaning is 30 months. So now, what do you call it? What we see is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not has revealed this verse to show, uh, to show that this woman was innocent of adultery, that she was, uh, that she gave birth early to this uh, baby. And he has instructed uh, her how, uh, what to do with a baby that has been prematurely born right so there is context for this so it's not it's not a general uh um it, it's not speaking Ooh. generally about pregnancy it's a specific pregnancy right which could happen afterwards as well other women could um uh bear a child after six months and allah has instructed them that you wean the child for two full years and chapter 2, verse 233 says the exact same thing, that you wean the child for two years. But even no the weaning of even the weaning of children, even that statement and lasting you know, having to last two years, you know, most women will not lactate for two years. That's correct. So, and if you and if you actually you look know, at Ibn Kathir, you're you're correct. And if you look at Ibn Kathir, right, what he uh, mentions actually is that if the um what do you call it? The uh, 
it, okay, so it, it continues, right? There is a an, another narration, right? From uh, Ikrama, from uh, uh, who narrated from Ikrama. So this is from Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu. When a woman delivers after nine months, the baby will only need to will only need twenty one months of suckling. When she delivers after seven months, the baby will need twenty three. And when she delivers after six, the baby the baby will need two full years. Um, and then he quotes the same ayah, chapter six, forty six, verse fifteen. So the Arabs knew, the Muslims knew that you didn't necessarily require two full years. However, in the case of a six-month pregnancy, two years is required. Uh, so where is the contradiction, uh, Robin? Okay, so for a start, okay, you mean if you think of it, so sort of basically a 26-week-old premature baby, you know, born, um, you know, 1,400 years ago, would have, you know, 99% of them would have died. There would be very, very... A very very small number that would survive. The only reason why they survive today is they put in incubators and and they give the them sort of modern medicine and those sort of things. So sort of so um, the book is not for the seventh century alone. It's for all time. However, the point is not about the survivability of a baby uh, being born after six months. The point here is about a contradiction which is nowhere to be found. Well, it is to be found because because basically most what is the women. Conviction? You're saying that that that, that conduct to do applies to a certain no a certain because you point no, 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 Robin, Robin 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 no because Robin, if if, 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 if okay, Robin, my reading of the Quran your first claim many, no you, your you first many, claim I'm reading in context I'm bringing you back I'm to your claim context I'm reading you know, in the context you didn't even know the context you didn't even know no, the context yes it is verse twelve. Okay, the preceding verses is talking about okay about the book of Moses, and then it says those who say you know our Lord is Allah, and you know um, on this path, and then it goes in the companions of the garden, and then right. you're kind of sort of bringing out out this wild card of it's got to do with this a particular situation, um, you know, and you know so you've just kind of sort of you've you've, you've it's had not a wild your, card. It's not a wild card. Okay, it is a wild, the Quran, it is a the Quran card. is constructed in a way where topics change. So in mid mid chapter, right? In, 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 into the midstream. In mid yeah, one second, one second, Robin. We're, Robin. We're in this verse. Yeah, Yemen is giving an explanation to forty six fifteen. Yeah. Why are you going to twelve no. or two? No, I, I'm I'm going to sort of to to, to the concept of sort of what is. No, 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 no. What Yemen is? No, 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 no. No, no. He's disingenuous. brought in this wild card of a specific. Are you going to bring a wild card? Specific pregnancy. No, 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 Robin, 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 Robin. We can't help it if you don't understand. How we understand Islam, and understand the critique, and understand when the historical context behind the verses and how the Quran was revealed, we can't help your ignorance. Yeah, that's with you. Not, it's like, oh, it's oh, okay, okay. I'm just reading. We can't help Quran. your ignorance. This is we, why. I'm... This is why. Initially, I said, "Don't bring your poor polemics here," and you brought your poor polemics here. I said, "Bring your next stupid point," and we all knew it was going to be stupid, and you brought it. it now, it's not a stupid point. Brother Yemeni has eloquently. Explain to you how we understand <laughs> verses of the Quran. Yeah. Now, if you're not going to be so genuine and and accept that, okay, I was wrong. This was a stupid point. I didn't it understand. It wasn't a stupid point. Okay. It is, you concede okay. it was a stupid point. No, it's not a stupid point. It's a stupid point. <laughs> the thing if, is, Robin, like, if you agree that it's a stupid point, stay quiet. Okay, that was yes. If you agree with um, a stupid point, leave the stream. <laughs> Subhanallah. It's like, you know, he, instead of, instead of uh, retracting the fact that he was talking about nine months pregnancy, when that was not the context, he was talking about how he's reading the context, but where'd you get nine months from? Because that's nowhere to be found in the context. He tried okay. to bring up a numbers issue when the numbers were sound. But the reason he brought up a number in a numerical contradiction is because he didn't know the context. Exactly. But it's a beautiful explanation. Honestly, I love it. MashaAllah. Well done, brother. Your money. Could I just read a message from our mutual friend, Daniel? Would that be okay? Yeah, yeah go on. Yamani, you know Daniel, right? I do. Yeah. Hamza, you know Daniel? As in Daniel the Kikachu. Kashmir. I don't know. No. Um, do I? No. And it's only yeah. Daniel I know. The Wait. one Dan, the only Daniel that we mutually three of us know that we played games with. Oh, the Daniel, Daniel, Sh Daniel Shah. 
Mahmut. He spent. Don't dox him. Secondly, he spent. <laughs> He spent dozens of hours with you on Ark, and you forgot him. Subhanallah, we'll be watching the stream, right? Is Let me read for you. Daniel, when you say my best friend in Ark, okay, okay. Yeah, you could just like my partner in crime in Ark, my mischievous gonna... buddy. Okay, let me just read for you what he said about the stream. Hamza's so white, I can't see him with that background. That's who that comment was. <laughs> <laughs> Is he still your best mate from Ark, Hamza? Oh, oh your oh, best mate. He's your best mate. I killed him so many times, dude. Yeah, he's the shop oh. welcoming committee. Tom, you <laughs> muted me. Tom. I left. Oh, Tom left. Oh, this this guy got rinsed in yesterday's shop live. Christ soldier. Oh God. God. Can you hear oh, me? Oh, he's got that stupid sound that sounds like flipping crickets. What is can that sound? Me? Yeah, we can we can hear you in that. Why is that beeping sound next to you? Yeah, beeping. Ah, uh, nothing. Are you camping right now? Are you camping right now? That's why I thought it was like crickets, isn't it? Yeah, it is. my, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm I'm at I'm got the window open, I read that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm so who are you talking to? Sorry? Who are you who you who who's with you that you're talking to? My wife. Why? Mind your business, sir. <laughs> Christ soldier, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay, so go on, what's going on? Oh my god. Um still waiting for the explanation of how Allah is means. real. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, listen. Imagine we didn't have a conversation yesterday, right? Can you present to Yemeni your reasons for not believing Allah is real? Present so go, 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 go. Yeah, I'm comparing it. But, um, to my belief in Christianity, because I believe. No, tell us why Allah's not real. Of, yeah, I'm, uh, the God of the Bible is real because He enters His creation. But well, why, Allah can't. Enter that's not what you said yesterday. Why did you say Allah's not real? Hold up. So is Krishna real? Is Krishna uh, real? Because Allah cannot enter His creation. Hold up. Is Krishna real? You know Krishna, the Hindu God. Is He real? Um, no, obviously not. Well, he can enter creation. He's not, it could be real, but it doesn't mean he's... <laughs> I believe he's uh, some sort of demon or... It could be real. Could be real. Krishna could be real. First, first, firstly, you know... Hey, why does that question on, matter? Why are you asking that sort of question? No, no, no. Look, uh, what's your name I again? I know Christianity and that's it. What's your name again? Christ Soldier. Christ, Christ Soldier. Okay. Um, Allah not entering his creation it is part of his attributes that he is um you know it is a, it's a it's a it's it's not something that is a part of his attributes right to enter his creation okay if anything you as a christian should believe that as well because it's mentioned in first kings oh what is it mentioned in first kings it mentions his first kings i believe it's 827 where Solomon states that, you know, uh, uh, the heavens and the earth cannot contain God, let alone this temple that he's built for him. Right? I'm paraphrasing, but that is essentially what Solomon is saying about God. So even Solomon is is explaining uh, to us the I mean that that the majesty of God uh, is beyond being contained within the creation itself. Yeah, but you got examples from Adam and Eve on the first. No, 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 no. Look, what do you mean, yeah, God but? Walks. You can't say yeah, exactly. You can't say yeah, but you have this from a prophet of God, from the scripture that you yourself believe in. So when you have something state, stated like that, then you can't come to the Muslims and say, well, I can't believe that your God is real because he doesn't enter the creation. Yeah, it says here. If anything, if anything. 827. Sorry, hold on a second. 
If anything, if you have a God that can be contained, it takes away from his majesty. Right? Well, that's, is, that's, the, that's the narrative that you guys think. No, this is not the narrative that we think. We, we don't believe but that it's... God is contained by his creation. Right? We believe he is beyond his creation. Now, the thing is, what's interesting, and I, I had some a similar discussion before, but I was, um, I was, uh, I'm a huge Pirates of the Caribbean fan, by the way. But uh, when we, do you know, in in the third one, in the third film, where you have Calypso, she's the goddess bound in human form, right? Now, when you look at that, you're you're thinking, well, that's crazy. How can you have, you know, such a powerful being being bound and everything, and needs its creation to release it and everything it's clearly ludicrous because of the simple concept that a deity cannot be bound yet not only do you believe that as a christian that um uh, god can be contained within the universe but can be contained within a single fleshly body which oh, is yeah. I don't know which what is not, say. which is not a correct belief it is not a belief. It is not a belief that the prophets have taught. You're saying that atoms or molecules can contain your God. I'm saying that God has God is in our creation. Yeah. That atoms or molecules can contain Him, limit Him. Yeah. Limit Him. What do you mean, limit Him? If He's in a space, is He not limited? Like if He's in front of you right now, is He not in a particular position, location, place? Does He not have to be comprised of atoms and molecules? To be in front of you. Well, we believe our God is omnipresent. He cannot be om omnipresent. That's the precisely the point. He cannot be omnipresent when contained to a single body. Cannot the, be uh, within the earth, uh, within, within the, the earth, universe. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know what you mean by limit and contain and sort of one sort of space. We're, we're not using... Look, first, first, Roger, we're not using big words here. You know, contain, we know what contain means. We know what a body means. Do, do you have a container? Do you have a container perhaps in your house? Does it contain things? Yeah. Okay. Right, so, right. <laughs> we don't believe that God is contained. It's the same word, same meaning. Look, yeah, you're, like, I don't look, know what you're trying to. No, no, no. Christ, Roger. Very, let's, like make in, let's make something. Let's make. Our God is in our creation. Let's make something very clear. Let's make your God is not. Clear. Let's make something clear, right? Our God and your God is the same, right? Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, right, or who you refer to as the Father, is the Creator of the heavens and the earth. Solomon recognized that in First Kings eight twenty seven, and he recognized that the Creator of the heavens and the earth cannot be contained. Uh, in he doesn't uh, say that, but he does. He does. He's asking this. a question. No, this is rhetorical, right? It's a rhetorical question it's, it's to a, make a it's statement. A it's a rhetorical question to make a he's statement. He's marveling at the um, majesty Right, exactly. Of so God. if he's marveling at the majesty of saying God, that. if he's marveling at the majesty of God, he's not asking the question, is he? It's but a does he say question. that God can cannot enter his creation? Yes. In the, in the message. Look, it, it says very God is not a man. So that's that, right. That one dude actually posted it on the thing. He says, uh, but will God really dwell on earth? The heavens, I even the highest heavens, cannot contain you. How much less this temple I have built. Right. So he's so we can see that it's a rhetorical rhetorical question because he answers it himself. No, that's not even the highest at the an exclamation. Yeah, this way, is an exclamation. Yeah. Right. He's marvelous so, majesty of God because yes, you agree? And, and who will not walk the earth who, yes, Adam, and Christ and look, Christ soldier, let me finish. Let me finish. In Genesis. Right. Let me finish. Who will not marvel at the majesty of, of the Creator, right? Who will uh, not marvel? What sort of question? Who will? Is that? No, but no, because you're saying, "Oh, he's only marveling," and I'm like, "Of he course." Is. I think I think basic English. Is, no, you, you're, you're is English your first language? You're saying, you're saying is that English your first I'm language? I'm saying it's he's marveling at the majesty of God. Yes, is um, English and your first language? And you're saying, "Oh, why? Like, who wouldn't marvel at the majesty?" Exactly. Of God? Who wouldn't? Like we would, that's exactly. what I'm trying to say. We would, we would marvel, like just in the same way as Solomon. Remember, Solomon is a, what I'm saying is a poetic what I'm saying, writer as well. He wrote by the way. Uh, so look, the point here is right, the Muslims say the same thing as Solomon. 
uh, right? We say the same thing, that God is cannot be contained within his creation because it is, that nah, is his Allah majesty. Not saying that. That's exactly what he's saying. Uh, you no, know, he's, he's not saying that. But anyways, do you believe that God will walk the earth as it says in Genesis? Okay, so look, when it goes back to Genesis 3.8 is the reference that you're thinking of, right? Um, if you look at how the Jews explained it, it's not literal, right? It's a, it's an, it's an idiom, essentially, right? So God walking, they're not actually saying that He's got feet and He's walking across the garden, right? If anything, it's talking about His voice, walking, right? So it's traveling. His voice is traveling through the Garden of Eden, okay? You need to you need to read the text for what it is, not so for God what you want it to say. Eden? Let me bring up the. So right. you say you you said his voice. Genesis three eight. You you oh. think God was walking through the garden? Yeah. yeah. Well, Adam, so, I can't exactly. find so, you. So here it is. Yeah. So Genesis three eight. So for example, Moses. No, he saw God on. face to face. Hold on. No, he did not. Okay. Or you uh, spoke with. With no Moses. one can see God and live. This is a principle within the Bible. No one can see God and live, let alone seeing him face to face. All right. Moses did not see God face to face. All right. And to and subhanAllah, the Quran to uh, get rid of this uh, misconception that uh, people have understood from the Bible. Allah makes uh, clarifies the story when God, uh, when Moses uh, السلام, asked to see God and God just uh, showed a, a little bit of the light right to a mountain and the mountain crumbled right and because the mountain crumbled that made moses faint right because muslims again affirm that no one can see god and live right at least not in this life inshallah when we are in paradise we will see the majesty we will see the, the majestic face of allah and even then we will not see all of him just his face so there will always be uh, an aspect of his majesty that we will never be privy to. Right? And may Allah make us uh, among those people. I mean, but Genesis 3, 8, going back to Genesis 3, it says, Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. So it's referring to the sound of God, right? Walking. He is traveling, right? They can, you know, they could hear God's voice traveling through the garden and it, and this is what is meant, okay? This is how the Jews have explained it. It's their text. They understand the Hebrew. They understand the uh, uh, the the style. You are wanting it to say you are you want you want you're reading the text based on what you want it to say, not what it's saying. So what I'm asking you to do is read the text for what it's saying. Solomon affirms that God cannot be contained. He says it himself. He asks this question, marvels at, at, at the majesty of God and is very explicit that God cannot be contained in the highest of the heavens, let alone the temple that he has built for him. And so ask him this question. Yeah, yeah, I mean, no. Solomon Rock. Ask him is Solomon wrong. Well, Solomon's he doesn't believe he doesn't even believe that Solomon is saying that. So he no, will Solomon say that Solomon is saying that. So he will say that Solomon is not wrong oh, because he's not question. saying that. What's he saying? Oh, he's asking a question. Sorry? What's he saying? Christ, Roger, what are you, what are you saying? Will God really live on earth? So what's Solomon saying and why? Oh, no, no, no. God, God has never has never come to come to the earth. So basically like, what it comes down to is the triune being of God. That's like, what, what it really comes down to. No. Can because you answer the, voice, the question about Solomon, the Genesis, please? Can you answer Genesis, the question about Solomon, please? No, but there's examples that even the Can voice you, of the Lord. Really why you, are you? God. Why are you avoiding the Solomon question, though? What did Solomon mean when he said that? He's marveling at the majesty of God, mate. What's the conclusion? What's the what he comes to? Yeah, what's the marvel? The greatness of God, the and majesty what, of God. And what does that mean? What's the what's the ramifications of the greatness of God? Because he's building a temple. God's house on earth. And what does he say about the temple? 
what can it not contain? What can't the temple contain? So you want to read the... the oh, no, no. Words? What, no read, listen, read what can't the temple contain? Behold, heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain you. How Why much not? less Why not? this temple Why not? which I have built? Why can't the heavens contain him? Because God is God. What does that mean? One second, one second, one second. What does that mean? It means what it means. Can the temple hold Solomon? Sorry, can, sorry, can the temple hold God? Can God fit inside yeah, the temple? Yeah, you, but you're bringing it back to the temple. No, can the God temple fit doesn't have any power. According to Solomon, according to Solomon. You're saying, can the temple hold God? No, I said, according to God Solomon. God can enter the temple. God I, can I'm enter saying to you, that's, according that's to Solomon, point. according to Solomon, can the temple hold God? According to Solomon, no. Why not? Because Why not? Solomon is understanding. He understood that God is a majestic God. No. Why can't the temple hold God? God? No. Why? Why is Solomon saying the temple can't hold God? Why not? Because you can't say something holds God. You can't say something. It's holds up God. to so, God. So, what? Because you're putting it back on a temple. Can a temple hold God? If God can't enter. Okay. According to Solomon, can the highest heaven hold God? Nothing can hold God. Nothing can hold God. Can a human body hold God? Because you can't put that on God. Can a human body hold God? It's not up like you're saying all these things like it's up to us to decide for God. No, can a human nothing, body hold God? Nothing can hold God. Right. So a human so the temple can't hold God, the heavens can't hold God. Nothing. Therefore, a human body can't hold God. Nothing can hold God. So, so God can't fit inside a human body. Yes, but it doesn't mean that God. No, it doesn't decides mean that. He doesn't want it does to enter his creation. You, you just nah. refuted by Solomon. Nah, Solomon, wrong God. Way. God is God. I believe what Solomon God. said as well. Nothing can contain you. God. It's not up right. to but us. You, do you believe a human body can contain God? A human body. Can what, what do you mean cannot? Can a human body contain God? I don't know what you mean by can because it's two different two different meanings because you're putting Does it a back human body have the ability to contain the, God? I mean, flipping it. Too many people have been nah, watching Jordan Peterson. God has the meaning of can. This guy could be the number one philosopher right now in the world. I already answered your question. You should just no, no, the question is simple. something. Can, what, no, can I'll, I'll, I'll ask you a different question. Let me no, ask you a different my question. question is, what's your, what's your can, issue with Allah? Why can't what's Allah your, into his creation? No, no. What is your issue with Allah? Because the, the issue here, look, just I'm gonna, Christ soldier, Christ soldier, give me a second. I know that the issue here is not about the, uh, uh, whether God can be contained or not, because you weren't aware that God cannot be contained within the, the, the scripture of the it's new. It's not up to us. We can't contain God. The script, your scripture states that, which is according to you, revealed by God, correct? Right. So right. God is revealing this to Solomon. He's sanctioned this as scripture. So the scripture says that God cannot be tamed in the highest of heavens, nor in a temple. That's true. Right. So what is your issue with Allah then? That he that he is that he fits that? Because our God enters creation as example. No, he doesn't. In no, he doesn't, because you just affirmed that the, the scripture says it. that God cannot be contained by anything. You no, said that's, nothing can, no, can contain question, God. Mate. Hold up. You said nothing can contain God. Yeah, nothing. It's like you're deciding on God. Are you God? Are, are you no. talking for God? Nothing. Nothing God means what? Nothing, God. right? Yeah, but can God enter his creation? God. Okay. Okay. He doesn't There's enter God. his creation. There's nothing can we contain him. Say they can contain just one second. God. Just one second. Just one second. Who is saying? So, I agree who is with saying, Solomon. One second, right? And who is telling Solomon this? Who is telling Solomon this? It's all revelation, all revealed. Revelation from whom? From God. So God is so saying God he is can't be contained. So God is saying it. Yeah, that's that's true. You can't contain God. It's not up to us. So God is telling you. 
you can't contain that. I can't be contained in the heavens. I can't be contained in this temple. I can't be contained in a human body. Christ soldier, Christ soldier. You have no... My main question is that I'm not a Jewish creation. You have no reason to disbelieve in Allah based on, on, on this criteria. No. For example, in Genesis, you're just saying the voice is... is I've already addressed that. Something. I've already addressed that, right? Christ soldier. Does it, does Christ it, soldier. <laughs> Goodbye. We're not you gonna are the weakest link, Dan. Honestly, you are the weakest link. Goodbye. It's just, it's just because it's Allah. That's the, that's the only reason he wants to reject it. Honestly. Okay. Are you are you enjoying this, Abdul Rahman? <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. This is very entertaining. <laughs> you enjoying the philosophy? This is the first time I've seen Abdul Rahman's hair turn white live on stream. <laughs> you can see it. Yeah. All right. Let's let's try NK now. NK. Hello. Are you operational now? Can you hear me? What? <laughs> You're no. very soft. You've. Hello? Speak into the microphone. Oh, into the microphone. Well. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Can you hear me? Can you hear me? No. <laughs> no, we can't hear you, dude. I'll check, let me see if I can turn your flipping mic up, but uh, I haven't got a megaphone. Well, let me just see if I can. <sighs> okay, speak now. Hello? Oh, that's better. Slightly, but yeah. Go on. Is that better? Yeah. Uh, slightly better. We can hear you. What's your point? Got a minute. Go on. I just had a question about um Quran five sixty eight sixty nine. Why do you have a question about um, this? I just wonder what like why in sixty in sixty nine it says indeed the believers, Jews, Sabians and Christians, whoever truly believes in Allah in the last day. And does good, there'll be no fear for them, nor will they grieve. Yeah. I'm just wondering, like, what's the point in that in that um, verse? Like, because the the verse before is talking about people of the book and stand on the Torah. So it kind of sounds like it's speaking specifically to a group of people, like believers or like people of the book. Or something. But no. if if I'm right in saying anyone who believes in Allah in the last days and Muslim and and so why is it saying Jews, Sabians and Christians have no need to? I'm just wondering. Okay. No, so before, Prophet said, Muhammad, before Prophet Muhammad said, there were people who followed Jesus. Okay, people who followed Jesus. Uh, so this is saying that basically at, at that point, that's the point where you had to stop being a Jew, Sabian or Christian. You had to start believing in. Muhammad, yeah, is that, is that the Muhammad, peace and blessings came, of course. Okay, okay, all right. Um, all right, this is, your point. Okay. This is the point you came right. to make. That's really bad, man. I don't know, I can't, I, I don't know, I could go with more, but I don't know. Are you a Christian? Um, I'm kind of. Uh, I've, I was a Christian. I've been a Christian, but I'm kind of. I don't know. Exploring now. I'm just. Did Jesus die for your sins? Um, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. But so you are a Christian. I wouldn't. Say. <laughs> You're a Christian. Or not, for God's sake. Do you believe Jesus died and was resurrected after three days, and he died for the sins of the world? I don't know. I don't disbelief. I wouldn't say Jesus is God, so I think that would make a lot of... No, 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 no. I, don't mind, I don't mind that. I don't mind that. Do you believe in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ? Um, yeah, I do believe that we kind oh, okay. of need something. To All right. it. And, you, and you don't believe Jesus was God? No, I don't think so. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not like concrete in any belief. I'm just... One second. So you believe in a human sacrifice to redeem you of your sin? I just think that... No, no, no. Um, no. You believe in a human sacrifice... To redeem your sin. Yeah, yeah. I just, I just don't think that any works we can do can. can what does the Bible say about human sacrifice? Is it, is it something? What well, you know, a human sacrifice? When you put it like that, you, 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 oh, you basically a, simplify it. Well, it's a perfect it? sacrifice. Though. It, it, no, no, Jesus, no, but it's, one second, one second. Why was Jesus a perfect sacrifice? The point is, the, no, why was Jesus a perfect sacrifice if he's not God? Because he, he was sinless. 
What do you mean by sinless? What what do you what do you take to sinless to mean? Well, you claimed he was Without sinless. Sin. You claimed it. What's what does that mean? Well, no, surely that's. Do I need to define sinless? Yes. Without sin. Yes. What sin? <laughs> what is sin? Mm. <laughs> Transgressing the laws of God, I guess. I don't oh, know. Okay. So, so was Muhammad sinless? Peace be upon him. No, I don't believe he was. Okay, which law did he transgress? So, what are you? Do you, do you assert that he was sinless? No, I want you to tell me which law he transgressed. No, I'm, just, I'm, I know, I'm asking you from your perspective. Was he sinless before I answer yes, the question? Yes, of course. Um, even before, sin- even before, even before the revelation. Yes. Okay. Now, tell me which sin, which which law of God he transgressed. Well, if I, if I'm a Christian, then obviously I don't believe that. I'm just saying you're being a Christian now. You're not a Christian. He said, "Tell me which law <laughs> Prophet Muhammad <laughs> <Hold on>. transgressed." <laughs> So I don't understand. So you, you I, I didn't, I didn't actually know that you guys thought Muhammad was a sinless. Uh, you Just tell me one more. Believe all the prophets were sinless. All the prophets were sinless. Okay. I, yeah, I, I, all I, of them. All, all of them. Yeah. Do you know what? Okay. Let, let's. Can I? Can I bring a different point? Uh, and, and this, is, <laughs> this, is a, this is a. I mean. I mean <laughs> I mean, I don't think I've been like refuted or anything like that. I just, you I don't just want to bring it in. Continue your point, then. Continue well, no, I just. Uh, no, 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 no. Listen, listen. Until you concede yeah. you've been refuted, you stay on this point. Continue it. Yeah, but yeah, but if I'm not a Muslim, then I don't believe Muhammad was sinless. As simple as that. If you're a Muslim, yeah, no, no, you no, believe no, no, no. in sinless. I want to know which law of God the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings upon him, transgressed. Well, if my God isn't. Allah, your God, then it's a sin to w- encourage people to worship a God who isn't God. That that what's, that's what's a God, sin. Okay, what's God called in the Arabic Bible? Uh, yeah, but it doesn't. It doesn't matter what his name is. It matters what is his, name? His, what it matters is his, his name? character, his nature, his what name? he sends down. Okay, it, no, it doesn't, doesn't matter what his name, name is. What is his the name? identity. The identity. No, no, of his, his name, name doesn't matter. No, but no, but if I say, if I say, listen, if I he say, oh. Question. Question. Okay. Just answer the question. Okay. Yeah, yeah. His name. His name. Allah. Okay. His name. 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 What is, name should I tell the people you know has sent me? So the name yeah, did listen, matter, right? Can I can I can I the can name I make a point? the name did matter to Moses, right? Can I make a point? Does the I'm name matter? The names, yeah, I'm not saying I'm not saying the name's completely irrelevant. If I say worship Allah, he's a seven-headed elephant, you'd say, Well, you're telling people to worship Allah, but you're not telling people to worship the right God. If I say worship Allah, he's a someone who's sent second, down one the second, book that says, one second, one second. Does Allah say he's a seven-headed elephant, or do you say he's no? The no, this is the point I'm making. Okay, this is the point. Is Allah? No, he doesn't. No, that's the point I'm making. One second, one second. One second. Okay. Is Allah yeah. the God of Abraham? Oh my! Can I? Can I? <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna play that video that you always play. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, I don't really get that video because if how that, can you not get that video? Well, because if you believe that's why you don't play it. It's no, but Jew. if you. If, one second, one second, one second. Yeah, but why do you do that? What, what's he on about? He doesn't have the listen, same God as you because listen, he doesn't believe he's, his God didn't send down Muhammad as a messenger. Listen, listen, his, listen. The God he believes in doesn't... Okay, I'll tell you the point of that video. I'll tell you the point of that video. It's that video has a rabbi saying the greatest rabbi of this generation, Moshe Feinstein, has no issue in conceding that Allah is the God, the same God they worship. The same God of Abraham, the it's same not, God of Moses, the really same matter. God of Noah. Oh, okay. Do you, do you, okay, okay. It's, so very, so, it's just semantics to say so that. Here's because... the thing, one second, one second. Who would know, who would know this, you or the greatest rabbi of this generation? Uh, what, what I'd say is fine, you can say you worship oh, the same God as him, but his God Who is... would be more in the knowledge? Who would be more in the know? A I'm willing, I'm this willing to, I'm Moses, willing to one, take one his... Second. Just listen, please. Okay. The greatest rabbi of this generation who knows his own scripture, who knows what the Islam and the Quran says about uh, about uh, Allah or you. Who would know more? I'm willing to take his point. 
And well, he'd know more about, who about that issue, would but... Know more? Who him, would him, know him, more? him, him, him. Okay, him. But okay, one I, second. I, and one I, second. One second. This man who has more knowledge of you on the topic says you're wrong. Okay, so... so I mean, that doesn't, that doesn't really... So you... Uh, <laughs> so, so, you just said... One second. You just said this guy knows more than you and he's teaching you something and you're saying he's wrong when he knows more than you. So do you take the opinion of astrophysicists on the origin of the universe? I'll say that. Obviously, they know more than you about I'll astrophysics and that you. kind of thing. But you don't take their opinion I'll because you, to you no, but I'll you can it. have a different opinion to so you can you have a different more. opinion to people who are supposedly who in the more? know. Look, who knows more? You or him, you've just said him. So he's teaching you now because he knows more than you and you've got to learn. And he's teaching you something you don't know. And there you go. Accept it, don't accept it. We don't give a damn. But the reality is this. According to the greatest rabbi of this generation, they have no issue except that Allah is the God of Abraham. He's not a seven-headed elephant God. He's the God of Abraham. Yes, that's he's the one, one second. He's the one who told Noah to build the ark. He's the one who told Moses to free the people from Israel and parted the Red Sea for him. It's the same God. That's why when we pray, we send blessings upon, we ask Allah to send blessings upon Abraham and his family. Yeah. Why do we, in our prayers, five times a day, ask Allah to send blessings upon the family of Abraham? You don't do that. But we do that. <laughs> hey, hey, Hamza, mind, mind, mind if I ask a question? Yes, go on. Go on, go on, Abdul Rahman. Because the seven-headed elephant thing just caught my attention. No, but it wasn't. So, so I wasn't, can I just clarify that? No, 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 no. I don't. I don't think you were just saying that's not the issue. Okay. So you're saying like it's basically semantics, right? Because if you just call him God or the God of Abraham, but then what you mean by that is a seven-headed elephant, then then you're not really talking about the same God, right? But that's, the same, that's yeah, just just in terms of just in terms of, you he can say that yeah, Jews and Muslims worship the same God or have the same name for God or whatever. But he doesn't believe that uh, God sent down the Quran and uh, Muhammad is the final yeah, messenger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just doesn't believe yeah. that. So it's not the same God, is it? Even though yeah, you yeah, call it. My, my, point, my, point, my point is this. So you're just saying that the, 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 the fact that you're naming him God doesn't mean he's God if basically the identity you're referring to or the identity of the, the being you're worshipping is not uh, 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 the same being. It's not the same being that... Uh, uh, um, Abraham worshipped, right? So if you're basically, yeah, if, if the meaning of God or Allah is a seven-headed elephant, then clearly you're not referring to the same God. Now, at the same time, you want to say that you worship the God of Jesus and that Jesus came with the message, I've, right? I've, Jesus came with the message <laughs> to tell you that God is Father, Son, and Spirit, right? Right? Now, 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 did anyone before him say that? Who's I've who, listened, who, I've not, I've not come here worshiping to... the God of Moses and Abraham? Us, right? Who don't worship a three-headed God or a, a God made of three persons, or you? So, so, so I, I think this is a point against you, really. So, I think the semantics, the the the, the really the semantics here, or 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 uh, uh, the person who's really just uh, 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 labeling what they're worshiping as God or as the God of Abraham. When in fact the meaning that you're employing there is in fact not the God of Abraham, and it's not the God of Moses, and it's not the God of Muhammad, that's you, right? But we worship one God, and Abraham worshiped one God. You guys it came doesn't... up with this, you know, a, a, a Godhead that has a father, son, and spirit. So I think the seven headed elephant analogy that you gave works perfectly against you. So you just you walk, I mean, you walk right into that. Yeah. No, in fairness to me, I, I, I didn't, I don't, I said I don't believe Jesus is God. But also at the same time, we can argue about whose theology or whose God is correct. All I'm saying is to say you worship the same God as this and worship the same God as these people. You don't. You're the only ones who believe that Muhammad is the final messenger. Christians are the only ones who believe that Jesus died for the sins of the world and Jews don't believe. So we all worship all our gods have a different identity this we all worship the same god thing it's, i know i don't believe it i just don't we don't believe that's true it doesn't mean it doesn't make any no no no, no that's, that's not correct right. no that doesn't change the identity of god we just believe uh, that god has done different things so god, jews believe that god has actually jews believe that god sent muhammad peace be upon him 
but not as a prophet to the uh, to mankind. I don't think. I don't think. I, I don't Hold think that's second. mainstream Judaism Hold at all. Also, the Jews believe the Jews believe that uh, that uh, that Allah or or the Father or Yahweh has sent uh, Muhammad peace be upon him. However, not to all of mankind as Muslims believe, right? Um, uh, and and not to the Jews, right? As Muslims believe, right? Uh, but just for the Arabs, they believe he's a prophet to the Arabs only. Okay, um, hence why they consider us among the saved people, because we follow the Noahide law, and we follow a prophet sent by God. Right? Um, if anything, the Quran actually comments on this in chapter two, where the Jews were waiting for the prophet that they were uh, that was being prophesied. However, when it came when when it came to them, that which was promised to them, they rejected it. So, um, so this is what the Jews believe, right? Uh, however, they still believe in the same God as the Muslims. The Christians, they believe in Allah as well, right? This is why Allah is in the Arabic translation, right? No one disputes that. Allah is, the, is who you refer to uh, as the Father. Now, you don't believe Jesus is God, which is excellent. But those who do... They just simply attribute partners to Allah, but they believe in the same God, right? Like the Quraysh, right? The the pagan Arabs of uh, you know of Mecca, they believed in Allah as well. However, they attributed partners to Him. So the belief in the but it, no one di differed in the identity of Allah Himself. Everyone understood. That when you mentioned Allah, you mentioned you, you're speaking about the God of uh, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one who sent the prophets. Um, however, some have associated partners with him and some have belied uh, the, his prophets. That is the only difference. So when we say to you, that let us come to common terms between us and you, that we should worship Allah alone. We're not asking you to change anything that you don't already believe. We're just simply saying, leave the falsehood that you have attached to Allah and follow him and his revelation and his prophet. And the prophet that came to you is Muhammad Sallallahu No other prophet was uh, told to preach the message to mankind. No one else has been sent as a mercy to mankind. So... We invite you to read the Quran. You're already saying that you, you know, Christianity doesn't make too much sense to you. You've, alhamdulillah, you've sort of uh, dropped this idea that Jesus is God and he's, he's, a, he's a human being, which is great. So read the Quran, inshallah. Right? No, but I, I've, 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 I've looked at parts of it. And, and right. Well, read it. Read it in full. Right. Read it in full. Right. And if you have questions, you can come and ask us. Right. Or ask any knowledgeable uh, Muslim. And we'll explain to things to you that are not so clear. But what is clear? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that this is a book for which there is no doubt. And what is there no doubt about? There is no doubt that Allah is the creator of the heavens and the earth. There is no doubt that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a messenger and the, fi and the final messenger sent to mankind. There is no doubt of what you need to believe. There is no doubt of what you need to follow. All right? And you, within the Quran, you'll have Allah commenting and teaching us um, what the people before us have done, how they fell into disarray and disbelief, and how we can avoid that so that we can attain paradise and not fall into the hellfire like those who preceded us. So, you know, heed the, heed the guidance of Allah, uh, heed the warning, and, and hopefully you'll get the promise of paradise, inshallah, when you accept Islam. But, but don't have, don't go under any sort of misconception that we um, worship different gods. We don't. We worship the same God. It's just, unfortunately, people throughout history have associated partners. And notice this, yeah? Allah doesn't say that they worship, uh, what do you call it? Um, he says he, they worship those other than Allah, right? Which makes it very clear that when they speak about Allah, they know we know exactly who they're referring to, the creator of the heavens and the earth. 
They're not talking about a seven-headed elephant called Allah. They, that's I wasn't trying to uh, be disrespectful. I, I, know just that, I know that. I know that. I know. I know. I know that. I know. I'm, I'm just yeah. simply using your analogy. However, I'm just saying that Allah has made it very clear in the Quran that no person has, what would you call it, thought of Allah any different to what he what he actually is. When you say Allah, people understand what you mean. However, when you associate partners with Allah, then you start to worship other than Allah. And we're saying, don't do that. Just worship God. It's a pure message. And right, well, it's there for those who seek it. One other quick question, just quick. Sure. Um, so the, the, the Torah is sent down, sent to... Um, the, the children of Israel is that what is that what it's called? Is sent that, down, is that sent down to Moses. Okay, sent down to Moses, and then Jesus is sent with the angel to also sent to um, the children of Israel. Children of Israel. So yes, there's a but there's a verse. And I've, I probably should have come with if I was going to ask for a reference. There's a verse that says um, Jesus made things that were yeah around. Oh yeah, yeah. So it says it mentions that uh, uh, what do you call it? Isa alayhi salam in the Quran. He says, "I have come to make uh, for you halal what was uh, haram." Right. So okay. There is a there is a slight change in the law. So this is why we refer to Jesus or Isa alayhi salam as a rasul, right? Because he came with scripture, whereas the prophets prior to Jesus, going back to Moses, they were um, they were prophets, but they were called anbiya. Right, which was they were given prophecy. However, they didn't come with a legislation or a book. They simply followed and affirmed the law of Moses. However, there was a variation to the law of Moses uh, with Jesus, which is why he was given his own scripture and his own law, essentially, for the uh, for the children of Israel to follow up until the advent of Muhammad, peace be upon him, where the law was changed yet again. To incorporate all of humanity. Okay, so, so how were the Jews being asked to follow the the Torah if, if um, Jesus has changed some of the the rules in there? Some of what's was haram is now halal. Okay, okay. NK. NK. Yeah. Understand something. Understand something, please. You do know that the Old and New Testament do not reliable information yet. Yeah? That's. I mean, that's, that's not. That's not. That's not the point I'm making. I'm not talking about the Old and New Testament. I don't think he is we're talking about the Old and New Testament. He's, he, he, he was very clear in saying that the Torah was revealed to Moses and the Injil was revealed yeah, to Yes, him. okay, okay. Yeah, yes, so yes. So he's, asking, he's asking us based on our, our paradigm, which is fine. Um, so, look, uh, so obviously the Jews were meant to follow the Torah, right, prior to the advent of uh, Isa alayhi salam. However, you don't see in the Quran where Isa alayhi salam is telling them to follow the Torah. He said, I've come to confirm what the Torah has taught you, but I have the Injil, right? So this is the scripture now. So he doesn't say that you have to follow the Torah. This is not mentioned in the Quran. It says, I've, uh, Jesus comes to the people and says, I am affirming the scripture that you have been given by Moses. However, I've also come to make uh, halal to you, what, it, what was made, you know, to make permissible for you what was made forbidden. And, and hence... The Injil. This is this is what is uh, given to the children of Israel, and this is what they should have adhered to. And likewise with Muhammad Sallallahu the Quran is now what the Jews must adhere to in order to be believers. Okay, all right. I still I still don't quite understand how the in when the Quran's revealed, Jews are still being told to follow the Torah because obviously the it's Injil not. So if you actually look at those, if you look at those verses, right. Um, the you know you mentioned chapter 5 verse 68 it says say oh prophet yeah, uh, say to you know say oh people of the book you have nothing to stand on unless you observe the torah the gospel and what has been revealed to you from your lord now why is that now the reason why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that is says um he's saying what has been revealed to you from your lord which means the quran now the quran in of itself is a muhaymin it's a criterion to present to us what was authentically within the uh, the Torah and the gospel that is relevant to the legislation that is required to be followed. So in, in essence, the Quran contains the previous laws, right? Um, and affirms them. In the same way Jesus affirmed the laws of the Torah, however, 
he had the Injil. The Quran affirms the laws within the Torah and the Injil, but tells you you follow the Quran and the legislation that has come with the Quran. And us as Muslims, and this is where we get our creed from, that we believe in the books. We don't just believe in the Quran and belie the, the other scripture. We believe in all the scriptures that have been revealed from the scrolls of Abraham to the Torah, right, to the Psalms of David, right, and the Zabur, to the Injil of, um, uh, what do you call it, of Isa, alayhi salam. We believe in these scriptures, right? We believe what was sent to Noah, right? But and, and this is all told to us in the Quran. So by believing in the Quran, you are by default believing in what was sent down to the other prophets because of this criterion. Okay. 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 I, Makes um, sense? Yeah. Yeah. Sort of. Sort of. Yeah. Yes. Just, 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 yeah, I just, yeah, I just can't quite, the word affirm for me maybe means something slightly different to what it means in the Quran because when you, if you affirm something and then change it, for me, that's not affirming it, but and then no, no. So, for example, I can say like that, I um, guess that's just not your. No, 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 no. We have the, we don't change the definitions, right? So, like for example, I can say um, that I affirm that I affirm what Aris, uh, that what Aristotle said. However, uh, a Farabi, when he translated Aristotle, we understand it a bit more, right? Hmm. Okay. So Farabi, and, uh, he, Farabi is the one that uh, translated Aristotle. So I affirm what Aristotle was writing. However, Farabi, he's the one that decoded it, and I get that as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I, I get you. I yeah. Get you. So we're not in Islam. We don't change the definitions of words to to create a, a theology. We affirm the the meaning of words as they are. Because that's where clarity comes from. If we need to start changing definitions, we have a problem. And alhamdulillah, we don't need to do that. All right. All right. No, I get you. I can explain that. Thank you. No All problem, right. man. All right. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, no, that's everything. Thanks. You're going to accept the spam now? <laughs> um, I'll have to do a lot more. A lot more. Let okay. me leave you with something to think about. Let me leave you with something to think about. You ready, NK? Okay, yeah. Okay. Is it a fact that the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing upon him, existed in history? Yeah, I do believe it did. Good man. Okay. That's an easy question. Okay. Is it also a fact that he made a claim an angel spoke to him in the cave of Hira uh, 1400 years ago and told him he was a messenger of God? Yeah. Okay. So that's two facts. Okay. Uh, it's also a fact that he's either telling the truth, lying, crazy into thinking this, or been deceived into thinking this. That one of these things has to be. I've, 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 I've watched like quite a lot of you guys. Uh, I like, yeah, you know, I find your stream entertaining. I, I do think you oversimplify it a little bit with this. This. this, this I like to chop, um, chop. I like to chop, chop. I like yeah, to yeah, yeah I get you. Bowl. A little bowl. Right. So, do you agree <laughs> with me? One second, one second. So do you agree it's a fact that one of these four explanations has to be true? I don't think it necessarily has to be a clear cut, like devil lying. This I feel no, like no, no, it could no. be like okay, a, okay. sort of like a, second, I don't know. Okay. Cause I'm, it... Well, let's go through it. Let's go through it. So I say there's four explanations. Either he's telling the truth and it really happened, or he's lying and invented the story, or he's crazy and deluded into thinking the story's true. Or the, the event was true, or he's been deceived into thinking an angel spoke to him when it was something other than an angel. Now, do you have another explanation? Not like a concrete explanation, but like, could could he be like a man who's not necessarily crazy? Like, but like, he's not cra not crazy at all because he did a lot of good things and he and he of course he was like uh, achieved he's a not lot. Crazy. But, all right, let's make, let's make but, it even no, easier. No, he's not crazy. No, but like. Let's rule out crazy. Let's just rule out crazy. So we know that okay, someone yeah. who, uh, who who sees things and hears voices and all of this kind of thing is a schizophrenic. Yeah. I don't think it's that simple. Like I think you can be like. Okay. A, Give me a, an example of a mental illness that results in hearing and seeing things. 
not even necessarily mental illness. People who are like of sound mind have had like I feel like I've had I don't know like I just don't think it's you do you, you simplify it with these four things. I've heard it before and it, and it makes stop, a lot of stop, sense what you're saying. But stop what? waffling, stop waffling, and give me a <laughs> mental illness that would result in these symptoms. I can help you on this. No. Did none, none other exist. Okay, no mental illness that we can just like define today. No mental illness as such. It doesn't have to be mental right. illness. And, 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 one second, one second, one second. The only mental illness that would result in these symptoms is schizophrenia, where you hear voices and you see, you see has hallucinations and things like that, and you think things are real that are not real. Yeah. Technically, psychosis and schizophrenia. Yes. Yes. Psychosis and schizophrenia. Okay. And the symptoms of these things are what? Social recluse and paranoia. When we look at the life of the Prophet Muhammad, do we see a social recluse and a paranoid individual? No, we don't. So therefore, he doesn't right. exhibit the symptoms of what you would be implying. And also, mental illness, when it goes untreated, deteriorates. So you would see deterioration in his uh, faculty. Which his we speech, also his see. reason, and his thing. Thinking, his speaking, his way of living, everything. We, we see increasing. We see an increase. We don't see a decrease. We see an increase. Yeah? So can we say it's a fact he wasn't mentally ill? Would you agree with that? Okay. No, I don't think he was mentally ill. I'll agree. With you. Fantastic. That. So we can say it's a fact now. Ill. Okay. 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 Beautiful. Okay. Now, would you like to go through the claim that maybe a demon pretended to be an angel to trick no, him into no, thinking no. he's a messenger? That one doesn't so convince me either. Huh? No, that one, that one doesn't. That one doesn't convince me at all. No, but could it? Could he be a man? So, it, so, you, so you believe it's a fact? You believe, do you believe it's a fact? Then he wasn't deceived by Satan. I doubt that. Yeah, I doubt it. I doubt it. Okay, fantastic. fantastic. So we've got two choices left now. It's either he's invented the whole thing, or it's true. Agreed. <laughs> Um, okay, all right, and then and then I'll offer my a little maybe a, an explanation that doesn't fit quite into the four, but maybe you could be true. Right. Well. Yeah, yeah, right. right. Do you believe though it's a fact either he was visited by an angel and he was indeed a messenger of God, but has he claimed, or he just made it all up? Okay, all right, I'll I'll go with you. I'll go I'll go with it for now. I just go with what. Uh, with what? I'll, go, I'll go as in I'll go with yeah that he wasn't he wasn't the other two, um, but then he could you be like a man? I one said second, could he could he be like a man? One second, he wasn't what? He wasn't um he wasn't mentally. Crazy. Yeah, he wasn't. Yeah, he wasn't crazy. Crazy. We said he's not crazy. Yeah. We said he's not yeah. deceived. So either he's yeah. invented the whole thing. And the, there was no angel, and he just tricked everyone and fooled everyone into believing there was. And he tricked everyone for 23 years that he's a prophet of God, when in fact he was just a charlatan. This is what your claim is, yeah? I think he That's could have been a, a, a man more intelligent than his time, with well-connected, okay. not, not necessarily with like not bad intentions. But just... I'm not interested. I'm not interested in that. I want to know... Did he invent the story of an angel coming to see him in the cave? Ah, uh, it's tough. I, I, I'll have to. I'll have to go and I'll have to go because like, I, I don't want to say yeah he invented it. <laughs> At the same time, like <laughs> <'Cause>... <laughs> Cause Cause you know what's coming, research. Sam. Because you know what's coming. <laughs> so I've made it easy for you. Now. Okay, I've made, I've made it easy for you now. What I want you to do is go away and research whether or not this man, Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings upon him could have lied about this? Could he have invented the whole story for whatever personal gain that he wanted? Look into his life, look at his achievements, look at, did, did he, did we see palaces of gold? Did we see revenge on the people who used to torture him? Do we see this? Do we see him taking, do we see him um, taking advantage of situations to support his profiter? Do we see a capacity to be able to fulfill this? Do we see a man who who had the ability to have produced this Quran, to have the knowledge to produce this Quran? Do we see this in his life? Because if we in, don't, then he can't be a liar. In other words, we're asking you to go away and ask the question to yourself, is the truthful and the trustworthy one a liar? That's it. And if he's not a liar, which it means he's telling the truth. And if he's telling the truth, 
That means Allah exists. And that means what? Hellfire exists. That means what? Paradise exists. That means what? Jesus didn't die for your sins. That means what? You're going to be held accountable for how you live your life. And there's going to a day coming when the angels are going to lay you out and tell you this is the day you used to deny. So get ready, son. Have a lovely evening. You wake up in a cold sweat. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah oh well, yeah yeah yeah, yeah, look, yeah i like him as well what do you call it and look nk when you re come to realize the truth don't repeat the mistakes of those who came before us right <laughs> uh, used to deny it for worldly gain right or out of arrogance or anything when the truth comes the truth comes accept it, it it's the only it's the best thing for you okay Okay. 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 All right. We'll hear you. I want it. I want this. See what I've done now. I just narrowed down your search. I've made it so easy for you. Because if he's not lying, he's telling the truth, and Islam is the truth. Get ready. Accept it. Stop faffing. Get on with your life, man. Instead of this. Well, I'm kind of a Christian, but I don't believe Jesus was God. But yeah, he died for my sins and all this kind of crap. Forget this nonsense. Become a Muslim. Take guidance from God into your life. Something tangible, something you can use and wield and benefit yourself in this life for you and your family and the hereafter, inshallah. Winning this world and winning the hereafter. SubhanAllah. Mm -hmm. We invite you to Islam NK. Well, go do your research. Okay. Great pitch. All right. I'll do my research. Cheers, guys. Cheers. All right. Take care, dude. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Nice guy. Yeah, but you, you see how the, everything just comes back to the claims yeah, always, about Muhammad's yeah. life. Everything just comes back to it. it. This is why I'm writing this book, inshallah. Ready for your pitch? Is it next week or the week after? Oh, yeah, the next week, what? isn't it? Is uh, are we going to do it on a Friday? Yeah. Um, do you want to do it on a day other than a Friday? Why? Well, because Saturday I've got my debate with Razi. Oh, I say okay. All right. Um, I'll tell you what we'll do then. We'll do another arena and then do it the following Friday. How's that? Fine. That's, so that, yeah, gives you, that, that gives you three weeks. Yeah, that's fine. Not a problem. I mean, what you're only that? doing was he deceived by Satan, flipping out. You should have to do that standing on your head. No, I like to go like to just so I've all you know, I always like to cover all bases, which is fine. I'll, I'm ready for it. It's just now the timing because it's already been delayed. We were supposed to do it, what was it this week or Today, something? No, last week, last week we were supposed to do it. We were supposed to do it last week, yeah, and then oh yeah, and then I was yeah, unfortunate. No but, problem, no problem. I need you to go into detail because I need it for my book. All right. Yeah. Next. No worries, bro. I think this guy is going to be a troll, the next guy, but I might be wrong. I think he's going to be a troll. But I could be wrong. Really wrong, though, that's the thing. I'm sure I can smell fraggles cooking. And um, um, by the way, what do you call it? The debate is going to be on uh, Ramsey's channel, Dawa over Dunya. <laughs> That's your debate with the Qadiani Razi. Mm -hmm. What's the topic? Is the is Isa alayhi salam dead according to authentic sources? Short answer, no. Long answer, you don't understand the asul of Musa Gulam. <laughs> that's pretty much the claim. It's, okay, I think Hamza. That's where it's going to hit him. Okay, so Randy Flange is on. Yo, salam alaikum. Walaikum salam. That's Jesus. the worst name possible, Randy Flange. It's yeah. like the guy's a plumber or something. <laughs> <laughs> right, guest, who are you? What what's what's going on? There has to be a guest there, right? Mm. Guest, guest number one. What's behind door number one? Knock knock. Anyone there? Yemeni, yeah, maybe he likes you. You talk to him instead. King Hello, Jesus, you muted, you muted, mate. Can you just unmute yourself? For God's sake, it's not that difficult. Yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah, so uh, I don't know if I'm going to have time, but... Uh, you got time. Don't worry. Yeah, because I've been waiting and I'm going to have a phone call in a couple of minutes. But yeah, so I think about three weeks ago, right? Uh, three or four weeks ago, it just, I brought up an issue about Muhammad's revelation not matching up to other people's um, encounters with angels. So I, I mentioned that other people were able to 
like um, detect on their own that they encountered in Jean Gabriel and Mohammed could not. And you mentioned about um, the Genesis chapter, Z 18. 18. 18. And, you said, and you said Abraham did not, was not able to detect that God came to visit him. Is that what you said? I think that's what you were saying. I read right. it and I don't see that. So I'm wondering yeah. where you saw so, that. Because this chapter has been read in the Bible like since, since I was a kid. And no pastor, yeah. no evangelist, nobody ever said, oh, Abraham did not know that he encountered okay. an angel. And also okay. there's a movie about this. There's a Christian movie about Abraham. And the movie okay. doesn't treat him as not knowing. So I don't know where you are okay. getting. I, I apologize. I didn't watch the movie. But I, I have, I'll let you know, I did read the Bible. And yeah. what I read it in, just to be clear, was the Greek Septuagint, the Lexam in, uh, Septuagint itself. And yeah. then I read uh, the N, uh, sorry, um, the BHS and the BHQ, the Biblical Hebraica uh, Stuttgart and Seer. And then I read the edition of the BHQ, the Biblical Hebraica Quinto, right? So these are three editions of the uh, specific to the book of Genesis that I have read on this. And the point I am making is that when Abraham bows, he bows to all three entities that he sees, not yeah. just one, but to all three of them. Mm -hmm. Secondly, when the entities speak to him, it mm -hmm. says that they spoke, they said, mm -hmm. meaning really strangely, either all of them spoke at the same point or all of them repeated the same thing after the other because it said they said and gave only one quotation. So you have to look at the verbs, the verb noun agreement, and you can see this for yourself. So my question is, you said you read it. Did yeah. you read any of the Greek and Hebrew editions I just mentioned to you? I mean, I looked at the, I think there's a blue, is it blue letter Bible is called? Yeah, I, yeah, I, there's the interlinear, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. so I, when I, I was, after I read like my normal version, like New King James, then I just yes. looked at the, at the interlinear Bible, uh, okay. uh, where it's like in the Bible, it's in the first chapter, it says, and the Lord appeared to Abraham. Yeah, no problem with that, yeah. And then it says, Abraham looked and saw three men and he yes. welcomed them. So, and then and he worshiped them. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if, if I can't remember if he worshiped them or not, but I know okay. he welcomed them. And I was looking at the conversation. So, in my New King James, there are sometimes it will say Lord with capital or ca capitalized, and there are sometimes yes, sure. Lord with small letters. So, I looked at the interlinear, and the one with the capital letter was called Jehovah, the one with um, just one letter, uh, Lord, that is not all caps was called Adonai. So and yeah. Adonai is the Hebrew name for for, for God. So yeah, you just, can see that. Just to that take you back, just yeah. to take you back, I think it was Genesis 18, verse 2. He says, Lords, do not pass me by your servant. So he refers to them three with the same name. Verse 2. Do you say verse 2? I believe it's verse 2. Verse 2 or verse 3. It's where he says, Lords, do not pass me by. When he saw them, he heard. Uh, well, so I'm reading from the Bible. Say, Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them yes. and bowed low to the ground. So, where, where did he say, Lord, do not pass me by? The very next sentence. He said, If I found favor in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servant by. Yeah, so the word there is not my Lord, it's my Lord's. How do we know that? It's because the vowel in, in the Hebrew says that. And then when you go to the very next chapter, verse 19, sorry, chapter 19, verse, I think it's one. I could be wrong, verse one or two. It mentions the same word and translates it as Lord's, plural. You said so that's that how we know it's plural. Yeah. For, for I have chosen him so that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just so that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he has promised him. Everything is saying Lord, Lord, yeah. 
but it, I'll, I'll put it up on the screen and I'll show you and you can see for yourself. And then you tell me why does it have that difference? Mm -hmm. You studied it, right? And I didn't. Like I said, I, I've the your version you said you have read. I probably haven't read that, but yeah. I'm but, gonna put the link in the yeah, chat. Yeah. I'm gonna put the link in the chat, and it's in your KJV. I can see it. Yeah. It's Genesis 19 verse two, and he said, "Behold, now my lords, turn, please." Right. So I'm just gonna share the link in the back chat so you can read it for yourself, What's and anyone can read it? it. Okay, my lords. Okay. Right, you can see it in the Hebrew. It says, "My lords," and the vowel in is "my lords." No, my lords, don't please. Okay, yeah. Even if it says "my lords," right? Um, God is triune. So even if it says "my lords," God is triune. It's three, three people. One, ah, what? Well, it doesn't work that way. It even doesn't. If it says "my lords," it, um, Adonai is a lord. Um, Jesus is a lord. Um, um, the Father is a Lord, the Holy Spirit is a Lord, so it's still, it's still, even if it says Lord, it's still, it's still talking about the three persons of the Trinity. So, wrong, wrong. Do you say that the word Lords is equivalent to God's? No, I said Lords is. I'm asking you the question if you're saying the Father is the Lord, the Son is the Lord, the Spirit mm -hmm. is the Lord, and it's referring to the different persons. Those Hold lords up. are referring to the and different this, persons of the Trinity. And yes, I'm all saying of them Father, are good, one God. I said I'm happy to grant you that point, yes. but understand the problem you've put yourself into. Yes. Tell me if I'm correct based on your words that the Father is a Lord, the Son is a Lord. You yes. can't hear the answer, you're muted. Yes, yes. The Holy the Spirit is a Lord. Yes. Right? Okay. So that would be three lords, right? You said that. Uh, three lords, yeah. Right, right. So then. Apply this to the Trinity. The Father is a God, the Son is a God, the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit is a God. So you will get three. One God. <laughs> How does it end up going from three lords to one God? Why is three and three? God is a mystery. Because God is a mystery. It, Hamza, can you Hamza? It's one God, three persons. God is a mystery. <laughs> King Jesus. Yes. Why do you believe God is a mystery? Why do you mean God? You, we can never fully comprehend God. Do you agree with that? Well, if God tells you His nature, can you can you comprehend God? You can understand it as a base level, at a at a basic fundamental level, but okay. you you you, you where, can where does, you where, never know the where, where does God say okay? Where does God it's say Jesus is God? Where does God say Jesus is God? Um, where does God say Jesus is God? I think mm. there's one chapter in I can't remember the exact uh, what book now, one chapter, but in the where does God say yeah. Jesus is God? Like I, that's what I'm trying to tell you now. Like go find in, it. Go find it. I can't remember the verse right now. It will take me time to oh let me see. Let me search one moment. Uh therefore, God thy God. Okay. While you're searching for, while you're searching for, it, I have no idea what he's saying. I'm so confused on how he he read Genesis 18 to refer to the Trinity when it when Genesis 19 tells you very clearly that those three were angels. Genesis three. Those three that visited Abraham, it's very clear in Genesis 19 that they were angels. So how how, how did it go from? The three weren't angels. Do you believe God is God is three angels? The three weren't angels. Like they were angels. I, we just read we just read the the um Genesis 18 and yeah, even, and it says three men. It says three, three men, right? Three men, and when they were having a conversation, um Abraham mentioned Lord and Lord, and yeah. in the Italia, Lord means Jehovah, and the no, other means doesn't. yes, it, that's what it, it says. Doesn't. It doesn't, it doesn't, all right. Because if if you actually if you're aware with if you're aware of Jewish theology, um, you would realize that Yahweh can refer to an angel. I disagree with you. Like I said, when well, I, when I looked at the I'm Genesis talking, nineteen. I, well, uh, all right, look, look, look. when it's I look at the right. blue letter Genesis, Bible, Genesis nineteen. Okay, go on. At the end of Genesis eighteen, right, it mentions right that the. That they're gonna that they're gonna depart, right? Yeah. Because, and we know that 
one angel can't carry out two commissions. All right. So Genesis 19 is very clear. All right. That two angels came to Sodom. Right. And what was the third angel uh, responsible for? It was to stay back and, uh, you know, for the good news of um, what was it, Isaac to, uh, to be born, if I'm not mistaken. But two of them went to Sodom, uh, to Sodom. Right. Yeah, now you know. go. And then when you go down to Genesis 1924, you see where it says that the Lord caused rain down uh, upon Sodom and Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord from heaven. Now, what you don't know is that the first Lord in, in the Hebrew, both are, both is Yahweh. However, the first Lord, the first Yahweh is referring to God himself. Whereas the second Lord, the second Yahweh is referring to Gabriel because Gabriel overturned Sodom and Gomorrah. But you still have three angels. There were three angels that came to visit Abraham. So how do you get Trinity out of it? The f like, like I said, in chapter 18, when I looked at it in the interlinear Bible, it did not say angels. Like I said, says, no, the first Lord, it said, I don't know, maybe what... The story in Genesis 18 carries on through to Genesis 19, right? 19, in Genesis 19, is very clear that they are angels. So we understand that the three men that came to Abraham were angels. There were three angels. So how is that? How is that? I, I, so I that they are angels, because like I said, when I, looked at the, when I looked at the interlinear, angels are not called Jehovah. When I looked at the interlinear Bible, the blue letter Bible, I compared the Lord in capital letters in the um, New King James, in the interlinear, I think it was the Septuagint or whatever, and it says Lord Jehovah and the lowercase Lord, Adonai. So I don't, oh, this other thing you are telling me. King Jesus. Jesus. King Jesus. Yeah. Do you think there's lower and higher case letters in Greek? Like I said, I compared it to. No, 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 no. Do you think there's higher and lower case letters in Greek? I don't, I don't know. I, I, I'm not. So the answer is no. So this idea of putting capital L and little L and capital S and little, yeah. this is just man's invention. Yeah, this no, it's the, just the English way of distinguishing between um, the father and the son. All over the Bible, Lord in capital letters is referred to as... There's no as such thing as capital letters in Greek. Don't you understand that? I'm talking just about... Just capital English letter in English doesn't mean that it's automatically referring to God. I understand, but in the translation... In our English Bibles, that's what it refers to. And when I looked at the Blue Letter Bible, if Lord, you look at the Blue Letter in, Bible, in, in, it still tell you that they were angels, right? Genesis 19. I'm talking about Genesis um, 19, yeah. Yeah, Genesis 19, verse 1. What does it say? Let me, let me. Because it's a continuation of what has happened in Genesis 18. Hmm. I feel can... left out. What do you call it? Hamza and Ajaz are chewing. I've got nothing to chew on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> find, uh, find the scripture. Um, sorry. To, is it Genesis 19 or Genesis Yeah, 18? Genesis 19. Give me a second. Hmm. <laughs> Two angels. Could it be the Genesis 19? Could it be that God sent two angels after they visited um um after they visited Abraham? No. Why do you why do you say that? Why is that not possible? Because if you look in Genesis 18, it mentions what's gonna happen to Sodom and Gomorrah. All right. Mm -hmm. And Abraham is worried for his um, for Lot and the, and the and the and the and the and the righteous people in that city. So Genesis 19 continues on, and it mentions that the two angels went to Sodom and Gomorrah, right? And if you look at the end of Genesis 18, it mentions about the the one Lord that left Abraham, right? So one Lord left Abraham; the other two was still was still about. And then in Genesis 19, it mentions that those two were actually angels and they went to Sodom and Gomorrah in order to, over, you know, destroy it. Yeah, but at the ending... You have to get some food. <laughs> at the ending of Genesis 
At the ending of Genesis chapter chapter 18, verse 33, it doesn't say do, um, two of them left and went to Sodom uh, and Gomorrah. It doesn't say that. Genesis 19, it says that. 19 verse 1, that's what it says. That, that the, the remaining two, after they spoke with Abraham, left and went to Sodom and Gomorrah? Yes. That was it. So it says, and the two angels came to Sodom and Gomorrah in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the garden of Sodom, uh, in the gates of Sodom. And Lot saw and arose towards them, and he prostrated himself on his face to the ground. He did exactly what Abraham did. So you have that parallel. In Genesis 18.1 and Genesis 19.1, you have Abraham in 18 uh, prostrating, and in 19, Lot was prostrating. Okay, so notice that, notice yeah. that Lot prostrates to two angels. To angels. Right. So okay. if prostration yeah. is meant to be worship, then he committed a sin. So what did the angels do about that sin? Okay. Um, let me see. The uh -huh. angels. And this is what they don't teach you in Bible studies. Wait, wait, wait. Mm -hmm. And the angels. So in place of angels, what's what's the Greek deal? Angeloi will be angels. Angels will be angeloi. Angeloi. Mm. In any case, brothers, I I'm must not, depart. Not, but it's I know, uh, my time. I know sometimes. I, one I know second, I uh, guess. Just one okay, second. Sorry. Guys, forgive me. Alhamdulillah, it was a beautiful stream. And it was yeah. a pleasure to be here. I might pop, pop back on before the end if uh, I feel well. But uh, sure. I appreciate the invitation. Brother Hamza again. Uh, you did three hours, Ijaz. Uh, Thank you for coming, bro. Yeah, mashallah. Uh, love you guys for the sake of Allah, and I hope that Allah accepts this from us. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Such a top lad. Just... Okay. Anyway, I I um I have to go have a call with someone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, didn't he, didn't, he did say that earlier. He he said that earlier. I, I said that earlier. <laughs> I said, oh, what's a bit to do? Exit stage left. Well, ask him. I said that earlier. I know. Thank you, dude. All right. <laughs> Thing is, it's, it's, it's actually, a, it's actually a good, uh, good point because he was talking about how he was learning the Bible from young and everything, but they don't teach him this stuff. They don't teach them the reality of what the scripture is actually saying. We just give them key points that they keep hammering into them until they believe it. You're, you're muted, bro. I don't know hey, Hamza. Yeah. Hamza, what's going on, man? Hey, I wanted to ask you another question. You know, I was I was on earlier and um, I wanted to show you some stuff, but my screen kept going black, so I looked like an idiot because I kept minimizing the application. So it just kept cutting off, and you kept thinking I had bad app, uh, bad internet connection. So you said you said earlier that uh, basically, you know, Jabril, there was no way that he could possibly be Satan. I said what? You said Jibril to the other guy. You said Jibril definitely wasn't Satan. You, and you were trying to hammer that point into him. No, saying no, no, that... no, 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 no. No? What no. What'd you say? I said if you want to say it was Satan, make your claim. Make your claim. Okay, all right. You want to make your claim? Well, I do want to make my claim, but I don't want anybody to get offended. I really don't want to. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying I, to. I'm just genuinely asking questions. I'm just genuinely, asking questions. I'm just genuinely right. asking questions. Fair enough. Fair okay? enough. I'll just say something to you. You're not gonna offend me, dude. No, that's fine. I don't want to offend others. That's fine. No one's gonna get offended, dude. All right. All right. All right. So, I don't know. Are you are you much of a, a hadith guy? Do you do you go with the Sunni hadith? You make your claim, dude. Yeah. Okay. So narrated by Abu Haraya. We've got mm -hmm. uh, page uh, 4158. Page the messenger four, of Allah said, Jibreel came to me and said, I came to you last night and was stop, prevented stop, from stop, entering stop, stop, simply stop, stop, because stop. there were images at the door. For there stop. was a decorated curtain with images on it stop. in the house and there was stop. a dog in the house. What's going on stop. there? Stop. What are you narrating from? 
No, I know the hadith. It's a Sahih hadith. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. But what's it? Is it Sahih Bukhari? Yeah? So what's the, just what's going on there? Is this a genuine question? What's going on there? The angels don't come around when there are dogs. So Muhammad had a. So this is after Muhammad claimed prophethood, by the way. So what's what's going on? He has a dog in his house. He has statues, and he has no some statues. kind of images. No, 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 no. That's what it says. Read the report. Read it again. The messenger of Allah said, Jabril came to me and said, I came to you last night and was prevented from entering simply because there were images at the door. For there was a decorated curtain with images on it in the house and there was a dog in the house. So order the head of the image which is in the house to be cut off so that it resembles the form of a tree. Order the curtain to be cut up and made into two cushions spread out on which people may tread. And order the dog to be turned out. So the messenger so of Allah then did so. Uh, so the what? dog belonged to Al Hassan or Al Husayan and was under their couch, so he ordered it to be turned out. Abu Dawood said. What's the point? Well, what's going on there? He's going no, no, against no, his own no, teachings, no, and this no, is no, after no, he claimed prophethood. No, 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 no. <laughs> You're making a claim, right? Your claim is that Satan was the one in the cave. Is that what you make? Is that what your claim is? Well, how can we trust Muhammad if he's already going against his teachings here? This is, is, after, he, this is after he claimed prophet. No, I'm going to get into that. But this is no, no, all. No, 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 this no. is after. No. He, this I'm building up. This is after. I don't, he no, no, no. I the beginning. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Just one second. You can address it. Yeah, okay. Is your claim that the, in the cave of Hira, it was Satan that came to Muhammad? The thing is, if I go off of my phone right now and that watch a video, that is my claim. That really is my claim, but you have to that hear me out for a second. Oh, okay, one, second, one, second. one second. I just want yeah. to establish something here. So you believe that the Prophet Muhammad was a man of truth, yes? No, I don't believe that he was a man of truth. Okay, so did he know this angel was Satan? I believed sometimes he knew, other times he was heavily deceived into maybe thinking that it was no, God. Knew it was other times religion. he knew. Stop, stop, stop. In the, cave, in the cave, when the angel came to him, did he know that that angel was really Satan? Or did he think it was an angel? Uh, he had his doubts. He had his doubts. He had his doubts. Right. So, and then throughout his revelation, he believed that it was Satan? Satan is the greatest deceiver. No, I'm not asking that question. I'm asking... Did the Prophet Muhammad go down yeah. saying, God has said this, this, and this, knowing it's really Satan saying it or not? There was things that he changed, apparently, because all oh, that I'm actually came from Satan. That. I'm not interested in your reasoning. Yeah, I don't, sorry, I don't really understand your question. I'll say it again, sorry. Oh, okay, I'll say it again to you. You believe, according to what you're saying, that the, in the cave, when the angel came to the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, and said he's an angel of the Lord, you believe that was really a Satan, yes? Yeah. Right. When the Prophet, peace and be upon him, was speaking and revealing the Qur'an, did yeah. he believe it was coming from God or did he know it was coming from Satan? I don't know. There's so many contradictions within the Hadith. I really don't know. You don't know. I really don't know. But there's strong. That's the thing. Is like it's things like this where he's you contradicting know. himself and he's already claimed prophethood. That makes you me know, think no, otherwise. Actually, no, 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 no. There's, a, there's, a, there's a, um, another narration. The same event. But it mentions that the Prophet, peace be upon him, was waiting for Jibreel, salam, and he didn't show up, right? He didn't show up, right? Why didn't this he show up? Dog. This is the dog one. Go on. Mm, yeah. And so then when he showed up again, because you, what you're saying is that he's already a prophet. He's going against his own teachings. Yeah. And here's the proof that he's not going against his teachings, because that's your premise, right? Yeah. When he saw that, when he was waiting for Jibreel, salam, to show up, he didn't show up. And he became upset. Why do you think he became upset? Because he did something wrong. No. He was, I think he, I, well, there's no other reason. Why wouldn't he show up? No, because he didn't know why he didn't show up. If he knew okay. what this reason was, right, then um, he wouldn't have, you know. So is uh, that strong hadith? Is that is that sahih, as you guys say? Yeah, it's a sahih hadith. So why right. why so do they why does the other Sahih hadith so, completely so say different and mention look, a dog again. and a curtain? Hold on and a everything. second, hold on a second, hold on a second. The hadith that you're quote that, that you're quoting, right? Again, when Jibril comes to him, he explains to him something. 
Now, if he already knew of this teaching, it wouldn't require an explanation from the angel, right? And he wouldn't action it immediately. So it's not the character. If anything, the report that you're uh, you're, uh, you're quoting shows that the prophet was immediate in his action when information came to him from the angel. The angel told him, "Oh, we don't. The angels don't come when there's dogs and, and images around." Immediately, he got rid of the images. Now, not statues, right? But images, right? Mm -hmm. And and they were turned into something else, and the dog was taken out. So, which shows that the prophet didn't know about this teaching. So he couldn't he couldn't have gone against the teaching that he didn't know about. And when he did come into the knowledge of it, he actioned it immediately. Okay. So right, then right. again, so in the hadith from uh, Ibn Abin Naji from his father, no. uh, as well, it's narrated: uh, the messenger of God entered the house of God, the Kaaba. And commanded that he be given a garment. He made it wet with water and commanded that the images inside the Kaaba be wiped out. But he placed his hands on the image, Surah, is from Surah of Jesus and his mother, and said, Erase everything except for what is under my hands. So this is, again, after he claimed prophethood. There's statues in the Kaaba of Jesus and Mother Mary. What? And they're protecting them. What? What's, the, what's the reference for this report? Dude, cite the reference. In the hadith from, I don't know how to pronounce it, Ibn no, no, Abi there, Naji. There must, there's, a, there's, a, there's usually a reference. Hadith from Ibn Abi Naji from oh, Huwayat uh, Abdallah. From no, no, what, Ab what, what collection is it? Is, what collection is it from? I have no idea. Let's see. Al, uh, ba, 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 Al Din Al Darabi da, 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 I don't know. Tell me. I can't read it. I can't read what's in your, what's on your screen. All right, another one. Just whatever. No. This is, and this is authenticated by Ahmed bin Hanbal. Ahmed bin Hanbal, yeah. Yeah. This is a stupid point. I'm just kicking you. Without. I exception. saw my lord in the form of a young man, beardless, with short curly hair and clothed in a red garment. Okay. So apparently, this happened in a dream. Well, be, before, I just can't be bothered. I just can't be bothered with this. I, I don't get it. Like, first of all, he completely ignored what we were, well, what we explained about the first hadith, and then he went on about two other hadith, which it just kicked him. I just can't be bothered. I'm not familiar with. All right, go on, with Pablo. Pablo Vasquez. Come estás? Speak, man. I think it's, are you muted? Did you mute no, yourself? No, he's not muted. So maybe he's mic. Hello, Pablo. 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 Hello. 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 <laughs> Hello. 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 Can you hear me? We can hear yeah. you, sir. How is this? Oh. Well, first to say that uh, English is my first language, so I apologize. In advance, I greeted you in Spanish. Uh, yeah, I am Spanish. <laughs> I greeted you as a comic. I was born in Spain. In the... One as much as because I, I saw your uh, short videos on YouTube. Um, uh, before that, I lived in England for a while. Um, I always was curious about Islam. I am not a believer, I don't believe in any religion. I don't have faith, that's all. And obviously very respectful with all religions, especially Islam, because when I was living in England, the first person I became across was a Saudi gentleman, my friend, and uh, now I feel like a brother. Um, uh, as a Spaniard, obviously I have some knowledge about uh, Quran, and Islam and the Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him, um, because it's part of the Spanish education history program. Uh, obviously, every kid in Spain, in Spain knows about the Rahman and the rest of the members of the Caliphate, etc., etc. It's part of uh, our education program. The Umidas, the Abbasids, etc., etc. 
so I was curious, especially my. Sorry, I'm a little bit nervous. Don't worry. Don't no, no problem. No problem. No worry. I'm I'm a modern historian, a nerd, obviously, <laughs> but uh, I am not a scholar, a former scholar. I study law at the university, no history, but uh, in uh, the uh, Spanish uh, education in law program, we have a, a subject called history of law. Um, they mention briefly, very briefly, because it wasn't even a great, how do you say it, uh, relevance in the Spanish history of law. They mentioned the Habits, they mentioned the Al Maliki school, I mm -hmm. think, with yeah. uh, I, if I remember well, is a Shia school. I've got a Spanish um, translation. Uh, Just one second. Uh, I've got a Spanish translator coming. Give me one second, yeah. Uh, sure. And then we'll be, you'll be able to go to that person, and they can um, tell us what you're saying. Fair enough. It would really help, I think. Well, I speak English perfectly, but thank you. It's very thick accent, though. But if if someone if you could speak Spanish, then um, I think it would be easier. Okay. Uh, I can I can speak English. Right. I'm just nervous. I'm just nervous. I'm uh, I on my phone. Maybe it's because of that. Maybe maybe your accent is very thick, though. I'm trying to cut through it, but mashallah, it's good. So you you've come here to become a Muslim, yeah? No, no, no. <laughs> Why not? But uh, because I'm, uh, I don't believe in God. Why not? Any God. Why not? Just that I have no, no uh, answer for that question. I don't have faith, but uh, I'm. Uh, one second. I'm curious about. Do you, do you, do you believe, one second. One second. Do you accept that Prophet Muhammad? Peace and blessed be upon him, existed. Yes, I do believe he was a real person. Okay. And do you believe that he made a claim, an angel came to him in the cave and told him he's a messenger of God? He did make the claim, yes. Yes, he made the claim. Okay. If the claim is true, does that mean God exists? I, I don't know. I don't no, know. No, no, I no, wish. No, 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 no. I wish I knew the no, truth. Pablo. Pablo, Pablo. Yes, correct. What I'm, what I'm saying to you is this: if the claim is true, would that mean God exists? No, necessarily. Why not? Because the same as soon as I'm making out right now, I strongly believe Muhammad, what? the person, the real person was also in doubt listen to, what I'm listen to what i'm saying to you if the claim is true one second if the claim is true do you yes. accept god then that would mean god exists isn't it because how can you be a messenger of god if god doesn't exist that's a fallacy question Huh? That's uh, an answer that uh, you can. Uh, uh, that's a fallacy question, sir. No, no, no. no. Can you can you be a messenger of God if God doesn't exist? You can believe you are the messenger, yes, but it doesn't mean the God exists. No. If I didn't say that, I said if. Can you be a messenger of God if God doesn't exist? Yes, you can. You can. Yes, you can How? strongly believe. No, that I'm not you are. About, I'm not talking about. Can you make the claim? I said, can you actually be a messenger of God if God doesn't exist? No. I, I agree with you. I agree with you.
Okay, so if we can show you that the claim is true, then God exists, yeah? I uh, yeah, study a little bit, well, obviously uh, through no, no, internet. Can, I'm just saying if we can about show you... the person about of Muhammad, the Pablo. real person. Pablo. Yes. Pablo. Sorry. If we can demonstrate and show you that the claim of Muhammad, peace and bless be upon him, is true, do you accept then that God exists? I haven't seen God yet, but uh, no, no, I no, need no. to see him. I understand not now. No, 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 no. I understand right now you may not believe the claim is true. But if we can demonstrate to you now that the claim is true, are you ready to accept God exists? Yes. Because you, yes. Yes, I do. Good man. Yemeni, it's all yours. Um, okay. I thought you were going to go through the. the uh, I'm going to let you do it. I'm going to let you do it. Uh, okay. I've so, still got my translator coming, so um, if, if he needs any help, okay? Okay, no problem. It'd be interesting to so, see her do some dower as well. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so, uh, uh, Pablo, what do you call it? Um, <laughs> what do you call it? <laughs> what, yeah. Don't oh, panic, Mr. Mannering. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> you can call me Pablo. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, there are four options. Um, that Hamza always goes through, but inshallah, we'll, we'll go through them today with you. The claim of uh, the angel coming to uh, visit Muhammad Sallallahu and telling him that he is a prophet of God yeah. and giving him the Quran, there's four options to explain that event. One is that he was lying. One is that he was deceived. Another it was he was delusional or crazy. And the final one is that he was telling the truth. Do you agree with that? I listened to this argument before. Yes. And um, I think he may be deceived. Ah, you think he was deceived? Okay. Nobody said that. Um, deceived? Don't, because I don't believe in Satan, obviously. Okay, that, exactly. That's why I was going to clarify. May... Deceived by who? By oh, wow. whom? I mean, yes. the circumstances, maybe the I strongly, firmly believe the when he made the claim, he was truly believing it. Okay, so he but, was deceived, but but like I said, all right. So we know that there was a physical presence in the cave with him, and he he. Uh, he, he we don't know that. In his race. No, but this is the claim. This is the claim, right? We don't know what so, happened on the cave. No, so we don't the, actually yeah, know what happened on the cave. No, 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 Pablo. What we know is yeah, what the prophet right. peace be upon him claimed, right? So he said that yeah. I was in the cave, and a man yes. was there, and a man was there, right? And he, yeah, he raised yeah. me, and he shook me, and he commanded me to read, and I said I cannot read. And he did this three times, and then he started to recite the verses to me, right? Yes. And uh, to the end of the fifth ayah. So this is the this is the event. This is what's been claimed by the Prophet peace be upon him. Now, if you believe he was deceived, now you, which means that the deception means that there was actually a presence there. So there was a man there who shook him and told him these things, because if it was delusional. Well, Hey, hold on a second. If it was delusional, that yeah. would mean that it was a figment of his imagination. No one turned up in the cave. No one held him. No one shook him. You know, no one uh, squeezed him a little hard. No one recited any verses to him. So then you will shift the claim from deception to delusion. So where do you want to plant your flag? To be, to be honest, I don't know. Because what? I... So if you were to say that he was deceived, right, because that was the yes. initial thing, do you think that there was possibly just a regular human being that came in? Yes, he was a regular human being. A regular human being. And this yes. regular human being told him that 
told him to recite these words. No, I mean, uh, I mean, Muhammad was a regular human being. Okay, so how do you explain the, the, the individual that came into the cave and shook him and recited the verses to him? I don't think that was true. I think it's, that was a metaphor or... Uh, I don't think that was. One second, one second, one second. Let, let, let's just establish one thing. Sorry, sorry, Yemeni. Yeah. Is it a fact that the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing upon him, made a claim that an angel came to him in the cave of Hira and informed him he was a messenger of God? Is that a fact? I don't know. No, it, it's not an opinion. Right? No. I'm no. saying is it a, it's, it's not like, oh, do you think so? No. Is it a historical fact that he made this claim? No, it's not a historical fact. It is an historical fact that he made this claim. He made the claim, but maybe right. he adorned no, no, the claim. No, it's, 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 it's a Pablo, fact. Pablo, 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 listen to yeah, the question. I listen. Did he make the claim? Did he make the claim, yes. Right. So as a fact, he made the claim that an angel informed him he was a messenger of God, yes? Yeah, the fact. Rasuli. Fact. Yeah. Right. It's a fact. Yeah. Just one second. I'm welcoming Paula. Salam alaikum, my sister. You good? Uh, good. Yeah. Masha'Allah. Paula took shahada now six weeks ago, was it? Four weeks ago, six weeks ago? Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Uh, uh, I'll just have you got your YouTube on? Just to switch off your YouTube or pause your YouTube. I think it's echoing. How? Speak. How? Yeah, your YouTube. Just pause it or switch it off because you're just in Streamyard now. I'm not open on YouTube. Okay, it's fine now. Okay, so Paula's Marcela Pablo. Uh, this is uh, yeah, Paula from Argentina. Hello, Paula. Yeah. So you do have a little conversation with him. Uh, this would be interesting. Okay. Uh, so from where is Paolo? I'm from La Coruña. Ah, Coruña. ¿Qué tal? Yeah. Bien, gracias. Un placer. Eh, perdón, yo no estaba antes en la conversación. No sé si quiere ponerme a tono. Bueno, me echaban en el... Estaban, estábamos hablando del cuando Mahoma, bueno, Muhammad, eh, re, bueno, reclama su, su el mensaje de Dios, vamos, o en la cueva. Sí. Pero bueno, es que yo, yo no quería llegar a ese punto, a ver, porque ellos me estaban intentando convencer de, de que eso era cierto, Por, pero no es que sea cierto o no, ese no es mi punto de vista, ese no es lo que yo quería explicar, no es lo que yo quería hacerles entender, vamos. ¿Y qué es lo que quería explicar? Eh, por ejemplo, como what you guys were talking about and okay. he said that you are trying to convince him that you were talking when uh about muhammad in the cave when he got the revelation uh he says that he doesn't want to talk if, it, if that is true or not that's not his point that's not where he's trying to go no 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 we took him there because we told him that if the claim is true in the cave that then means god exists yeah yeah, yeah. God um but he says that he doesn't you took him there, but he, that's not what he wants to talk about. He doesn't want to say if it's true or not. We don't care what he wants to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I hope a little bit. We're taking you in the hole, Pablo. Well, you uh, no You're going in the hole. Can I make the point now, please? Make the point to Paula so you can express yourself and then she can well, explain. I, I, again, I'm speak, I speak English perfectly. But yes, I am a little bit nervous, but uh, oh, I can't. Speak Spanish because you can express okay. every word and every syllable. Your English... Okay. Okay. Sí, 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 sí. Mira, eh, el profeta Mahoma, cuando estaba en la Medina, 
él estuvo en contacto con varias tribus árabes que se habían convertido al cristianismo nestoriano y al judaísmo. Y ese es, desde un punto de vista histórico, el primer contacto que sabemos que él tiene, independientemente de alguna visita, tal vez en la Meca, y él conociera allí a algún viajante, mercader, lo que él era, pero lo que sabemos que es por primera vez en contacto con, con, el, con una auténtica comunidad eh, monoteísta. Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, so he, what he wants to talk about is uh, like history-wise, the first contact of uh, the Prophet Muhammad with uh, monotheist like community. It was when he was in Medina and he was talking with the some Christians. Okay, okay. But the thing is, you see, he's gone off the topic because if, for example. Um, you can exp I, I think you can understand me as well. Yeah. The thing yeah. Is, is, I do. So if he's, <laughs> well, you can understand me, but your your accent is so thick; it's very very difficult. And some of these people in the chat can barely understand English anyway. And your 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 Spanish is like thick. Anyway, so what I'm saying is, you're now. Okay. You're now, one, second, you? one second. One second. One second. Sorry. One second. You've now shifted the paradigm again. So now you're saying that he learned about the idea of God and, and prophets from Christians and Jews, which then implies he made it up, which means he's a liar. So is your claim, what is your claim? Is, is your claim he lied? Is your claim he was deceived by some entity that you don't believe in, right? What, what is it? You, well, you don't believe Satan tricked him, do you? No, I don't. Good. I'm not making a claim. Okay, okay, I'm pointing facts as you. Pablo. I'm the. I'm the. Pablo. Sorry. Relax. Okay. So, because I'm just eradicating, I'm just eliminating the choices for you. So, he's not deceived. You agree? Yes. Good man. Was he suffering from mental illness? Maybe. Okay. Which mental illness could he have been suffering from, which would result in this claim? I am not a doctor. I right. can so say. Diagnosing, could, one second. So you're diagnosing he could be mentally ill based upon your lack of understanding of mental illness. You are trying to trick me. Trick you. <laughs> Now you are you're trying to deceive me. I am not a doctor, but uh, doctor. I say, and 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 this is the thing you see. We have to stop diagnosing things that we not don't have knowledge about. You can't say he suffered from mental illness and then say I know I don't know of mental illness and I wouldn't I don't know how you would diagnose someone mentally ill and then go on to say I think he was mentally ill. You can't do that. Do well, you? I do think I can prove it. Because I am not a doctor, I am. I wasn't there. Prove it. I'm not asking you to prove it. Look, look. Do you know when you make a claim about something, we, we would look for the effects of that claim. So if you want to make the claim that the Prophet Salam was one second, if you want to make the claim that he was uh, suffering from mental illness, we should expect to see results of this mental illness. Yes. Yes. Symptoms. Okay. But before we could do that, we would need to know what mental illness could explain such a claim. Agreed? Agreed. Right. So which mental illness could explain the claim? Truly, I don't know. I am not a doctor. Right. So why are you saying he could be mentally ill then? Well, uh, I, I, I think, again, I am not a doctor. I think he was, okay. uh, what do you call it? Delirio de Grandeza, Paula. ¿Cómo? Delirio de Grandeza. Sí. Mm. Like, uh, El complejo he was, de Napoleón. He thought he was, like, uh, greatest. 
the hero actually was. He thought, yeah, so mental illness. So the point is this. This is what you have to ask him, Paola. The Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing upon him, made a claim that an angel spoke to him and told him he was a messenger of God. Okay. What could explain this claim? So he's already accepted it wasn't deception. Then he's made the claim that um, he was mentally, potentially could be mentally ill. Now, if he's going to be mentally ill, you need to come up with a mental illness that would result in such a claim. So what in mental illness has the symptoms that would have you believing an angel is speaking to you? That's the, the, Napoleon the Napoleon complex. Was that English or Spanish? Uh, that's uh, a mix. Uh, pero el delirio de grandeza es eh, como pensar que uno es mejor de lo que es. No sería realmente ver un ángel. Creo que la única enfermedad mental que lo explicaría sería, no sé, la, la esquizofrenia. No, no. No, porque pero entonces, yo... no, no, no esquizofrenia. Perdona, Paula, habla, continúa. No, no esquizofrenia. Ok, good man. Psychosis. El complejo de Napoleón. ¿Has oído hablar de él, Paula? Sí, pero el complejo de Napoleón no, no da ese tipo, una psicosis de, de imaginar ángeles. Puede ser una metáfora el utilizar a las... El, y no necesariamente tú... Bueno, sí, efectivamente, no, no, no obliga a ver ángeles. Desde sí. luego, sí, sería más probable una psicosis, efectivamente, en ese aspecto. Sí, ok. So, uh, the illness that he was talking about, it doesn't give you, like, hallucinations or stuff, so I said that it that doesn't meet what he's saying, and yeah. he just agreed on that. Oh, oh, okay, so the question is this. If the illness he's saying he's suffering with doesn't give you hallucinations... One second, one second, one second, one second. I want to get to the bottom of this. So he's saying now that the, the, the illness that he's referring to um, doesn't result in a hallucination. Okay. Then how did he see an angel? He said that it was maybe a metaphor. No, he said he saw an angel. Oh, it held him. Yeah. He's saying that yeah. the, him seeing an angel, him stating that seeing an angel was a metaphor. But then you have to ex explain what the metaphor is. What is it for? To make the people good, to make the people believe in the, the changes right, he wanted to, for the Arab people, specifically in the Middle Ages. But then you are claiming that he's lying, using a metaphor. To I am to not saying he's lying in the proper sense okay. of lie. Well, then, the, then, he's the, then he's deceiving the people. He's deceiving the so, people, yes. Well, then he's still lying. lying. They're still lying. Well, yes, technically, yes. technically oh, speaking, oh, yes. Brilliant. Yeah. No, yeah. Okay, so you, there you go. So we've established it now. Just a, just confirm this for me, Paula. Uh, just tell him. So he agrees now. He wasn't mentally ill, nor was he deceived, but he was lying. Entonces, ¿usted está de acuerdo con eso? No, no estaba loco, él no fue engañado, no, bueno, pero él que... era el que estaba mintiendo. La palabra loco no es la palabra correcta, vamos. Porque, a ver, yo creo que tal vez, tal vez tuviera delirios de grandeza y no obstante, él fuera Muhammad. Es decir, el hombre o uno de los hombres más listos de su momento, capaz, por las circunstancias que fueran, de haber unificado el pueblo árabe en una que estaba dividido en numerosas tribus y gracias a la herramienta de la religión. Vamos. Claro, pero, o sea, eh, ¿por qué él, él mintió solo para unificar el, el pueblo? ¿Eso es lo que dice? Sí, que fue una herramienta, sí. So, he says that he used, he, he lied to the people just to bring all the, the our community together. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. We, don't, we don't mind him trying to rationalize why he lied. We just want to hear the claim that he lied. Okay, okay. 
And his motive was to bring all the people together when in fact he divided the people. <laughs> his, his first claim divided all the, tri the tribes in Mecca, saying... Well, Probably unified all the people okay. after coming back from the Medina divided families. with an army. One second, one second, just listen, please. He divided families. He divided husbands and wives. He divided fathers and sons. It, it, he, he divided tribes. So if the idea was to bring everyone together, the message he came with divided everyone. Yes. At the beginning, but uh, we know he won. No, 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 you can't say that. You can't His... say that. In the beginning, he, he, he divided everyone as if he knew what was going to happen. He divided everyone. The people who he divided started torturing the other people and exiling them into the desert, yeah, and killing them, yeah. So it's not, it's not no. the greatest uh, action to take. If you wanted to unify the people, you would say, yes, still worship your gods and, and worship Allah, worship everything together and everything's cool. That's what you would do if you want to unify people. What you wouldn't do is go and tell them, stop doing no. this. It's wrong. No, that's not true. Really? You, wanna fight, you have to impose them. Impose? You don't have the power to impose anything. He he made them made them believe in God. One, one, one second, one second. I'm saying it again to you. If his if his idea was to trick the people, to fool the people into believing this idea that an angel spoke to him, yes. and, his, and his motive was to unify people, but his yes. message, but his message divided people. Originally, yes. Indeed. Right. So his message divided people so much so that they were killing each other and torturing each other and fighting each other. People were, were killing each other forever. That's not an argument with all due respect. No, no. It's easy to say that now you know his life and everything that occurred afterwards, but he didn't know that. If you say his motive was to, to unify people, why did he come with a message that divided Mecca? To be honest, I don't know. I am not. I know you don't know because it doesn't make no sense. Here's, here's something for you, right? Um, if he was lying, there was an event where a man came in, um, uh, the, the Prophet, peace be upon him, was sitting with his companions. And a man came, and as it, as it say, states in the report, that there was no sign of travel, right? So the, the guy didn't look like he traveled at all. But at the same time, no one recognized him. So he was clearly not from the city of Mecca. And the strangest thing happened. This man started ask, uh, asking uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, about Islam, as in questioning him, testing him. Right, asking him uh, what the five pillars of Islam are, what the six pillars of faith are, and who knows of the hour, right? And the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, they sit in there, they're witnessing all of this. They see this man questioning the Prophet, interrogating him almost, right? And then the man, and the man leaves, right? So the last question when he asks, he says, uh, and what? when is the hour? The Prophet, peace be upon him, says... Um, the questioner knows that the question uh, knows as much as he does, right? Or, or something to that effect. Right? As in, I don't know where the when the hour is. And the man leaves. The companions ask him, uh, or, or rather he tells them, yeah, I can't remember exactly which way it goes around. And he says to them, that was the angel Gabriel. So he's now identifying this man who many of his companions witnessed who had no sign of travel right this is already on its own on its own is strange how can you not be part from the city and and yet have no sign of travel that you've come into the city so that was the first strange thing right and then the second strange thing is that they watched this man tell the prophet about you know a question the prophet about islam testing him if he knows right about his own religion that he is propagating and then, uh, and then the third thing is he gets identified as the angel Gabriel. 
and none of them go, go to him and say, "No, nah, that's not that's not an angel. That's that's a man of flesh and blood. We, we we saw him." They don't say that to him. Why do you think that's the case? Why do you think that is? They witnessed this. To be fair, I don't know. I don't know that uh, it's, uh, if that happened in, in real life. It happened in real life. The report is authenticated historically to primary eyewitnesses. People who were there reported this. The companions, I guess. Yeah, the companion. So one. So the companions were that were at that that were there witnessing the angel being among them. They reported this. Well, I don't know if that's true. I don't think so, because I again I don't have faith. Oh, yeah. It's not about faith. This I'm not even asking you about faith now. This is something that you can actually test historically. This Pablo, is empirical evidence. Pablo, do you believe yes. in history? Yes. How do you know things that happen in history actually happened? We have evidential proof that they, proof? they what happened. Proof? What proof? Testaments. Huh? Testimonials. Testimonials. Testimony. Okay. Testimony. How, how, yeah. okay. how would you verify this this testimony? How would you know if what's being said is true? And also, we have another kind of uh, proof, scientific proof, like what DNA, proof? etc. No, 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 no. I'm asking the question now. So you have testimony. Okay. How do you test the testimonies of its truthfulness? Not only testimony. No, no, but let's go with testimony. How do you test testimony for its truthfulness? History is built upon, majority of history is built upon testimony. Testimony. So how do you know if testimony is true or not? Well, I, there is, uh, I don't know. Sorry. I so am not a scholar. Okay, if you don't know how to, to verify if testimony is true, why do you believe what history says? Again, I am not a scholar. You are. I'm not, asking, I'm not asking you to be a scholar because here's the thing you see. When it comes to just history, you're not a scholar. When it comes to history from Islam, you appear to be a scholar. I am, I, I am not making the claim. Yes, you are. You're testing the veracity no. of the claim just because it speaks about something you don't want to accept. Yet, yeah, but other things which you have no means of testing the veracity of, um, you accept. Now, here's the thing you see. I'm going to help you. How do you test the veracity of something? Okay. First thing you know, if someone's making testimony, first question, is the person saying this testimony truthful? Is this person crazy? Is this person um, old? Is this person known to exaggerate? We would need to know who the person giving the testimony is, correct or not? Is he contemporary? Correct. Exactly, contemporary. Were they there? Did they witness what they've said? First thing, yeah? Second thing, does anybody else say the same thing as him? Who was also claimed to be at the same event? Yeah? And when we see two yeah. different people talking about an event that occurred in history, knowing their soundness of mind, then it's more than likely they're telling the truth. Yeah? Now, the amazing thing is, your history, which you believe to be true, doesn't have that. You don't know who's saying what. You don't know whether you've not tested the, the veracity or the claim or, or anything with regards to that. Just one second, Paula. <laughs> you haven't tested the, the veracity or, or, the, or the claim of that, that particular history because you don't know who's saying it you don't know whether or not they were truthful liars whatever exaggerators winners of winners write the history and all this kind of stuff you have you have no um you know have no way and means of doing that and yet you accept it without question but when it comes to something else which has that criteria has that veracity has that claim of knowing who's saying what you doubt it explain that logic to me 
Well, you are trying to compare different kind of facts or historical no. facts. No, I'm, not the same. no, no, I'm not. <laughs> oh, you don't you even try that. I'm telling you that these men in history reported this incident occurred in front of their eyes. That this man who had no way, seen the looked like he hasn't traveled, yet they didn't recognize him. And they, when they asked the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who this man was, and the Prophet said, Angel Jibreel, this is reported by men in history who were there, who witnessed it. Yeah, we have this. Yet your yes. history doesn't have this. So I'm trying to understand why the history that has such, such veracity, you know, such um, vigorous authentication. Vigorous authentication. Thank you. I'm trying to grasp yeah. the word. Vigorous authentication. Oh, yeah. You 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 find doubt in. Oh, I'm not sure. This, that, the other. And yet your history that doesn't have vigorous authentication, you're willing to accept without question. I'm just trying to understand the logic. To make it simple for you, uh, Pablo. Make it what, easy for you. Yeah. What 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 do you know about Gaius Julius Kaiser? Almost everything. And, uh, I like uh, history of Rome. <laughs> okay, fantastic. What, okay, how, almost everything. I, I am not a scholar. I am not who a historian. People, who are the people that report to us what Kaiser did in Gaul? When you say Kaiser, you mean Caesar, yeah? Yeah. Something yeah, Kaiser. Caesar. Caesar. Because it's the correct... Well, it's correct. correct. It's the correct. It's it's the correct. The, no, pronunciation. it's the pronunciation of yeah. classical Latin in the, yeah. uh, uh, how do you say it? The correct pronunciation of classical Latin, yeah. which is the period between the first and the second, the first uh, century BC yeah. after the second DC. Yeah, uh, right. But right. But, uh, but going back to the the question, how do okay. you know Caesar. what he did in Gaul? Who who has reported to us what he did in Gaul? Well, among others, himself. Who? The primary source of uh, the uh, the the uh, Gallic Wars was Caesar himself. The Gallic Wars. What do you call it? We don't actually have his writings uh, from. Uh, yes, we do have. Not, not, not for what he did in Gaul. Yes, the Gallic Wars. It's called the book. The Gaelic Wars. Yes, that's the book. But I, if I'm not mistaken, it's not authored by him. Yes, because he, he, he wrote. He, he wrote about what happened, right? And so did other contemporaries. But we don't have. Uh, his writings themselves. Yes, yes. The Gallic words are uh, is, uh, his writing. I'm pretty sure about it. It's 100% sure. Mm, let me just. Uh... I I have a phone. I can check on internet now, but you, I think you are on uh, a computer station. Yeah. Maybe you can check. It is, oh. it is, it is attributed to him. It is attributed yes. to him. Um, however, right. See, this is, see, because the, what is, what is surviving from that? Well, like I said, what is attributed to him? Uh, because obviously yeah. it's it tells it tells what happened in some detail. That's why it's attributed to him. But what so well, far to be fair, right, we have proof, to, evidential proof that he writes. That, uh, yeah, there's no proof that. there is no actual yeah. proof that he actually did yeah. write it. It's actually it's the reason it's um, attributed to uh, to him because of the detail, the level of detail that's in the Gaelic Wars, right? That's why it's attributed to him, because they would assume that the only person that would have such detail is Kaiser or Caesar himself, right? So um, so that's why it's attributed to him. But there isn't actually any concrete information or that authenticates. Yes, we have concrete himself. information. We have proof that he said that on so the proof. Senate. 
What's the proof? A legal testament of the uh, Senate of Rome, in where he mentioned well, test 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 legal test testimony. testimony. Yeah. You don't. Well, you question. You, you question testimony. Why did you accept it? That's a fallacy again. No, no, it's not a fallacy because what we're fallacy? talking about authentication, right? So what, what is what, what, what I'm saying to you yeah, is that you accept the Gaelic Wars to be written by Caesar because uh, of the level of detail, right? Uh, within within the writing. By the way, it's, it's and not just Caesar like, himself he wrote it. Yeah, but it's not just attributed to Caesar. Remember, it's not just his writing, right? Um, it is okay. He has scribbles in the literal sense. No, he no. did take the test to his slaves. He was no, not no, no. literally the person who writes. No, but Caesar was capable of writing. He wasn't illiterate, you know. But Olus, uh, Olus uh, Heritus, right? He was the co-author, right? Uh, allegedly. So it's not, you know, and we don't actually know a lot about. Uh, um, Heritus uh, himself, so, yeah, Heritus, Heritus, um, depends, yeah. But anyway, the point is, is that you accept it. We actually don't have any concrete information to say that it that Caesar wrote this. Um, however, when it comes to the hadith, we have concrete evidence. Right, we know exactly who has narrated it. Um, we know that they are contemporaries. We know they are eyewitnesses. We know that uh, the people who narrated it after them as well. We know about their lives. We know about how truthful they were when they lost their memory. You know, when, when they reached old age. We know the details that are important to authenticate uh, the narration. And Look. We know a lot of things about Caesar because they will. I'm not denying well that we know a lot about Caesar. I'm not denying that we know a lot about Caesar, but the how we know but, about Caesar is, is is different, right? To how we know about Muhammad peace be upon him. How we know about peace be upon uh, Muhammad peace be upon him is uh, because of uh, contemporary eyewitnesses, which has been vigorously yeah. authenticated. Yes. Yeah. You got. You got to remember. We also we, we we know from the two sides. We know what the what the disbelievers uh, thought about him, as well as what the believers thought about him. Now, when it comes to what happened in Gaul, right with Caesar, yeah, we don't have Gaelic reports. We only have Caesar's reports, right? Or allegedly his reports and the Roman contemporaries, yeah. right? And Roman historians. We don't well, ever well, have any Roman historians. Yeah, yeah. We don't have anything from from Gaelic sources so you only have one side of the story anyway and the romans were known for what for Lying. exaggerating and romanticizing yes. events yes that's why historians when they speak about what, uh, how many uh, soldiers how many legions were in the gaelic wars they doubt that they doubt the number because they say it's likely that it was exaggerated however you don't have this uh, this problem within islam islamic sources the exaggeration of, uh, of reports or the romanticization of reports, it's reported exactly as it happened. Well, we do know how many legions have uh, in Go. Look, the, the point, uh, well, I think, I'm not going to discuss the numbers and stuff. Okay. We could go into that, but I'm trying to show you that your premise for authentication is not consistent. If you're going to accept uh, the events that happened in Gaul with regards to Caesar, then by default you should accept what uh, what is reported in the hadith because the authentication for the hadith is far more vigorous and far more authentic than the sources regarding Gore. That is the point. Okay. Okay. So based on the of uh, the veracity of the report, we now see that there is a man who has no sign of travel. Who is not recognized by the by the people, all right, as 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 one of them, which means he's an outsider, and he's identified as the angel Gabriel. 
So that is a historical, this is an, this is something that happened historically. That there was a man who was among the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, who was identified as the, the angel Gabriel. The companions did not say to the Prophet, peace be upon him, that he's lying about the, the man's identity. Why is that? I don't know. What was the what was the prophet peace be upon him known as? The messenger of God. Other than that, prior to mm. his uh, uh, prior to him being the messenger of God, what did the people call him? I don't know. The truthful and the trustworthy. But so much so, so much so. Right, that even when he even when he was uh, clothed with um, prophethood, uh, the the disbelievers would still um, trust him with their property, right, and keep it with him. And when he was exiled, yeah. and and he went to Medina, he left behind uh, one of his companions. I believe it was Ali, to be honest. I think it was his. Uh, I think it was Ali Radiallahu. Uh, he left him behind to return goods. Ali his nephew. Hmm? His nephew Ali. Yes. I don't think so because uh, I think Ali was one of the latest to convert to Islam. But uh, I then I uh, I am not. He accepted, in, he accepted it when he was a young boy and he was in 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 Mecca. Uh, he was one of the first, right? So at the the advent of. Uh, Islam, he accepted it. When they migrated, that was 13 years later, right? So 13 years have passed. So Ali radiallahu anhu, he grew to be a young man at that point. So, um, but here's the point, right? So uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, was known as to be the truthful and the trustworthy, right? The message as well, right? The Quran of itself, right? There were multiple evidences as to why when the when the prophet peace be upon him identified the man as the angel gabriel they believed him first and foremost he was the truthful and the trustworthy secondly the quran itself the companions witnessed the the, the greatest of the poets of Me uh, the greatest of the meccan poets being unable to match it so much so that the prophet peace be upon him had the confidence to take the parchment of which the quran was written on and nail it to the kaaba so the the Quraysh had a competition they would always say, you know, you got to try and beat this poetry. This is the greatest poetry. We're pinning it on the Kaaba. You got to try and beat that. Rasul put some ayahs of the Quran onto the uh, onto the Kaaba, and that was the challenge. Try and create something similar similar to this. No one could, right? So that coming from an illiterate man, it's got the got the Muslims thinking, right? Obviously, the the the, the, the Arabs thinking. Some of them converted. You had the rules, for example. Uh, when the verses were revealed about the uh, the young woman, uh, the, the 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 daughter who gets buried alive, she'll you know she'll ask for what you know for what reason was I buried? You know, this got the uh, this led to the family of the family of Yasir um, to convert to Islam, right? Because it made sense, right? So there were multiple evidences that compounded upon each other. To allow the Muslims to sit there and say, you know what, he's telling the truth. That there, that man who we saw with our own eyes is the angel Gabriel. Well, they affirmed that. Yeah. They affirmed it. They witnessed the revelation themselves. You have multiple reports where the Prophet, peace be upon him, is fine, and then suddenly he has a sweat, a heavy sweat. His, his body becomes heavy. One of the companions uh, reported that he had the head of the Prophet, peace be upon him, on his on his thigh. You know, you know when you lie down, you have your head on someone's yeah. thigh. It was like that. And he and the revelation came upon him, and he said that I felt my as if my leg was going to break from the weight of the revelation. Right. So there will be these moments. This is not a natural thing to happen. Right, that you sud out of the blue, you get a cold sweat, your 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 body weight increases, and then a, a few moments later or a few minutes later, 
everything returns back to normal. Your your body weight reduces, and you you go back to having uh, you know, a, a, you know, a normal uh, body temperature and and no sweat, stuff like that, right? Yeah, they see miracles, right? You have the report of where the prophet peace be upon him he was able to uh, produce water from his fingertips he had the moon splitting and the thing is with the moon splitting with the moon splitting we have reports from the disbelievers right the disbelievers saw it and they said this is but clear magic if anything it is even mentioned in the quran and if this was a lie what would happen the the, the 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 pagan Quraysh they would look at Muhammad peace be upon him because they would know what the revelation is they'd be like well that's not true that never happened why is why are you telling the people that the the hour has come and the moon has split the moon hasn't split they would question that but they didn't what did they say they said this was magic so I saw it happen but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say that it's you know it's it happened for real I'm just gonna say it's a trick because I don't want to believe. So these things have happened. These things have been reported. And these things, these are things that are impossible to happen if a man was lying. A man who is lying cannot give himself a change in body weight in moments and a cold and a heavy sweat. A man who is lying cannot produce something that exceeds the ability of the greatest poets while being illiterate a man who is lying cannot um uh produce the miracles that he has produced okay it's beyond his capability we're talking about the moon right we didn't go to the moon until 1979 or something like that, wherever, wherever wherever year it was right or no 1969 sorry um 15, yeah. yeah 1969 um we did, so you know Forget about you know, like even if you want to say water from the fingertips, you might have had a straw or something. You could try and think about the moon splitting, right? The, these are the events, and this is the information that have led people to believe. Not because he simply said, Believe in me because I am trustworthy or truthful. No, right? It's because there was evidences, and this is the point of prophethood. No prophet is sent without evidences for the people to believe. So what do you say? Was he still lying? I think so. Okay, thank you after all that. Paula, um, what I'd like you to do now is just in Spanish, so just give um, Pablo some advice because obviously you accepted Islam six weeks ago. You come from the same, not the same background, but you know, the heh heh kind of background. She's not the Spanish. No, I know, we know, she's from Argentina, we know that. Okay, but just give us some words, words of advice, maybe about opening his mind and um, not to be so arrogant and accept new things and learn new things. And I'm here, I am. Uh, I'm Pablo, here. Pablo, 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 my mate Paula, Paula is going to give it to you, Espanol. Take it away. Sí, lo único que le podría decir yo es que eh, yo tenía la mente bastante cerrada, es más, era bastante escéptica al respecto, y lo que hice fue, con ese mismo escepticismo, ponerme a leer, y eh, digo, bueno, a ver, que me digan lo que me quieran decir, y yo veo si me parece bien o no, y estaba bastante negada al principio, para ser honesta, pero llegó un punto en el que no podía como seguir refutándolo, porque no, no podía, eh, y tenía sentido. Entonces, realmente llegó un punto en el que no pude decir, seguir diciendo, no, esto no, no es verdad, y tuve que aceptar que sí es, eh, que esta es la, la verdad. Ok. Pablo. Ya. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Thank you for listening. Gracias, amigo. Hasta luego. Paula, gracias, amiga. De nada. Salam alaikum. Bye. Bye. Marsha. That was good.
I don't know what she yeah. said to him. Just didn't fucking wake up. Okay, this keys has been banging on. I don't know why. As if he's got something to say. Uh, let's see. Should be interesting. Um, have I got a fit? Oh, there we go. That's his filter. Okay, Lego Mies for you. And Leo Gomez. Leo yeah, Gomez. Well, this guy. <laughs> Leo. This Leo Gomez. Okay, Leo the, Gomez. Yeah, this Spanish guy. Well? Are you Spanish as well? Yeah, yeah. Ah, Hispan Hispanic, Hispanic, not Spanish. Spanish oh, is the people oh, from Spain. All right. <laughs> you know, this guy didn't. Know. Yeah, he didn't want to bring up, you know, the whole Jesus situation or the religion because I think he was a Christian. He wanted to know why should he go by the standards of uh, what the Muslims uh, believe in. Like, for instance, that situation with the cave. Who was in the cave to validate that that angel was Gabriel? And did the angel say, I'm Gabriel? Uh, okay. Stop, 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 stop. Okay. Are you, are, you, are you a Christian as well? No, no. Are you a Muslim? No. Okay. So forget about the, the validation as to who was there to witness this particular occasion. The point is this. Do you believe he lied about the angel? Uh, no, because if in his head that's what he saw or that's what he experienced, so he didn't. Then who, who, who could say that he lied? You can't. How, how, how do you check that? How do you check if he lied? No, no, no. no. Okay, so this you, you know the arguments. So, do you, yeah, believe, yeah, do you believe he was mentally ill? Do you believe in angels? Let's do it this way. Do you believe in angels? I'll be back. Just quickly. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I've never experienced, or I don't know anybody that's experienced even spirits. Forget about angels, just anything uh, metaphysical. Well, there are people who claim to have had encounters with angels. Yeah, they claimed it, but then how do you really check that? That just like I'm saying that with that, what happened with Muhammad in the cave? How how would he prove that to someone that he knows to. he knows it's true himself? Muhammad, no, no, no. no. He doesn't. You don't have to prove it's true. You just have to demonstrate that it has to be true. So, for example, um, if angels don't exist, All right? Then either he's making it up, or he's suffering from some kind of mental illness, mental. Sickness. Or, or how about if it was a vision that he had, and and instead of him physically seeing an angel, it was in his mind while he was sleeping in the cave. How do we know that that didn't happen? That's what I'm trying to say. That. Okay, we I, don't know I, for sure. Okay, I'll, I'll explain it. Because he received revelation for 23 years. And the mm -hmm. angel came to him on more than one occasion. Um, and we have eyewitnesses. To, we just explained to her. There's eyewitnesses who saw the yeah. angel. Okay. So um, it's not like it wasn't just one incident and the Quran came down that night. and No, it was that was the beginning of the message. That was the reason why he started the call to Islam. That was the reason why he went down and told the people to stop worshipping false idols and to worship the God of Abraham. It was because and, of that revelation. So that, and, the, yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so that's the reason why. And then for a 23-year period, um, he received revelation. And the angel came and people witnessed it and such, right? So, and, uh, so what did they compare that to that? And ha, has an angel? Okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. Is he sleeping and, and experiencing this in sleep every single time? For 23 years? Maybe, maybe it's happening in his mind for all that time. Well, people witnessed the angel. They saw that he was speaking to an angel or all, all the for the 23 years. No, they saw he was speaking to a man who had no signs of travel on him, a man they never recognized from their city. So, if a man's got no sign of tra travel on him, it means he's from the city, but they didn't recognize who he was. And they asked who he was, and the prophet says, I'm told him this is Angel Jibril. Okay, so is the prophet Salam, inventing this now? I don't think so. I think what he experienced really happened to him. That's why you can't say. It's a lie. Right. How, how, how can he say it's a lie? No, he... no, I'm not saying it's a lie. What I'm saying is this. You've heard my argumentation. Okay. If, if angels don't exist, and he thought angel was speaking to him and held him and grabbed him, yeah, then he's either making it up because angels don't yes. exist, right. or he's got some kind of mental illness that's deluding him into believing angels do exist. Yeah. Or not, or maybe. It wasn't a delusion. Maybe he had a mental breakdown. What happened to him before he went in the cave? This is what I'm saying to you. This is what I'm saying to you. 
So he's suffering some kind of mental illness, and the effects of that mental illness is the vision of angels speaking and seeing them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or he's Satan has pretended to be an angel to trick him into thinking he's speaking to an angel when in fact he's speaking to Satan. You're right. These are three options. One of these has to be true if he's not telling the truth. Agree? Right. Yes, I agree. All right. Which one do you believe is true? I believe not that it was not that I believe that it was real, but I believe that he believed that he was speaking to an angel. So he's delusional. No, no, I believe that he believes that. Yeah, well, if you believe something that <laughs> if you believe that I'm, not, I'm not saying it's true or false though, I'm saying that he oh, believes no. it, so for him he, it was real. Okay, so no. he believes he's hearing and speaking to an angel. Yes. Right. That's what would he a, believes in. All right. Would a sane person have this experience if the angel was imaginary? And that's a good question. I know. Would a sane person believe this? Hmm. Uh, and uh, wait, and before that, what happened before he went in the cave that he experienced this uh, situation? Matter. Why was he in the cave? What happened? It, it doesn't matter. Yeah, but let's say he had a mental, mental breakdown and he escaped in the cave, yeah, yeah, and that's why he saw whatever. If you want to claim mental oh. breakdown, I'll happily go through it with you. And 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 there's documentation that this angel was with him for the 23 years and everybody saw him or no, a lot of people saw this angel what we, what we know is that the prophet peace of and told us that the angel came and on on occasion was witnessed by people yes and the revelation of the quran was revealed over a 23 year period so here's what you've got to ask yourself is the prophet says lying about the angel visiting him is he lying about where he's getting this revelation from or is he telling the truth so this is the point we're trying to establish. So if you want to go to mental illness, mental breakdown, whatever it may be, the question we need to ask ourselves, what mental illness would result in the symptoms of seeing and hearing angels? Well, what, what knowledge did we have about mental illness back then too? What- Doesn't matter. Uh, Doesn't matter. We know now, maybe, we, should know, we, should, we should know more now. So we should, with the benefit of knowing about mental illness and what mental illness is, we should today be able to look at mental illnesses, look at the symptoms of mental illness. We should then look in the past. We should look at the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we should see if we can identify these symptoms. Because back then, you're right, it could be, it could be anything, witchcraft or whatever, I get it. But in the 21st century, where we know all different types of mental illnesses and we can look at the symptoms and we can look at the ramifications of said symptoms and we can look at the deterioration of someone with this illness, we should see this effect in the life of the Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessing upon him. So, for example, a mental illness that would result in visions and hearing angels is schizophrenia, hearing right. voices. Yeah, and but yeah, that that term wasn't back then. There was no matter. because we didn't know. Now, but now it is. But now it is. Right now, right. right. And what are the symptoms of schizophrenia? Uh, hallucinations. What else? Uh... Are they are they outgoing extroverts or are they the reclusive? Extroverts. Yeah. No, not outgoing. They're social Intro introverts. Introverts. Yes, yes. social reclusive. Right. right. Are, are, are they paranoid? Yes. Okay. Okay. Did the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him exhibit these characteristics of being paranoid and a social recluse? They wouldn't. I wouldn't write that down if that was what he was experiencing because no, you no, don't no, want no, to put no, that. that. When you look at the life of the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, you see a man who is a social recluse. You see a man who is paranoid. Before were were they records of him before he went in the cave no, 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 of no, no, no. how how he was? I'm obsessing yeah. about the cave. We're we're talking about after the cave. We're talking about when he received this revelation, which you believe was a result of mental illness. Do we see any of the symptoms of schizophrenia exhibited in the life of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? After the cave, right? Yeah, yeah after the revelation, yes. Hmm. I would say if he kept on seeing this angel for 23 years and, and That's not every question. once in a while. It's not my question. I said, do we see the symptoms of schizophrenia? Do we see no. the social recluse no. and any uh, yeah, but that, individual? No, but that's the checklist for right now. Like you said, now we would check no, those things off. Back then, 
How would you no. check those off? No, you, you would have had the same. To. You don't. You would have had the same to. symptoms. You the how about symptoms. how about it from a list? He only Leo, had one of these things. Leo, Leo, Leo. The only difference, the only difference between now and then is giving names to these things. Okay, yeah. schizophrenia right. is older than schizophrenia. Like I said back then, it may have been called witchcraft. Be right, right. Whatever. Okay, but today, through medical science, we can look at the neuro, you know, neuron, the neurons and the brain, and so we can see these illnesses exist, and we can see the symptoms. So, if someone suffers from schizophrenia, they have a characteristic in the, you see them. You see a paranoid social recluse. You don't see a man leading armies. You don't see a man commanding societies. We don't see this. In, in schizophrenic, because that's just not the symptoms of schizophrenia. There was a lot of rulers that were schizophrenics uh, too. Who? And they were social. Uh, oh. Caesar, like you, since you brought him up before. No, Caesar. Caesar was, not schizophrenic. Caesar was schizophrenic. Who told you that? And, and he had seizures, not schizophrenic, but you could check some of those things off. That no, 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 no. no, 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 no. no you were... can't say he's schizophrenic and then say, oh, what? He was paranoid. He was paranoid, <laughs> Caesar, all yeah, the time. Paranoid. He was rightly paranoid because people were betraying him. That's a different story. Right. Of course, you're going to be, if, if you see people's plotting and planning, it's a different story. Yeah. But and, what we're talking about, have, have you seen videos of people who are schizophrenic? Yes, I have for school. Yeah. And we, and when we look at the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing me upon him, we don't see this. And I'm going to just take it up a notch a little bit. Check out a stream on my channel, and it's called Was the Prophet so I'm Crazy? And I brought a psychologist on, yeah, from Qatar. Mm -hmm. And we went through all the different mental illnesses and, the, and the, the symptoms and such. And there is no mental illness there that could result in a um, visions of angels and hearing voices that wouldn't right. result, that could also result in what we saw in the life of the Prophet Muhammad. I'll tell you, I'll tell you. We, 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 you can't have the two. You can't have him... Being hallucinative, hallucinating and hearing stuff like like as if he's schizophrenic, and then commanding armies and commanding um, and the way he was married to like eleven women, mashallah. The way he he was with his companions, the social justice he brought. This was not a man who was suffering from mental illness. And when is, someone has a mental illness, sorry, just last thing, sorry. And when someone has a mental illness, we should see them getting worse and worse, a deterioration. Because according to what we know from medical science, if you don't treat mental illness, it just gets worse. It, it just gets worse. Huh? Yeah. We don't see that in the life of the Prophet Muhammad. Sallam. We see him taking on more and more responsibility, becoming more and more greater. We, we see him increasing in social um, adventure. We don't see this. I, this what we should see. So when you make a claim about something and we don't see the effects of that claim, then that claim is false, mate. But okay, so the people writing about him uh, at that time were they uh, Muslims? Uh, was it only his companions, or was it people that were, uh, you know, weren't uh, believers? Both. They had both. Yeah, we yes. got both. What 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 sources? Uh, what books? Is there, are there any books that anybody wrote that said okay. this was how Muhammad was Leo, before Leo. and after? Leo. That's, that's the only way we're going to know about how he was. You don't know his condition, right? Well, we do, we do, we do, we do. What's that, what's that? You know his whole life of how he always Leo. was. Leo, just so I understand something. Are you right. now questioning the history of something because it's written by that civilization? No, no, I, no. I, I'm questioning it if it was written by Muslims. And of course, they're not going to say bad things. They're not going to say it. It's What's just that? like the Christians, they're going to write good things about Jesus. They're going to say that he was this and that. No, no. Do you reject Egyptian history because it's written by the Egyptians? No. Why not? Because at the time of the Egyptians, there were slaves that wrote about the Egyptians also, about their rulers. Do so we don't, we, don't, we, we don't only have the Egyptians writing about uh, the, their accomplishments, their wars. We have the slaves that were... Uh, uh, at that time, you know, they, the they wrote about the rulers. What would the slaves know? The uh, well, well it, you have two versions, right? You have the the, the Egyptians writing what their history. The and they know about what's going on in the royal family of the Egyptians. Oh, well, you had slaves working in the in the royal family, right? What, Didn't what, they have? OK, what, what are these books of book written by slaves? It, they had writings about every civilization that has had writings, not only reading? about their own. What books are you reading that contains the words of slaves? 
you could find you could google it i didn't want to mention google but i'm pretty sure in every civilization i'm happy with google i'm happy with google okay the thing is uh, like what well, Hamza's searching for that going off of the whole thing that you had rulers who suffered from mental illness right uh, how much do you know about Calig uh, the emperor caligula uh i would say i know some stuff right. about him like prior to when he lost consciousness um, right. what what kind of emperor was he an evil um, emperor no he was loved by the people right he was actually mm, he was you, do people. you think do you think they no, were no, writing no. good things about him i'm not talking about no this this actually what they started to when they wrote stuff about him this was afterwards right prior to him losing consciousness i believe he hit his head on something no he suddenly he just suddenly collapsed right and he was in a in a, in a small coma right. right prior to that he was ruling pretty well right the people loved him he was putting on games uh being quite, quite generous um to the people and all of that stuff right the stuff that the roman people wanted right he roman. made games he he, he, he games. uh right what happened well after what happened after he worked from his uh karma no uh, how about the people that at the time that he was torturing like politicians and and uh when did that happen when did that happen it's it's written that he was taking yeah, the politicians yeah, wives yeah. that's correct. he was taking politicians wives and and having you know sex with them or whatever torturing slaves correct, that's correct. what i'm saying that you can't only go by one one type of writing you have to go by by oh, both no, sides see, see what you're what you're what you're not taking into account is that the stuff that he that you mentioned happened after he woke from the account from the coma and the reason he started doing that stuff is because he became a social recluse he wouldn't go out yeah. right he would stay in the palace so he would always uh, uh kidnap the wives of the senators right right, right. And, and, and wait a minute you wait, couldn't write that you couldn't write about that at, at the time because if they found out that you wrote negative course, things about they're going to kill you so of uh, course it's going to be after it. Of course it came after. I'm not talking about, I'm just talking about in terms of the mental illness, illness aspect. Okay. Because you're saying about rulers could have mental illness and Caligula mm -hmm. is one of those, is a prime example because Caligula was, was really well liked by the people. He was exactly the emperor that the people wanted. However, after his coma, that's when he started doing the, the evil things, right? And then this is why he's now known as the crazy emperor, right? Right. Um, because he suffered from mental mental illness, he became paranoid so much so that he started killing off his uh, the people that actually supported him, that kept him in power. And right? I think like, most of them would say you could say that about Nero too. They 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 were all eventually well, supposedly Nero, went crazy towards the end. Nero was just evil. <laughs> he was just straight up evil. He wasn't he wasn't I, mentally I, ill. I think they were all evil. Yeah. No, but the no, but there was an explanation as to why Caligula became like that. It's because he became a sch schizophrenic, right? right? And his symptoms, like you were talking about how symptoms, and we don't, uh, we only know them like that now, but the symptoms of schizophrenia were within him. We just didn't know what to call them. We didn't know what to call the symptoms back then, right? But that's what it was, right? Oh, was uh, not, not to change the subject, not, not to change the subject, I thought of a better person to use that as an example, Hitler. He was a... a an introvert look he was an introvert and look an, an look he was he was a great speaker in front of the masses and everything no, no, no. an introvert is different to a social recluse i'm an introvert right all right so what was hitler then what was hitler you trying to call me crazy no <laughs> no <laughs> no but hitler I'm, was, I'm, uh, hitler was shy in the beginning and after he became came into power he was this whole different person compared to how he was before he was uh no, 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 no. what's See, your no. point what's your point about hitler Oh, that that when he came into power, he he, he changed his okay, personality. So let, so some of those things that you could check off before weren't there, but then they were there after, and vice spirit. versa. Was so Hitler schizophrenic? I don't know. You don't know. But I know he was a uh, psychotic. He wasn't like that before. When he became uh, the Fuhrer, he changed. No, we know, he we became know. paranoid afterwards. He wasn't that before. The point is this: Was he schizophrenic? I don't know. Does anyone say I'd have to look that up? Has he been diagnosed as schizophrenic? Uh, the, the, the doctor studied uh, his behavior, but I, I can't say right now if he was or not. Okay, did he claim to hear voices or have hallucinations? 
Uh, I don't know. No, the answer is no. Okay. He was, so yeah. here, here's the thing: is he stopped making diagnosis of things. Wait, wait. That, do you know for sure that that he wasn't having hallucinations towards the end and everything? Hallucinations of what? No, no. Maybe, of anything, anything that he was going crazy. Look, look, look. look. Sleep deprivation, anxiety, bombs dropping all around you. Who knows what happens to the mind? P you know, post-traumatic stress disorder. There's so mm -hmm. many things can affect that. But that's right. got nothing to do with what we're talking about. Yeah, it's not right. mental. It's, it's not that sort of mental illness. He may have been a sociopath. Right. He may have been a narcissist or whatever it may be. But mm -hmm. that's not that's not mental illness. Mm -hmm. And, and going back to the topic of Muhammad, then uh, yeah, look, uh, how would you label how would you label someone that saw someone? It's like you said, I saw some an angel in a cave. It's either they're crazy, before right? The before the cave, before the cave, because you you know you've mentioned this a couple of times before the cave, before the cave. So oh, how was his life before? Okay, right. Here's some, no, but here's something I'm going to give you something very specific before uh, before the cave when he was about five or six years old. Mm. When he was about five or six years old. Right, he was playing with some of his friends. Then the man came, yeah, another um, a man came, and he, uh, what do you call it? Took, um, well, essentially, opened up the chest of the prophet, peace be upon him. He opened up the chest of the prophet, peace be upon him, took out his heart, washed it, put it back in, closed his chest. The two boys. This was a dream. No, I'm this sorry. Happened. This happened. In, re in real life, this happened? In real life, this happened, right? The two boys witnessed this, and they went back, and they told uh, the, the women that were in charge of uh, of, um, of the boys what the has happened. The caretakers? The caretakers, that's it. The caretakers, what has happened. How do we know that this event actually happened? How do we know that his chest was actually open? Because the companion, one of the companions, uh, reported that when the prophet peace be upon him told the story he had a look at his chest he was curious so he, looked, he had a look at this chest and it was a scar right down the middle where it was it was uh where where that was done and who were the ones that wrote about that that this happened well, the were they muslims yes of, of course they would write something like that. that's what i'm trying to say that so you so now you're arguing for bias well, so that's what yeah. Right. So, it, it, okay. it would be different if it was someone that didn't become a Muslim. Then I would be like, oh, okay, then this person has, you know, doesn't have a reason to. Uh... Leo, Leo, who would know about the Prophet Muhammad? Sallam? Who would hear his, what he said and what he did and his actions if not his companions, if not his closest advisors? Why, why, why would he you want his enemies who weren't with him telling you what he did? It doesn't was make no there... sense. Yeah, you're right. But it, it, was there anyone that was a companion that didn't become Muslim? No. no a Did he have anybody? I'll give you one example. I'll give you one example. So when the Prophet Muhammad SAW was revealing the Quran, his, his enemies in the Quraysh, they said that they sent their best poets to listen to the Quran, to say, mm -hmm. find out where he's getting these words from, because we know he can't read all right. Go and listen to it. Find out where he's getting these words from. So and it was known that five of the most uh, knowledgeable and most uh, talented poets lived in the time of Arabia at this moment in time. And they went and they listened to the Quran. And they came back to the Quraysh, his enemies. And they said, so where, where does he get the information from? They said, this is sorcery. Yeah. So the best poets in the land, when they heard the Quran, they just said, this is supernatural. This is something that defies poetry. This is beyond anything we can do. So it must be something supernatural, sorcery, magic, whatever it may be. Now the question would need to be asked: Why did they come to that conclusion? And these are these are these are enemies of Islam. These are not um, friends friends of uh, Muhammad peace be upon him. Because they were questioning: How did this guy have his knowledge of? Yes, where does the information come from? And their answer was: When they heard the Quran, they said, "This is sorcery." Why did they say it was supernatural? Why didn't they just say, oh, they must be getting it for some scribe or some Christians in the region? Why did they say sorcery? Why did they use this term sorcery? Because it was uh, so profound. But what Leo, was being said? What was being said? I, I would like to know. Leo, 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 have you read the Quran? When I was in high school, but that was such a long time. I don't remember too many read, things. Read it, read it again. Read it again with an open mind, dude. Yeah, oh, I, I, I read everything with an open The Bible, the Quran. No, you don't. 
<laughs> Maybe I don't put my all into it, but I, I, I read it because I want to understand. No, you don't. You read it to reject it. You don't read it to understand it. No, I, I read it to question it because you, read you, it to you can't. You can't believe you can't read something and believe it. And like when they say, "Oh, well, you have to read this book and believe it." If you don't believe it, then you're not gonna get the the uh, the whole uh, ist of it. I'm not saying that to you. I'm not saying that to you. So read how do you want me to read the Quran to 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 understand it or to to have an open heart I so I can? It. I want you to read it, understand it, and ask yourself: Could a man in the desert, fourteen hundred years ago, who couldn't read or write, come up with this? That's what I want you to do. Does it sound like a man is talking in this book? When then, I'm then, this, then, one second, one second. Uh, I'm sorry, second, go ahead. Yeah. When I'm reading this book, which was revealed over a 23-year period, many occasions happened in the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing upon him. Whether it was the death of his children, the death of his wife, the death of his uncle, the success in Makkah, all of these things. So many, there was many highs and there's many lows. And then you need to ask yourself this question. If this is written by Muhammad, peace and blessing upon him, why am I not seeing change of emotion anywhere over 23 year period in this book why do i not see human emotion involved where highs happen lows happen we should see something we know and um, writers are influenced by their lives so if someone had a tragic life their writing is all miserable and tragic if someone's had a happy life that william wordsworth is floating like a cloud so this is the thing you see we don't see this you know people who've read the quran who were like uh, in the navy you know seamen said whoever wrote this book must have traveled the oceans to speak about the way they speak about the sea and such like that. Yet this man is from the desert. So we need to start asking ourselves these questions. Where does this information come from? Mm. And, how, and how did an illiterate man come up with this Quran in such a linguistic uh, style that cannot be surpassed? It's so, it's so fantastic, the Quran, that the Arabic language is modeled off it. So the standard of Arabic is based upon the Quran. It became the source of the Arabic. Yeah. How does this happen? Yeah. And, and when you read the Quran, you're going to see three themes throughout it. Warning of man's past. Sorry, should I say a reminder of man's past, of the past nations, the Mood, Ad, the time of the pharaohs and such. You're going to see a guidance for the present and you're going to see a warning of what's to come. And every chapter of the Quran is the same. What happened, what you should do now, and get ready for what's coming. Heed it, don't heed it, it's with you. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi made this claim. Test the claim. You know he's not crazy. You know he's certainly not deceived by Satan coming with a book that tells you to seek refuge from Satan. And you know he's not lying. Why? Because we don't see the fruits of a liar. We don't see a man who didn't him a personal gain because he died penniless. We don't see a man who lived in palaces. We don't see a man draped in gold. We don't see this. We don't see a man exacting revenge on his enemies. We don't see this. We don't see him taking advantage of natural phenomena, which the people believe were attributed to him as prophet. He didn't say, yeah, you see. He said, this has nothing to do with me. When his baby died and there was an eclipse and the people were attributing it to his baby dying, he said, this has nothing to do with me. So this is a man. Now, if he was a charlatan, we should expect to see. We should expect to see him claiming this. You see, you see, I am the Messiah, right? And then we have the next question is, did he have the ability and the capacity to do this lie? Did he have the capacity to invent the Quran over a 23 year period to learn the apocryphal books of the Christians and the oral traditions of the Jews and the New and the Old Testament and to mash them around in his mind and regurgitate them over a 23 year period? Did he have this ability? Did he have the ability to know when Rome was going to defeat the Persians and where? Did he have this understanding? Did he know about pregnancy and the stages of pregnancy and such? You could claim, oh, the Greeks knew. But the Greeks were wrong. Aristotle was wrong and Galen was wrong. So if you want to make the claim that the Prophet Muhammad saw some, got some information from the libraries of Alexandria about embryology, we'll see that actually the Greeks were wrong on how a fetus forms in the womb. Yet the Quran is bang on. I, I, I've, I've heard that argument with yeah. the embryology and the stages and stuff. Embryology, yeah, yeah, exactly. But the question is this. How, how did he come up with all this? And then he makes the claim in the Quran that if there's any errors in it, this is a reason to reject this book. Over a 23-year period. There's one verse in the Quran speaking about his uncle, Abu Lahab, who rejected Islam. And there's a verse that says, perish the hands of Abu Lahab. Doomed he is. He will enter a fiery pit with his wife, the carrier of firewood with a rope of palm fiber around her neck. So this is a warning against Abu Lahab, his uncle. And now we know if he took a shahada, his sins would have been forgiven and he would have entered paradise. Yeah. 
This verse was revealed 10 years before he died. And his enemies were saying, and his friends were saying to him, take shahada, man. Show them that this is not true. But Allah knew he would never take shahada, subhanAllah. And this verse is revealed 10 years before he died. And he all he had to do was say shahada. And he would have destroyed the Quran. Because he would have shown... Yeah, subhanAllah. He would have demonstrated. Well, I thought Allah forgives all sins. Well, I've made repentance. Why am I not forgiven? But Allah knew he would never. How would the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam bring a verse like this, not knowing whether in 10 years' time his uncle's going to accept Islam or not? This is the thing you see. These are the questions you have to marry up. It's not one thing why Islam is true. It's so multifaceted. Yeah? Well, you have to start here. And you have to ask yourself, how does a goat herder in the 6th century come up with this? How does a goat herder in the 6th century become, according to one of the a Christian writer, uh, Michael H. Hart, the most influential, successful man in history who's ever existed? How does a goat herder in the 6th century come up with a way of life that suits man today in the 21st century that prevents and, and prevents all the poisons within society having an effect on him? How does he come up with this? You can see when you read the Quran, when you, you can see when you see about Islam, that this is designed by the one who created us and knows what benefits us and knows what harms us without a shadow of a doubt. Because if you follow the teachings of Islam, you'll protect yourself from the poisons within society. If you don't, you could well become a victim of them. And then after all this, there's a day coming when you're going to go in that hole in the ground. What's going to happen then? Well, Allah warns you. And this is a beautiful thing. Allah says in the Quran, now listen to this, this is the beautiful one for you, Leo. You are not a dictator over them, O Muhammad. Merely a warner. So Allah says in the Quran, you're not here to tell them what to do. You're here to warn them of what's to come. And Allah says in the Quran, let those who believe, believe, and those who don't believe, don't believe. Let those choose and let those refuse. But there is a day coming when the angels will lay them out and say to them, this is the day you used to deny. So get ready. Leo, it's been real. Just Thank one, you for one that. Last, just one last thing. You know this, um, the argument that we present about the four options, do you know where it actually originates from? No. It originates from the disbelievers. The disbelievers mm. of Quraysh, they were the ones that came up with this because first they called him a liar, but then they realized we, we know him as the truthful and trusted one. What what was the list that they checked off to to know that no, he was? No, we're not going to do it now. We're not going to do it. Oh, okay, okay. But okay. Like, but, we'll have to do this. but this. But there was, there there was a process like that, and then that then that's how they knew that he was no, from. But this is, these were the this was their accusation. So this argument that we, when we present these four options, okay, this was their options. They went through this to try and explain this event, to explain this revelation. First, they tried to call him a liar. Then they mm -hmm. tried to say that he was deceived. Then they tried, and then they tried to call him a madman. They realized it was that they crazy. Yeah, and then they tried, and they and they realized they couldn't do anything except claim it was magic. All right, and that was the last thing that they said: magic. Okay, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reread the Quran with an Please. open heart, like you guys said, to so, so I could understand it. Thank you so much for everything. You're Take welcome. care, Leo. Take care. You much. too. Okay. All the best. And just to finish with this clown, what do you want? Assalamu alaikum. We don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did not expect that. I did not expect that. Oh my. Oh, <laughs> we don't care, Rob. We don't care. Oh. <laughs> Man. That was fantastic. Yeah. I had to do that. <laughs> All right. I couldn't resist. I couldn't resist. Oh, oh. oh that was banging. Oh, that's my favorite part of the show. All right. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going to let you go, Yemeni, yeah, because it's like 20 past two. Yeah, it's two, 20 past two now. And it's been real. Jazakallah khair for coming, man. Some beautiful. Oh, um, some, for no, no, no. Some beautiful points you made, man, from beautiful angles. I, lo I love the way that you say, okay, let's talk about the Quran. I, I like that. It was, it was really good. So, three weeks' time, you're going to do yes. a presentation. Inshallah. Um, yeah. But this argument is getting stronger and stronger, isn't it, man? Oh, when yeah. I write this book, it's just going to kill it. Inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll have, I'm going to cover it from all angles. I've been thinking about it and everything, putting stuff, some stuff together. I'll, you know, and even this is why, even when Leo was talking about, oh, I want to go prior to the thing, I was thinking about that angle as well, even prior yeah. to it. Was he deceived? 
because deception doesn't come out of nowhere. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. Definitely mm. so. Yeah. All right, my man. Okay, yalla. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Oh. Mashallah, that was another arena. I enjoyed that one. That was all right. Guests were, guests were new. We still didn't see no Christian princes, David Woods, God Logic, Sam Shamans, all running for the hills. We know why. Time for the arena. Time for the arena. <laughs> anyway, that was beautiful, mashallah. Um, I want to say a big thank you to Paula for coming on, mashallah, to add her little Spanish flex. I thought that was a nice uh, touch. Alhamdulillah, it was good to see her doing bow, mashallah. I have no idea what she said to him in Spanish at the end, but mashallah, that was good. Alhamdulillah. Um, I know my brother was busy today, Abdurrahman, so, and there was no atheist. No atheists. Why are the atheists are scared of the arena? I'm going to tell Ben the next advert has to be for atheists. Why are the atheists not coming anymore? Do you know why? Because they don't know nothing. Look, look, subhanAllah, no atheists. No one coming on saying, oh, why do you believe in a sky daddy? Yeah, because the arguments are crushed. And they, they can go play with the Christians, but don't come mess with the Muslims. Alhamdulillah. All right. Um, that's it. MashaAllah. Um, I'm going to go now. Um, could well be a shop live tomorrow. I'm, I'm still considering it. Maybe, maybe not. I might do, actually. Paula's working in the shop tomorrow, MashaAllah. So um, maybe we'll do a live as well. Uh, I think she's going to leave half day, though. So I might have to start early. We shall see. Uh, other than that, we should be back with Sunday Chill on Sunday. I'm not quite sure of the time yet. But we'll be doing that, inshallah. Um, and that be dead. Gaming is uh, hopefully may recommence on Monday, Monday, Tuesday, inshallah. Um, other than that, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thanks for everybody coming. And thank you for my mods doing a beautiful job, as always. Amberine, Chantel, even Tachikoma was here. Uh, Iram, uh, anyone else was here? No Bush was no Bush today. Where was Bush today? Actually, she ain't got no excuses. Anyway, uh, and I think Ma was here, mashallah. And uh, I didn't see Omar Mohammed, so I don't know. Is Omar Mohammed here? I'm not sure. Anyway, thank you, Omar. Most brilliant job. Assalamualaikum.